A very good morning to you all from the Upton Steel County Ground, Grace Road in Leicester for the LV Insurance County Championship fixture between Leicestershire and Derbyshire. Ball by ball commentary brought to you by the BBC, as it does on every ball, bold on county cricket. In county cricket, I should say, throughout the domestic season. BBC Radio's Derby and Leicester bringing you the ball-by-ball -ball commentary. Dave Fletcher and Richard Ray, your commentators for the game. And I'm pleased to be able to tell you that we have an almost cloudless sky for the very start of the game. Grace Road with the trees now in full leaf looking uh, very pleasant indeed. The news from the middle is that Leicestershire won the toss and have chosen to bat first. The two umpires, Neil Bainton and Neil Pratt, are heading out into the middle. They will shortly be followed by the Derbyshire side and uh, the two Leicestershire openers, Hassan Azad and Sam Evans. Fletcher, very good morning to you. Richard, how are you? Very well indeed. Good, good. Sam Evans, you say, right? Excellent. Sam Evans, yeah, Hassan the, uh, Azad. Yeah, I'm, I'm all over Hassan, I think. <laughs> I was struggling last week. <laughs> I, I think I've got a concentration problem. Derbyshire have picked an attacking side, we are told by all sorts of people. Yeah, well, they made one change. They brought Matty McKean and the leg spinner in, who can bat a bit, but he's coming in place of Lewis Rees, who can't bowl at the moment because of the operation, the, the operations, plural, that he had in the uh, in the close season on his shoulder and his knee and isn't allowed to bowl at the moment, so he was only a batsman. So... Uh, they look, they, well, obviously you've got to take 20 wickets to try to win a game uh, I think they've decided this is a, another flat pitch here at uh, Grace Road as so often are I mean at this for this time of the year the number of runs that have been scored have been absolutely ridiculous and, and it doesn't look like it'll be any different in this match but 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 green tops April English batsmen can't score runs blah 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 why did I hear that why did I hear that driveling nonsense isn't it <laughs> Ooh, the scoreboard has changed. Ooh, ooh, a new layout on our electronic oh, no, scoreboard. That looking out. Oh, me as much, will oh, it? Just get used to something, don't you? Where everything is, and suddenly we have a brand new layout on our electronic scoreboard. Nobody so it likes change. <laughs> hopefully, <laughs> we'll get used to what is what. Oh dear, oh dear, it's that's, it looks early, that's the earliest grumble of the season, I think. I think <laughs> Griff will send in a stat out about that shortly. Richard Ray grumbling before the first ball was bowled about the layout of the scoreboard. Excellent work. That's a shock, actually. Nobody told me that was going to change. So. <laughs> well, nobody passed no, it by nobody, you. you. Nobody you. asked no, me. No, that's, that's, that's what's it. really hurt, isn't that, it? The that fact is, that they never asked it is. you. Yeah. So it's going to be Hassan Azad who's going to be taking strike at the uh, from the Bennett end. It looks as though Mr. Connors is going to come yes, down Sam the Connors hill. Will Sam the Connors. I would imagine that Saranga Lackmal will bowl up it. Down the slope, such as it is, Dave has his half hourly updates to do, which entail a move next door. Some commentary boxes or some commentary positions, it entails just a move down uh, the desk, so to speak. But uh, here at the Upton Steel County Ground, you have to pop next door. So Connors down the slope. Comes in to bowl to Azad, outside off stump. It rather floats through into the gloves of the wicketkeeper. Allowed to do so by Azad. Azad, a man uh, in good touch so far this season. Started with a wonderful 100 uh, against Worcestershire to save the game. Batted throughout the final day, 104 not out. 200 runs in total at an average of uh, 66. Good runs last week against Durham as well. Connors is in. That's a quicker, fuller delivery. Again, it's outside off stump, though. And again, Azad just lets that one go through. Still waiting on uh, the live stream to come up. Hopefully uh, it will before too long. You can tweet us at... Foxes Cricket 22 or at Fletch Sport, F L E T C H, of course. Connors is in and bowls again outside off stump, a little bit shorter this time, and again Azad for the third time in a row lets it uh, bounce through into the gloves of the keeper. Morning to Jake. 
He says it looks a lovely day for some cricket. It, it is. He's got the stream up and uh, running, so I'll keep flicking around until I find one that works. I've been trying to go through the club website, but getting the Durham stream. In goes Connors and bowls. That's a straighter delivery. It's a little bit short. Again, Azad can leave, but it bounces and uh, comes back a little bit. So he's just uh, building up his pace. Sam Connors. Top of the Derbyshire bowling averages so far this season. Ten wickets for him at 27.9. Quite a relaxed run up comes in and bowls outside off stump, pushed through and allowed to go through by Azad, who has not had to play at any delivery so far. There'll be an update for BBC Radio Leicester shortly as well. Three slips. Point, mid-off, mid-on, mid-wicket, and third man, and long leg. Here comes the update. Good morning from a cloudless uh, Grace Road. Beautiful day down here in Aylston. Leicestershire won the toss and have chosen to bat on what looks to be a fairly flat wicket. Hassan Azad and Sam Evans, the two opening batsmen, one over has gone. They have yet to score. Vian Mulder, as you say, has come into the side, expecting great things from him. The Leicestershire faithful, primarily perhaps as a bowler, but also as a fine all-round batsman as well. Bjorn Hendricks plays as well. The side, Evans, Azad, Rhodes, Ackerman, Mulder, Kimber, Swindles, Parkinson, Barnes, Hendricks and Davis at the moment. Leicestershire yet to score, but yet to lose the wicket either. They're naught for naught. It is going to be Lakmal, as uh, Dave suggested, from the pavilion end. Couple of wickets at, at plenty <laughs> in his first two games. So a bit like Buren Hendricks uh, in a way, overseas player, just taking his time to adjust to English conditions perhaps. Lakmal is in, looking for a little bit of outswing to Evans, who lets it go through outside off stump. Good length, a little bit of shape to the delivery, through into the gloves of the wicket keeper and uh, seven deliveries bowled so far and the batsmen have left each and every one. Fletch yeah, it'd be, nice, with it'd be us. nice if somebody played a shot at, at one of them, wouldn't it? But, um, plenty of time, plenty of time. Saranga so, Lackman's been a little unfortunate, I heard you say, that just a couple of wickets down at Lords, didn't pick up a wicket in the game against Sussex. He's bowled nicely, but without any success. He's bowling from the pavilion end and this one is left alone. Of course it is, outside the off stump by Sam Evans. Allowed to go through to Brooke Guest, who oh, is the record is that's eight assumption. in a row. <laughs> Do you think there must be? Yeah, somebody must will be, have there will be a record. Yeah, there will be. Let's get into double figures and see. Three slips at the moment. Uh, Alex Thompson, Wayne Madsen, and Leas Deploy are the three slips. And there's Dahl at point. Sean Masood at. Uh, Cover Billy Goldman mid off, of course, he's always there. Lackmel in and balls, and that, that one has beaten the bat. He didn't leave that one, Evans. It was beaten as he went forward to a, a delivery of a decent length and he went through at a good height as well to uh, Brooke Guest behind the stump, so that'll be encouraging. But that's the kind of thing that's been happening to him on a reasonably regular basis. Perhaps he's too good for the second division, who knows? Um, naught for naught. Uh, the mid on is uh, that's Nick Potts at mid on, uh, mid wicket with his hands thrust deep into his pockets is the leg spinner Matty McKinnon and Sam Connors is down at long legs so that's the field fairly standard for this time of day on the uh, for this time on the first day this next delivery that was the sound of the bat hitting the ball everybody an unfamiliar sound yes this ball is <laughs> defended up towards mid on uh, and there is of course no one I've got the squeaky chair that might have to change there's one behind if you, if you it's not too bad. Not too bad. Not okay. too bad. Well, <laughs> I've been promising. Well, I've got, but Matt, can I put sun cream on it? On the chair. <laughs> you know, just yeah. to just well, to oil it. They would do the same I'll thing. Bring some uh, bring some three in one tomorrow. Yeah. <laughs> here's, here's the Sri Lankan 
lack while bowling and that's left alone this time that was nicely left actually uh, by Evans to go through to broadcast a, a nice economical start by the Derbyshire opening bowlers pitch looked a little touches of green when we came in this morning but obviously it's been cut since and it now looks fairly uh, light in color and I think it will play fairly well they've tried to leave grass on it as much as as, as you can do these days Trying to get a bit of pace and carry. <laughs> oh God, I've decided my first email of the day, Lackmal. Balls left alone outside the stub. And it goes through to the keeper. Uh, keeper, rather. Uh, there is no one. That's back-to-back -back made no to begin with. So uh, Leicestershire, who won the toss this morning, uh, yet to score. Um, it, perhaps Derbyshire supporter says, uh, well, he signed it Michael, but it's J.M. Varley. So I assume it's Michael Varley. Um forgive me Michael if, it, if that isn't your proper name uh, Derby supporters may have a little reason for optimism this year he said I was at Derby for two days of the Sussex match did either you or anyone else comment <laughs> on how many times there had been three double centuries in the county championship match now a few times th that, that's either sarcastic and I appreciate that <laughs> fully Connors is in bowls outside of Stump good carry but again wide and again as had can lead or it's a genuine question, and, and the answer is yes, almost incessantly. Uh, he says also, what's happened to Harvey Hussain? Well, Harvey was with us in the in the, uh, in the the box at, uh, at Lord's for a brief spell. He had to retire, sadly, because of uh, concussion issues. Uh, didn't manage to fully shake the concussions off last season, and uh, it was decided it would be best if he retired. I think he's still going to play club cricket, though, which is good news. Connors turns, comes down the slope and bowls. Grunt of effort, but uh, wasted effort. It was wide and a little bit short. And again, Azad, for the eighth time in succession from Connors, can leave and does. Nought for nought remains the score. I can see a cloud now. I don't think it's anything to be concerned about. It's very, very, very small. Uh, it is a beautiful day, isn't it? I opened the curtains this morning at 6.30 and thought, shorts. It was a bit brisk at 7.30 when I arrived. Connors is in outside of Stump, goes through again as Ad leaves and wanders away towards short leg. Three in a row to follow the six in a row in the first innings. I was greeted by Richard, who very subtly suggested I might have put a bit of weight on, but said, you look like you've wintered well. I, <laughs> just wintering well is, is a... Just to say how healthy you look, Fletch. Not, not, nothing mm. to do with the way. <laughs> in goes Connors and bowls. And as that is cutting away in front of point. Waited for it. Sat up nicely. He's chopped it away. It's crossing the ropes. It's a long goal boundary over there, despite the fact we're playing nearer to that side now than we were against Worcestershire a week or so ago. But he timed it nicely. Risty little uh, cut. Punch cut out towards uh, now Lucy's manual scoreboard. Lucy yes. and Pip, sadly, Dave, mm. is uh, watching from the, uh, the sky above. Bless his heart. Yes, I saw that. Sad news. Now Connor's just struggling for, as many bowlers do if they're not used to the, the slope here. And it isn't a, a pronounced slope, but it's enough just to make a little bit of a difference. So he's going to try around the wicket to Azad. He comes past uh, umpire Pratt and bowls, and he's cutting again. Azad, but it's a little bit closer to him this time, so he cuts it uh, more or less straight to the man at backward point. Bounces obviously a couple of times first, just cramped him a little bit more on that occasion. Shakes his uh, left hand, Hassan Azad. A man in, in good touch, he says, hoping that isn't going to spell his immediate demise. I quite like the new score. I'm getting used to the new sort of scoreboard You're layout okay now. now. Oh, okay. <laughs> Connors is in. That's a good straight ball coming back in to Azad, who plays it comfortably enough on the back foot. Drops it out into the covers, and there is no run. The end of the over. The first scoring shot, the only scoring shot of the match so far. Cut away through point. Leicestershire, having won the toss and chosen to bat off four without loss. Well, Derbyshire have got a new electronic scoreboard this year right next to the media centre so that so you can't see it well they've got us actual screens i've got my screen just and it's perfect and it, it mirrors what's on the scoreboard and the scoreboard has got a lot of information on it all i would say about 
what the information that's on there at the moment, we don't need the overrate. We don't need the overrate at any point, in my opinion, but we don't need the overrate. So then just have both bowlers bowling figures, the two bowlers who are bowling in tandem, because we have the two batsmen scores. It's Seringa Lackmel on his way in, and that one is uh, guided into the ground, square on the offside by Evans, but bounces straight to the hands of Anush Dahl, who's fielding at point. But that would be my only... I mean, it's not a criticism, it's merely a suggestion. But I don't like to see the overrate on a score bottom. Certainly not at 11 minutes past 11 on day one. I don't think it's... Uh, it's useful sometimes as a warning for the captain if you're minus four or something. <laughs> you're in danger of uh, incurring a penalty. I, I still don't really know how it's worked out, though. It's like Mal again over the wicket poles and it's left alone by Evans. Oohs and ahs and oys. I think that was uh, Wayne Madsen with the oy. Well, the, the lovely Sue, the Worcestershire scorer, took me through all the sort of various delays and why, you know, how long everything is supposed to take, but I kind of lost yeah. <laughs> the will to Absolutely. live at, the, at one stage. Yeah. Um, it was very useful at the time. Bless her. Not sufficiently useful for you to remember it. To remember them all. No, I needed to write them all down, really. <laughs> These days, like, I have to write down everything. Shopping lists, the works. <laughs> and goes... So that will pass the ball and again that just moves away from Evans as he leaves it to go through to Brooke Guest. No uh, sign of a breakthrough in the early stages of this one. An important knock um, last week against Durham for Sam Evans as he he was the first to say it. he'd started the season a, a little bit slowly. So he needed uh, the 77 not out he made, batting out the final day to secure the draw pretty comfortably in the end for, for Leicestershire. Evans waits as this next to is just on leg, leg stump it's turned into the leg side. Where Connors will come around to do the fielding. He'd want to take his arm on and they pick up a single. So Evans off the mark with that single. Five without loss. Now David Popple. Hello David. Uh, morning Jensen. Happy Wisdom Day. Yes. Uh, fingers crossed for Fox's win. Hang on a minute. Why, why, why have you why have you tagged me into that there? What's going on here? Making me read that out. Hello, looking forward to watching ex Stamford schoolboy Shan Masood bat. Of course, I he believe was, he yes. broke all the school batting records. Well, I'm not. I'm not. Su not surprised. I've got to say, I'm not surprised. Having watched him bat three times so far, uh, 91, 50 odd, and uh, 200 and plenty. His high score in first class cricket. Zad waits and that round bowls to him. It gets the middle of the bat onto the ball, plays it into the leg side where Masood does the fielding, and everybody's up as though it was just about to nick off to third slip. They do make me chuckle, professional cricketers. Oh, right, so you're tweeting as that, are you now? That's clever. Fox's Cricket 22. Yeah. What's that all about? Uh, hey. came off Twitter in, in the winter. It, it became a bit of a... OK. But then uh, what I didn't quite realise is it, if you sort of come off it after 60 days, everything is deleted. Ah. delivery <laughs> turned into the leg side by Azad. They've run one. Masood chases around from mid-wicket to do the fielding, and one is all they get. Zad moves on to five. Evans has one. Six without loss after four overs. OK, right, so I'll, I better start following Fox's Cricket 22 then. And, uh, there we go. Consider yourself followed. Double double my following. <laughs> well, yeah, but I, I haven't it's got taking many, time to build pe up. People know where to get hold of us, don't they? Pitch looks fairly good already, doesn't it? Really? Yeah. Not great terrors in it so far. Certainly no... Deliveries uh, moving off the seam yet. Beginning to look like a, a reasonably decent toss to have won. Wayne Madsen with his baggy Derbyshire cap. A familiar figure clapping his hands there at second slip. Connors is going to stay around the wicket to the left handed Azad. Field unchanged. Third. Man is in, Connors is in, forward solidly goes Zad, leans forward into a firm defensive push out into the offside, picked up at mid-off, there's no run. 
Ben Mike down below us in his uh, Leicestershire whites, not selected for the game for the second week in a row. The young all-rounder still searching for a sort of permanent role. Ben, as Connors is in and bowls, and as that is waiting in the crease for that one, drops it out into the offside, takes a step forward and, and, and raises his hands in a sort of interrogative way towards Evans, who turns his back on him, no chance of a quick single, six without loss, five has had one Evans. A few more people coming into the ground now, plenty down in front of us, in front of the pavilion. It was a bit of a breeze, as, as Fletch was saying, but uh, if you're out of it, just glorious rather. And the trees now all in leaf, looking a real picture. In goes Connors, Bowles goes past the outside edge. Might just have held its own off the scene. He pushed down the line of off stump, Azad. Carried through to the keeper. Connors has bowled really nicely this season so far. He has a had last season and the season before when he first broke into the first team on a regular basis a happy knack of taking early wickets that, that's deserted him to a degree but he's still bowling really nicely the, uh, the academy product which is not something we say often in Derbyshire Connors in again goes past the outside and that did look just to hold its line a little bit it? as he came round it's out forward look to go past the outside edge if you added up all the numbers on the back of the Derbyshire shirt, shirts, I'm absolutely certain they would have the highest total uh, of any county well, you by say miles. That. No, you say that. No? Mohamed Rizwan was 116. But is, if you added all the numbers together, I mean, the aggregate... Quite, I know, but it's 116 nonsense, isn't it? <laughs> In goes Connors, bowls outside or something, this time a little too wide, and Azad can safely let that one go through and does. I think you could get a triple number on cheapers. One one six. Well, he, he said it was because he wanted to wear sixteen when it was taken. He said this was the nearest to it. I mean, I, I'd have thought that seventeen or fifteen mm. were, were possibly a little nearer to sixteen. But uh, one one six is his number this year. But yeah, there's a seventy-seven, seventy-six. Uh, Shan Masood's up in the nineties, isn't he? Yeah, like Miles eighty-two. Yeah, my numbers. In goes Connors bowls, and he's fuller this time, but he's just drifted on towards middle and leg and turns his wrist on it as that as he pushes out just slightly wide of mid wicket. There's only the one, he didn't clip it away firmly. And uh, as a consequence, Lakmal able to get across and complete the fielding. Azad takes one though, keeps the strike, end of the over. He's on six, and Leicestershire are seven without loss. Adam New asks, do we know why Lewis Rees isn't playing? Yes, because Matty McKinnon is, Adam. It's an attacking option. They want to take 20 wickets. They're going to have to take 20 wickets to, to win a game. Uh, he does, however, say looking forward to seeing what Matty McKinnon can do. Believe there's untapped potential there. Well, his, his actions changed a little bit over the course of the winter. He used to come in almost like an eagle and bowl really, really weirdly. It clearly wasn't a repeatable action, but he's much more upright now. Uh, and we're told he can turn it both ways. Uh, got a you, googly now, I'm not he? entirely sure I've seen him turn it one way, but uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah, no, he, sure, he surely has. Here's Sarangal Lagman, he'll take it. This next little first delivery of a new over, Azad pushes it into the leg side, and there's no room. Yeah, he can turn it both ways, and they've also got the off spinner option of Alex Thompson, who's bowled nicely so far this season, was terrific in pre season. Um, the big the, the major blow was losing uh, Ben Aitchison to a back injury in pre-season and he's going to be out for three months so that, that's, that's cruel, that means he'll miss this first raft of championship matches, of course if you get an injury in August that's the perfect time to be injured as a county cricketer because you've basically got the month off here is Lackmal in again and that was turned into the leg side nicely his bat sounded broken there uh, by Azad, he picks up a single didn't sound great he moves to 7-8 without loss. And the sixth over. So, yeah, that was that was a bit of a blow. The the twos, I'm not sure we should talk about this, but they've just played Leicestershire in a four-day game that they lost in two days, which is a terrific effort. There um, was some comment about the Belper pitch, though, that apparently was a little bit sporty. Like yeah, a lot of club well, pitches. Are, yeah, a lot of yeah, well, they grounds. are, but, but Derbyshire still didn't manage to take the amount of wickets they might have been expected to take. 
given the uh, players who were playing, defended into the offside. Evans, next delivery from Lackwell. I mean, Dustin Melton, who played here last season and had a bold, a terrific couple of spells last season. Or was it the season before? I can't remember. Um, he was playing, and Mikey Cohen was playing, Matthew McKeon was playing, Alex Hughes was playing. I mean, it was a fairly decent-looking Derbyshire side that was that was beaten in two days, sadly. So, uh, room for improvement there. Morning, all, if you're listening. Uh, eight without, <laughs> I always forget people might be listening. This next delivery is left alone outside. They are still by Evans to go through to Brook Guest. One or two more people in the uh, in the blazing sun. I think it could be quite dangerous today if you're not uh, if you if you don't find a bit of shade at some point. Certainly to our right, there, there's not a lot of well, there's not a lot of shade here. There's not a lot of shade at the county ground in Derby. There's some down at the Bennett end, which is not a bad place to sit uh, behind the bowler's arm. It's a bit chilly end. there though because yeah. you're in the sun. But uh, yeah, there are a good few in there in front of the Turner Indoor Centre. Lackwell past the umpire and this one is pushed into the offside again by Evans, fielded by Masood and there's no run so it's been a strange old start to the season the wickets have been pretty good Derbyshire were behind for a, a spells at Lords, having won the toss and put Middlesex in, but uh, fought back really nicely, they were massively in charge of the home game against Sussex after Sussex had batted really, really poorly on day two to get themselves bowled out, but after that, it drifted towards a draw. But Lackmell's next delivery is left alone outside the off stump by uh, Evans through to the keeper. It's the end of the over. We've now had uh, six of them, and it's eight without loss. Yeah, double century for Tom Haynes, wasn't it? And You've seen a few runs scored this season already, one way or another. I, 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 we barely mentioned the fact that there were three double centuries in the... Uh, it's only the 11th time it's happened in the world. Your first class cricket. Madness. 100,000 games. And we were lucky, or otherwise, to have witnessed it. Because <laughs> it was, um, to be honest, it was inevitable. And uh, there's nothing worse than the inevitability in sport, is there really? Springsteen cricket has, uh, has turned up to watch uh, from the Burroughs Terrace alongside the commentary box as in goes Sam Connors and bowls onto the hip of Azad. Just works it away down towards a wide long leg, deep backwards square. Has to run around from long leg to pick up and Azad calmly without fuss, which sort of sums up his batting really. Just picks up a couple, moves on to nine. 10 without loss. Saying weather forecast set to get a little cooler towards the end of, uh, well, over the weekend, but not particularly to rain, so every prospect of a, a full four days. He says tempting fate as Connors is in full of this. I'm perhaps looking for the in swinging Yorker as I'd equal to it, jams his bat down. Pushes it out towards mid on. Come on, Sammy. Is the uh, is the cry from one of the slips. Connors turns. I say it's quite a sort of economical run, really. He doesn't overstretch himself, but he explodes into the crease. Foolish and driven back past him by Azad. A lovely shot from Hassan Azad. No great follow through, but it was over pitched from Connors. Just leant into it and pushed it back past him. That one sounded all right off the bat and uh, no chance for Midoff to get across and cut it off. Azad picks up four, moves on to 13. Beautiful shot, wasn't it? Absolutely beautiful. Sounded perfect off the bat. Uh, it, it got down quite well as well, Connors, to try to stop it, but couldn't get a hand on it. And it was straight enough that Billy Godelman stood no chance of getting around from mid-off. Connors is in and bowls. Drags his length back a little bit, stays on the back foot as Ad and defends off, off stump out to the aforementioned Billy Godelman, who for once, he's not clad in three or four sweaters. I'm so used to seeing him in several. He's taken to the short sleeve top, mm. which is uh, a new departure. New coach, 
new Billy. I don't know. I was speaking to him yesterday. It was the first real chance I'd had to speak to him about uh, the appointment at MacArthur. He's very excited. Very excited. It's a great appointment as Connors is in again straighter and Azad again staying in his crease solidly in defence back up the pitch on the onside trickles rather than rolls particularly quickly out towards mid on who steps across Lakmal to field 14 without loss it was quite a cheer when that from down below us when that uh, very nice off drive from Azad down below us, look, yeah, actually, all, all the all the benches are, are pretty much occupied. The favoured end today. In goes Connors and bowls on a great piece of work by Connors. Almost managed as he dived and got a hand to it to deflect it onto the stumps. Whether he was trying to, I don't know. But if he was, it was a, almost a sensational piece of work because it was crisply hit by Azad. He put down his right hand as he fell and sort of flicked it back towards the stumps and uh, one or two hands started to go into the air didn't quite manage to get it onto the stumps and the single was taken Fletch pops next door to do his update Azad again has kept the strike he's moved on to 14 of 28 balls Evans just the one he's only faced uh, half as many balls 14 for that one run Leicestershire 15 without loss at the end of the over and Azad just uh, refastening a shoelace Food for thought for Derbyshire. It is, as we've been saying, a looks a good track. And third slip is coming out already. So Lakma will continue. So we can go Lakma. But with just the two slips. But Azad looks he's waiting because the second third slip, I should beg your pardon, is going into a short ish mid wicket as Akmal turns is in down the leg side wafts at it rather as he falls over himself slightly as that doesn't get anything on it taken by the keeper and there's no run did see a, a strangle up at Durham Leicestershire George Rhodes in the second innings was a uh, just pushed at one that had been speared down the leg side from young Ollie Gibson. And our, our old Leicestershire teammate Ned Eckersley took the catch behind the stumps. Lakmal is in. Bowls and turned out through mid wicket. Well, a bit squarer than that by Azad. And it was in the air for a foot or two. Scrambling back, square leg picks it up at the second attempt. So as that picks up a couple more, he's the run scorer this morning. Masood is up there at, uh, at square leg. He moves on to 16 of 30, 17 with out loss. Now Lakmal is going to go around the wicket to the left-hander who checks his guard with great care from umpire Bainton, remarks it. Maybe he's gone from middle and leg to middle, something like that. coming for BBC Radio Leicester might just come after this uh, delivery Lakmal is in bowls squared up a fraction as that thick outside edge along the ground towards backward point no run that Leicester won the toss and have made a pretty good start on a lovely day down here in Aylston. Hassan Azad, who's been in really good form this season, a century in the opening fixture against Worcestershire, half century last week against Durham, is going well. Again today, he is 16 not out of 31 balls. At the other end, Sam Evans has only faced 14 balls. He's got just a single to his name, but the pitch looks pretty good and it's increasingly looking like to have been a good toss to have won. Leicestershire in their first innings against Derbyshire are 17 without loss. Back with you on line and Fletcher's back. Like Miles bowling from the pavilion and down the leg side to Hassan Azad from around the wicket. He tried to flick it away but couldn't make contact. Goes through the broadcast. It's the second time in the over he's done that. So we've lost one of the slips already. There's a man down at third man. There's a man at long leg as well. So uh, 
He's gone in at shortish mid-wicket, so it's, it's still a sort of semi-attacking position, isn't it? But, uh... Yeah, but they didn't have a... Th did they have a third man to... Mm. Uh, did they, have a, they always had one. Both ends, uh, which, is, which are unlike, unlike many sides. Yeah. Like, well, ball short of delivering. It's well dealt with nicely. No, not stopped by Wayne Madsen. He got up on his toes there as that. Played it down into the uh, the gully region. Wayne Madsen dived across to his left to try to stop it. Couldn't. So as that picks up another single to move to 17, 18 without loss. I don't know whether you walked on the outfield this morning, but it's uh, hard, very it? hard. Yeah, I, I didn't do that. I walked on it yesterday. I, didn't, I don't like walking Oof. on it on match days. But I walked around the boundary. And yeah, I, it, that's what struck me. How hard it is. I mean, it has got, you know, it was drilled for drainage three years ago, I think, now. But uh, even so, wow. It has, it has been dry, though, hasn't it? Yes, it, it very, very, very. Particularly dry. Well, I'm not warm enough for a little Harry Kane to take his Derbyshire gilet off. Lackmel bowls left alone outside the Austin by Evans to go through to Brook Guest. That's the end of the over 18 without loss. Harry's got his, uh, he's got a water bottle for somebody. And uh, he's wandered around in the, uh, in, the, in the gilet, which he did do last week as well, when it was sweltering. But he obviously likes it. Uh, it's, it's one item of clothing he's got, which has got Derbyshire branding on that actually fits him, I think. <laughs> his sweater goes down to his knees. 18 without <laughs> loss, he's, he's a nice kid. As most, as indeed, pretty much all cricketers are, let's face it. I shan't be naming the exceptions here just yet, but uh, one day, one day. The book will come out. No, I'll just, I'll just rant on, on my final commentary. <laughs> and whether it, it's my final commentary. Deliberately yeah. or otherwise. Yeah, go on. <laughs> Connors, four overs, none for 12, is going to continue from the Bennett end round the wicket to Azad. Squares him up and uh, he's pushing slightly across the line and it comes off something of a leading edge, pops up into the offside. No danger of a catch there is a man at shortish extra cover but a little bit of or enough swing back into Azad to slightly discomfort him the ploy was in there bowled an awful lot last week bit of his left arm stuff no idea what it is Connors is in bowls again it's swinging towards leg stump this time Azad Gets his full face of the bat to it, turns his wrists on it, drops it out towards mid-wicket, but uh, it's too close to Lackmout for the batsman to risk a quick single, and Connors has had enough of that, and he's going to come back over the wicket. I did notice, I noticed it earlier, but forgot to mention it, that Lackmout has got two bandages around his uh, right arm, above and below the elbow, which is... Uh, interesting he's never bowled him out of overs that, that he's going to have to bowl this season before Connors is in it swings away down the leg side but an athletic diving takeaway to his right by Brooke Guest saves for buys and uh, Connors scrapes at the crease it was the crease's fault that he speared <laughs> it down the leg side I want to look at the ball as well Wayne Madsen showed it to Brooke Guest there and so he'd never seen a cricket ball before the have you seen this? We had one. Look at this. We had a four inning, four balls in an innings at uh, Durham. Oh, really? Change yeah. so frequently. We had two changes in Ridiculous. the second Sussex innings. Connors is in bowls. That one swings back in. There's an appeal for leg before he's given him. He's gone. It was um, a late decision, if you like, from umpire Pratt. But he thought about it a long time. Slips went up. Not quite as enthusiastically as Sam Connors, but it did look pretty adjacent from where we are sitting. So we'll have a look at, uh, at the replay. But Azad, that's a big wicket. He was looking in good touch. He'd gone on to 17 off 36 balls. Connors swung one back in and he was caught in the crease. Let's have a look. See, I think that's a, a very fair enough decision for it, me. It wasn't one of those full-throated appeals, though, was it? Which no, I wouldn't, I wouldn't I have been a bit at all hesitant about Yeah, I wouldn't it. have been at all surprised if the, if the hand had stayed down um, from umpire Pratt, but uh, he gets the verdict. Sam Connors is the 11th wicket of the season. And uh, 18 for one. By keeping it nice and tight means that after, what, 40 minutes or so, 35 minutes, really, they haven't got away, and uh, Derbyshire have picked up their first wicket, which is excellent for Derbyshire. 
and everybody connected with them. Well done, boys. I'm, that, that, that sounded really poor, didn't it? I'm trying to remain positive because I got a lot of criticism last year for being negative because they were rubbish. Uh, but they're not rubbish anymore. They're, uh, and the remarkable thing is it's eight of the same players who played last year are playing this year. So uh, even with the swapping in and out of Lewis Rees for, for Matty McKinnon, it's still eight of last season's squad. This is the beginnings for, for George Rhodes. Getting an, another chance at three. Norton, 12. At, uh, against his old side, Worcestershire, here two weeks ago, and two and 23 against Durham. Rishi Patel, who is a, a rival for the number three position, got a few runs in, in the twos against Derbyshire at uh, Belper over the last few days. And, uh, Rhodes in need of a score, really, to ensure his or to keep his place sounds harsh but such are the realities well it's professional sport Richard isn't it professional sport and Bronte you should know better and stop it <laughs> what's, what's Bronte saying these days Connors is in to the new man the right hander outside off stump swings away taken by a guest in front of almost between first and second slip by the time he got to it but certainly swing there Way swing. Quick stats question, he says for me. Have there been any double centuries in the county championship lately? <laughs> I'm not rising. I'm not rising. Hope you wintered as well as I did. <laughs> Although if you did, your knees will be uh, in trouble when you're doing your running. Connors is in a little short of a length this time on off stump and up on his toes. Rhodes just dropping the ball out in defence, out into the offside. So a breakthrough for Sam Connors and for Derbyshire in that over. Leicestershire 18 for one after nine overs. The man out, Hassan Azad, leg before wicket for 17. Yeah, that'll have uh, earned Sam Connors another couple of overs. They actually bowled for an hour, these two, in the... Uh, uh, the first hour of the final day when Darbish were desperate for a breakthrough against Sussex but uh, they bowled really nicely and uh, Mickey Arthur was full of praise he said it was a, a properly intense hour of uh, cricket which it was absorbing cricket but they couldn't get the breakthrough and as a result Sussex were able to uh, see out the remainder of the day fairly comfortably in the end the game at Lord Darbish would have folded like a pack of cards last season I fancy and lost, so uh, hats off to them there as well. 18 for one. Leicestershire, uh, Evans on strike to this. First delivery of a new Lackmal over, he pushes it gently out into the outside where it's fielded by Masood. They trot through for a comfortable single. Evans doubles his score, he's on two. Leicestershire, 19 for one. And the 10th over. The physiotherapist is. Uh, Derbyshire physio Julian is round to our left hand side in front of the manual scoreboard actually with his little bag of tricks there isn't anybody anywhere near him but he is looking at Ryan Sidebottom on loan from Warwickshire lasted seven deliveries at Lord's it's like my balls and that one is defended backward a square on the offside by Rhodes and there's no run pulled hamstring but he's doing some running on the, uh, on the grassy area in between the boundary rope and the Manual scoreboard away to our left hand side. Good to see him running. Seven deliveries at the start it is, of the season. It is two Nightmare. weeks after a, after a hamstring. Mm. They got him off straight away and he we, never we'd returned. Be, it'd be six weeks for us, that the hamstring pull. Would it? <laughs> I, I wouldn't know how to pull one if I were. <laughs> it would have to be an accident. Potentially. It depends, yeah. it depends how like severe, of course. It rushing up and down the stairs or something. <laughs> Rhodes waits and that one is defended. But the Godelman rushes in to do the fielding. And there is no room. I, I just I like to keep you know me. I like to keep an eye on what's happening in uh, in Division Two. And uh, Nottinghamshire currently still in the wilderness of the second division. Uh, won the toss and put Durham in at Chester Street. And after nine overs, Durham 34 without loss. Well done. We're all Durham, aren't we? 
Uh, so that's excellent there. That's working well. Glamorgan at 21 for 3 against Middlesex in Cardiff, which is uh, a little surprising. I didn't check to see if Labashane was in or not, as this one beats Rhodes outside the off stump. Blackmiles bowling nicely, but again without reward. The ability of those connected with Nottinghamshire to wind up there. Everybody. <laughs> Just about everybody. everybody. It's, it's unsurpassed, isn't it, really? Yeah, Labish, One way or I don't think they mean to do it. Look at that. Labashane 8 and Sam Northeast out for a duck. Shaheen, Shah Afridi got them both. Ooh. He's not a bad signing. Mm -hmm. I can't wait for Middlesex to play at Trent Bridge. <laughs> Leicester should play Middlesex next week. I might even go. Like Bob Bowles and beats uh, Rhodes again. He's bowling really nicely, but he's just not getting the rewards. And of course, the longer you go without getting the wicket, the harder you tend to try. I mean, he's a professional sportsman, and I'm sure he's been through little spells where he hasn't picked up wickets, perhaps as uh, many wickets as he would have liked. But he is bowling nicely, like man. He's always had more success outside of Sri Lanka, as you would expect, than uh, in his home country. The other score in the second division, Worcestershire 56 without loss after nine overs and two balls against Sussex as Lackmile balls left alone by Rhodes to go through to the keeper. So they're going along almost six runs and over at New Road, having won the toss and decided to bat first. That looks a pretty good decision. End of the over here, 19 for one Leicestershire. Rhodes yet to get off the mark. Evans has two. And out Azad for 17. Leicestershire won the toss here and decided to have a bat first, which seemed like a, an eminently sensible decision. Yeah, a lot of overs in the legs already for the Derbyshire Seamers. Lackmal, well, averaging 20 overs in innings. <laughs> yes, it probably is a bit of a shock to the old system uh, oh, one way or another. Yeah. And Still smiling though. Yeah, I'm sure. <laughs> yes, I've never seen anybody smile as much. Sam Connors is smiling after picking up that wicket of Azad and will continue from the Bennett end, the sixth over, coming down the slope to bowl to Sam Evans. Edges and on the back foot, it bounces short of third slip, who takes it. I think it was about the second bounce by the time it, it got to him, but a genuine edge. And it's just about to keep it down. Is that deploy a yep. third slip it yep. is? And uh, took it cleanly. Here's Deploy. Number 76 on his back. 77 on uh, Madsen's next to him. Hands on knees for the Derbyshire slippers as in goes Corners and beats Evans. One that came back and pad and bounces down and to the slips. He's uh, finding his, his way now, really, Sam Connors. He's, he's used to the the vagaries of the outfield and the way to approach the crease. And boosted by that wicket, he slipped into a really nice rhythm and asking plenty of questions of these two right-handed batsmen. Evans waits with bat raised as Connors is in. Bowls to him, that one just a little bit wide. Nice bounce and carry through to guess behind the stumps. Well to his right, but reaching to two-handed up to his right, well above his waist. Madsen likes it. He's clapping. So he claps everything, doesn't he? But uh, they sort of take it in turns, right? It's, it's, it's a very modern thing, isn't it? Yeah. Irritating. And not as noisy as some teams Where in that did he respect. Where go to Middlesex? Oh, in goes Connors and he bowls and it's straight, slightly short of a length. Evans is up on his toes, pushing out towards mid-wicket in defence. No run. Not only were they noisy, but the one that I can't remember his name. He, used to, he ran up to Shan Masood and basically clapped in his face after every ball, which I thought was uh, needed sorting out by the umpires who did nothing. And there were two international umpires as well, Kettleborough and Illingworth. Just nip it in the bud. Clapped in his face. Yeah, just yeah, just going round and going. Come on, we're very, very close tedious, to the bat. Tedious, tedious yeah, stuff. Quiet. Connors is in fuller this time. Evans is waiting deep in his crease. Bunts it rather out towards mid on. A little bit of a flourish, having played the shot. Up towards 
Lack Mallet goes at, at mid on with those bandages. Which he's, he's just adjusting on his right arm, just shaking it a little bit. And and it like I say, a... it's going to be a bit of a shock for him to have to bowl almost twice as many overs as he's really used to bowling in a calendar year. Just in the championship, and he's here for all formats. Connors is in and bowling down the leg side. Not taken by Guess, and that's going to run away for four buys. I don't think that hit anything. No, it didn't. Shaped play at it, but it bounced through. He got two hands to it, uh, Brooke Guess, and somehow it just sort of bursts through and runs down to the finest of fine legs for four bonus runs for Leicestershire. 23 for one. Evans, just the two runs off the 22 balls he's faced. Rhodes yet to get off the mark, having faced seven. They have kept it tight, Derbyshire, and they've picked up a wicket and will be reasonably pleased, I suspect, with their first three quarters of an hour's work. I think so. It's the first change of bowling as well, and it's dull. He's going to come on from the pavilion end. Again, a relatively economical can. His first ball can be expensive as he gets used to uh, used to bowling again. Nick Potts warming up as well He's at mid-wicket. Double change possibly in the offing then. Mm. It wouldn't be a major surprise, would it? 23 for one after 45 minutes. Sam Connors with the breakthrough. Two slips for Arrows Dahl, so that's uh, relatively unusual. In and balls to Rhodes, a full delivery to begin with, and Rhodes doesn't time that one at all, just pushes it out into the offside, and there's no room. So he's got the two slips and the point. Sean Massoud is just stretching out his well, something or other. I've no idea what various parts of the body are called, really. And uh, <laughs> Coddleman's at mid half. I don't know why I started that. Oh, balls. That's wide and driven and four runs. Beautifully driven by George Rhodes. Races to the boundary, but it was too wide, really, and overpitched and driven. And Rhodes is off the mark now. 27 for one. Rhodes picks up a boundary. You suggested as much. The first one was not dissimilar, to be honest. Rhodes just didn't time it at all. But uh, yeah. that, that too that was poor. overpitched. That was a poor delivery. Truth and uh, got what it deserved, pretty much. The ball has now been delivered back. <laughs> yeah, we are here. Delivered back to Dallas in again, and that's a, a better delivery that's left alone outside the off stump. Shane in Pittsburgh's had a 15 hour. Uh, Shift and he says he's ready for some cricket. We well, just happened to have come to the right place then. Big Derby County fan. Pittsburgh, so cliche would have it. That's in a steel works then. <laughs> His 15 hour shift, but uh, yeah, no, I'm sure think, there are no, other I, yeah, industries yeah, in, no, in Pittsburgh. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Could be looking after some penguins as this one is pushed out to the offside by Rhodes. Uh, or even dressing up as a pirate. Could be. All those things. Yeah. What, what, let us know. <laughs> Fifteen hours of doing what? I know he was, he was on the coffee last night trying to stay awake. It was, it was morning to him, obviously. Or something. I don't know. It, I get very confused about American times. Anyway, which has more than one time zone. It's too big. Dull. His next delivery is pushed into the offside by Rhodes. There's no run. But it was good to hear from everybody. Just to prove that we're not just talking to ourselves. I mean, I'd sit here and watch cricket with Richard anyway, but it's nice that I probably wouldn't talk this much if we were just sitting outside there, would we? <laughs> We'd still be, still be kicked out for being too irritating. This next one is driven, but again, didn't quite time it, Rhodes, and it goes straight to Billy Goldman at mid-off. It's the end of the first over ball by Arno's Dali. He did can see the boundary. Are we going to see a double change, I wonder? Electronic technologies, Shane. So, uh, not still works. Are we going to see a double change? I think Sam Connors is going to have another one before we see Nick Potts. 27 for one after 12 overs. Four to Rhodes, two to Evans. I don't even know what electronic technologies are, but that's some kind of computing and all that, is it? 
So as David Popple said, it is Wisden Day. I think it's been fairly outspoken as well, or the editor has been fairly outspoken, particularly about the bonuses that the uh, ECB uh, hierarchy have paid themselves. It's also spoken Give some it nonsense. back, I think he says. In goes uh, Connors is continuing and beats Evans with a foolish delivery that comes off sort of a combination of pad and bat and squirts out rather towards backward point. How then? Well, it's Lawrence Booth, isn't it? It's it is. Yeah. What else? Yeah. Is, what else? Well, he's, he's done something in uh, in the mail apparently, which I haven't read, but. Um, in which he's, you know, five to watch or three to watch or something. And all of a sudden, Matt Critchley's right on the England radar now. He's had two games for Essex. Connors is in bowls and uh, slightly tentatively forward is Evans, pushing it out off the full face of the bat out into the offside. Critchley for England is um, is a, one of Connors' big forecasts in, in the, his cricketers' who's who entry. Yeah, I'm not surprised, and and, and I, wouldn't, I wouldn't be surprised either, but the, the fact that nobody ever comes further north than Watford Gap to see these cricketers and they have to go to Essex to even be considered on the radar is, is quite frankly absurd. Indeed, Connor says Critchley is the most underrated player in county cricket. Wow. Does Critchley say Connors is? Oh, I'll, I'll, I'll <laughs> check. In goes uh, Sam Connors and Bowles outside off stump. Not far outside off stump. Straight-ish, but far enough for Evans to safely leave and does. It would be good if he did. I can't imagine that he does, though. He's a good cricket for Sam Connors, but... I think Derbyshire would still, uh, still take some of the credit if uh, Critchley goes and play for England this year, certainly. <laughs> Connors in and at bowls. And Evans full and straight and waiting for it. Strokes it quite pleasantly out into the offside, but without any aggressive intent. Just the two scoring shots for Sam Evans. Two runs to him off 26 balls faced. Refusing to be hurried. Critchley, um, <laughs> what would you do if you were in charge of county cricket? Make tea longer. <laughs> and his guilty pleasure is a certain fast food chain with uh, golden arches, he says. In goes Connors and Bowles. Again, Evans defending on the back foot. Straight delivery pushed out towards mid-on. Up by Lackmal, and there's no run. Unfortunately, that the book doesn't. It kind of picks and chooses its answers, and uh, yeah. it doesn't print every answer from every player, which might be a bit more fun. So the probably the, the lawyers go through them first, though, I would imagine. I would, th yeah, I would I think there's a few red flags. <laughs> but in, go, <laughs> in goes Connors, and Bowles goes past the outside edge. You had to look to have a little feel for that one bounce and movement. Away from Evans into the gloves of Guest. Fortunate not to get a little tickle through. Will he continue, Connor? Seven overs, one for 12. Been a really good effort from him, particularly the last sort of four overs or so. Just took two or three overs to, to find his rhythm. Having done so, it's been impressive stuff, but I think there is going to be a change now. Is that warming up at first slip? Uh, Alex Thompson, the Thompson. Uh, off spinner. Yeah. Ooh, that would be an early one for him, but uh, they want to see if there's anything in it. Dahl begins a new over from the pavilion, and it's short and wide outside. The off stump, Ooh. and it's hammered in the air down towards the man at third man, wide third man, who is Sam Connors. Was that in the air the entire time? And it bounced it? about a yard to his right. If that hadn't been the first ball of the over, I wonder how close he could have got to that because yeah, he's sort of still. Sorted himself out, wasn't it? Was a it? little bit. Goodness me. He's a good fielder, Sam Connors, as well. I know he's down there, almost certainly because he's bowling at the moment, but quite often he'll be the, the sweeper square of the wicket. That's his next delivery from Dahl. Keeps low and goes past the edge of Evans' bat as he plays off the back foot. Through yeah. to the keeper. That did keep a bit low. It did look too, didn't it? Mm. Wasn't the greatest shot. No, no, Sam Evans has ever played, but as you say, Still thinking about skidded it. through a bit. Yeah, Thompson doing some serious warming up now. The sun has gone, it's and it's back again. 
Here is Dahl. This one is pushed into the offside. Masood does the fielding. So, uh, quite an interesting over so far. And the ball bouncing down to wide third. But yeah, we're going to see Tomo now, aren't we? I would, and if we're not, that would be incredible. Unless he's just going to bowl it over to uh, swap ends. I don't know. Let's see Dahl come on from the, uh, from the from the Bennett end, but he's bowling from the pavilion end at the moment, and that one is squirting off an edge down to uh, third man for a single. Evans moves to three. Well, young Mr. Kane is standing on the boundary with the helmet, so I think uh, we yeah. definitely are. Helmet and a gilet. He's carrying one and wearing the other. And he's saying, do you want this helmet or what? No, oh, you don't want it. Okay, well, I'll, I'll go back then. If he does bring it on, it'll be uh, at least a ploy who goes under it. As Dahl bowls, that's defended back to him this time by Rhodes. He's got five. Evans has got three. 29 for one. Hassan Azad, the man who was uh, dismissed for 17 like before wicket to Sam Connors, who we think has come to the end of a spell which is seen in ball seven overs, four maidens, one for 12. Decent. As Dahl bowls again, and that one is just backward of square, and it beats the man at uh, point, who easily is deployed and get through for a single 30. For one at the end of the Dahl over, umpire uh, Bainton, just suggesting to Anna's Dahl that he keeps a close eye on his front foot, or if he doesn't keep an eye on it, at least knows where it is. And uh, Sam Connors is going to continue. How very keen. The umpires to keep players off the, what might be termed, business areas of the pitch. Paul Buren Hendricks, frequent uh, warnings. Messages overseas, left arm seamer. Both in the first game and in the second. So much so that in the end he was sort of resorting to bowling around the wicket. Well, it will be Connors to continue. So Thompson's warming up as yet in vain, maybe a change of mind. And the Derbyshire ranks as Connors is in to George Rhodes, goes past the outside edge. Did he just drop his hands at that one? We're at very we're at a fairly fine leg. Within the batsman uh, has his back to us, but Rhodes indicates there was a nice little bit of movement there. You can see why Godelman's kept him on, can't you? And he's bowled really nicely, mm. Sam Connors. Hit a long chat there, though, with uh, with Alex Thompson, did the Derbyshire skipper, so whether or not he tipped him the wink and then changed his mind. Connors is in and bowls, bounces and leaves. Rhodes, but it's a little bit wider, so Rhodes can let it go through. If anybody does. tips anybody the wink anymore, do they tip people the wink? I think so. Yeah, it's a they used to do it in a lot, didn't they? But I'm not sure they did it in real life. Gavner. <laughs> <laughs> it's a Cockney expression, is it? I don't think there's enough people. They've often got naval origins, people. these sort of sayings, haven't they? But yes. I don't think that one, uh, I'm sure that one has. Connors is in and bowling back foot defensive shot from George Rhodes just outside off stump deflecting it down towards Dahl at a backward point position almost gully it's not a bad position for George Rhodes who, who is by instinct an attacking batsman and likes to play his shots and he has been known to hit the ball in the air early on oh top of the hour so fetches off next door updates for BBC Radio Leicester fairly shortly as Sam Connors bounces in at the start of his run and bowls and thick inside part of the bat as Rhodes defends that one off middle middle and uh, off really just turns his wrists on it plays it out towards mid wicket and there is no run Peter Eakins watching from Madison USA Derbyshire supporter where Madison is. Madison County. Um, rings a bell. May be wrong. 
Connors is in, goes past the outside edge again of Rhodes back. Lovely delivery that just in that corridor, defensive shot and swings past the outside edge. It's becoming a really good spell this from Sam Connors. Only wicket taker so far this morning has had LBW, 30 for one. But this is uh, coming to the end of his eighth over. Might just get the update in between overs. As Connors is in and bowls just a little bit wider this time and Rhodes can safely leave. End of the over, the 15th, 30 for one is the score. You'll hear me saying this again in a moment because here comes the update. Dahl will continue, obviously. He's only bowled a couple of overs from the pavilion end. Two slips, third man. Deep backward square. Behind the wicket keeper as Dahl is in. Forward goes Evans. He's pushed it into the gap. And uh, Sean Masood runs back and slightly to his left and picks up. So single to Evans. He moves on to four. Good morning. I'm afraid they've lost their first wicket, that of the inform Hassan Azad, who played really nicely in going to 17, got a good in-swinger from Sam Connors and was trapped on the back foot leg before wicket four, 17, 18 for one at that stage. Struggling a little bit against the bowling of Anush Dahl and Sam Connors. George Rhodes has come in to replace uh, Hassan Azad. He is six not out of 23 balls. Sam Evans, who's been there from the start, is on just four from 32. They'll be looking to try get through to lunch without losing another wicket for uh, before then they are 31 for one Dahl is in and Bowles goes past the outside edge again of Rhodes who is struggling a little bit at the moment Dahl is getting that little bit of outswing Rhodes is is groping rather as was Evans against Connors in the last over so Good seam bowling, good swing and seam bowling from these Derbyshire bowlers at the moment. Very much keeping a lid on the scoring rate and going past the outside edge quite frequently. In goes Dahl, bowls again, three in a row. He has now beaten Rhodes who sort of holds his pose a bit and looks rather disconsolately back down the pitch. Struggling. I think the bowling, I just suggested there on my update that they'll be pleased with the way it's gone with the ball. Sure. They've, they've bowled really nicely. That eight overs, four maidens, one for 12 from Sam Connors at one end sort of led the way, really. Uh, Dahl's just getting to his stride here. As so this next delivery bowled by him from the pavilion and it's pushed back towards him by George Rhodes. And. Uh, Stops it in his follow through. Derbyshire fan Peter's been watching, he's watching in Madison. And I was wondering where that was in the USA, uh, Madison County. Oh. Ma Mark Flatton thinks it's in Wisconsin. Oh, okay. I'm not, I could Google it and find out. Yeah. It's not fun now. No. Next, it's bowled him. Anish Dahl gets the breakthrough. Rhodes played forward. It hit the top of middle and off. Bales flying everywhere. And Rhodes has gone for just six and that is 31 for two Leicestershire now. That's been coming hasn't it? He was beaten three times uh, consecutive deliveries in that over. He managed to get a bat to the fourth delivery but the fifth was just too good for him. Sort of almost the same spot but just moved enough past the outside edge and uh, what a lovely sight for the bowler. Top of uh, middle and off and as you say the bales flying. Derbyshire a good start and it continues. Now comes Keyman. As far as Leicestershire are concerned, Colin Ackerman. And uh, George Rhodes will be very disappointed about that. His six came off 27 balls. Never really settled. And so Dahl in that over. Well, really did make him struggle. 31 for two. 
Here's a, it's an interesting character on Ashdale, one of my favourite cricketers, Bats nicely, he's already got uh, runs this season. Uh, obviously, first change in, in this game, in the absence of uh, Ben Aitchison, superb fielder. Really, uh, really started to fulfil the potential that a lot of people have seen in him. A lot of people didn't, but he, he kept going and uh, fair play to him. The fact that he did keep going means that uh, he's now a regular and pretty much one of the first names on the on the team sheet, I would suggest, for Derbyshire. Oh dear, you're on the... Uh, yeah, nobody wants that. Not you necessarily, am I on it? Or you just, you yes, were just blocking me, aren't we? Sorry, I was trying to get out of the way and so I'm, the camera could there's see There's me you. thinking that there's no way I could hide behind you when I can. <laughs> <laughs> I thought it would take two of you for me to hide behind. This must be the camera angle. So Colin Hackerman is the new batsman, but he won't be facing because it was the end of the over. Saranga Lakmal's back. From the Bennett end to bowl to Sam Evans, who's on the back foot playing it away through the offside. Could pick up four, likely to, on this fast outfield and does. Uh, Masood's chase was in vain. No, it's not Masood out there. Who is it? It's Dahl out there. Beg his pardon. And uh, rather gathered pace as it ran down towards the Upton Steel stand and uh, the meet. And Evans's first boundary of his innings. It wasn't an aggressive shot. It was a steer as much as anything. But he got it away in front of backward point. And uh, once you beat the infield, you've got a fair chance of picking up four. Goes Lakmal and bowls. A little bit late on that one. It was half forward, dabbed down on it. Steered it again out to Dahl. More or less straight to the fielder this time. So rotating his seam as Godelman at the moment rather than... It, it did look almost certain that Thompson was going to come on, didn't it? They, he went through a series of very uh, vigorous warm-ups and Nick the Potts. helmet came out. And Nick Potts is the other seamer who... Uh, We've yet to see. Picked up three wickets in the first innings last week. Lakmal is in, outside off stump. Swings a little bit further. Evans steps forward but leaves the bat firmly raised. On his debut. Was that a signal of a no ball? Or was he just stretching his right arm? Because it isn't too left in the over. Still says 16.2, doesn't it? Was that Liz? I, think that, was, could I think that was the third ball of the over. I think there might have been a no ball there, but it, it sort of kept it quiet. I'll keep watching my computer. Dahl is in and bowls straighter this time. pushing, Looking to get forward and pushing slightly across the line. Evans pushes it out towards mid wicket. And there's no run. No ball confirmed. That must have looked down. He, he was, he sort of, he, uh, they don't waiting. seem to shout anymore either. No, that would be helpful. Wouldn't it? Would. They, they were supposed to shout so that they could shout no ball before they put the arm out. So the batsman had the opportunity, I mean, I'm not sure whether he would, to a, a bowler like Lackmel to just play any old shot and try and get some runs. But It's a big deal in club cricket, isn't mm. it? In goes Lackmel and bowls outside off stump, allowed to bounce through by Evans. Many a shot I have changed on hearing the shout of no ball. From, from swipe to even bigger swipe. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, just a overstepping, I'm sure. They must they must miss a lot at this level. Well, at any level, really. No balls, it's almost impossible to raise your eyes and be in a position to do an LBW for me. Bowls outside off stump, a little bit too wide on this occasion. Swings further, and he nip one back towards the end of the over. One ball to come. 5.5 overs, none for 13. Two wickets at 121 apiece, but uh, I say it's been a sort of a similar story for, for Buren Hendricks, really. Leicestershire's sort of overseas. Signing, he's got uh, two at 96. <laughs> Both adjusting. Lakmal is in and bowls, and it's driven away for four. It's just uh, over pitched and it just lent into that Evans. No great flourish. 
just steered out between cover and point and it runs away to the boundary for four so two fours in that over for Sam Evans improved his scoring rate no end he's into double figures now 12 of 39 balls Leicestershire 41 for two from 17 he's only been going at three and over which, which doesn't excuse his, his lack of wickets of course but it's not like he's been spraying it all over the place he has uh, it's bowled quite tidily. It just hasn't got the uh, hasn't got the wickets he would have wanted. Whereas uh, Connors has got 11. Dahl has now got. Uh, uh, I can't see him. Where is it? There he is. Five. Five. I've printed one of those out myself, but I can't be bothered turning around. Dahl begins to new over, and Ackerman leaves this alone outside the host. It's here. Would have been very easy for me just to have gone like that but I didn't I leant across and made a fool of myself 41 for 2 I'd like to <laughs> it's difficult to be critical at 41 for 2 isn't it but rather than Lackmel give Nick Potts a go get him into the game early it's only his second game last week last week was his debut Dahl balls Nackerman defends out into the offside where Masood does the fielding Mike, Mike. yeah Sure, I'll get a go before lunch, but say when things are going as well as they are, Billy can just point to the scoreboard, can't he? Absolutely, it? yes, well done. Yeah, he can, uh, does what he wants, Billy. 41 for two, as we all know. That's why he's wearing short sleeves. His dial in balls. This one is driven. He didn't time that at all. I mean, he's going to go through for a single. There was a diving stop to his right by Sean Masood. He couldn't take it cleanly and Ackerman is off the mark with that single 42 for two the Derbyshire kit's nicer this year I like to mention the Derbyshire kit as everybody knows and it's too white it's, it's, it's not quite as bluey white this, this is it? proper uh, cream and they've yeah. got the the chocolate the pale blue and the uh, amber around the collar and the cuffs as this one is left alone outside the off stump by Evans to go through to Brook Gassy yeah really nice so, yep. uh, well done to and all involved in that. Sponsor's name is by no means um, writ large. It's unobtrusive, isn't it? Mm. I think I think it's the uh, hospital trust actually that they have on the front of the uh, Darby and Burton Hospital Trust that they have on front on the front of the first class shirts. Sevens weights oh. off inside half of the bat into the leg side, fielded by Nick Potts. Massively convincing shot from Evans, who's on 12 from 41 deliveries now, as Richard said earlier. He's been out there since the start. But they bowled very, very well at him. For the most part, he's not the sort of opener who's, who's really ever going to really impose himself. But he'll put overs into the legs. Next delivery is pushed out into the offside by Evans, which is partly the job. Yep. Oh, of an opener, no question about it. 42 for two at the end of the over, 12 to Evans, one to Ackerman. And before I uh, relinquish the microphone, uh, Durham 63 without loss now, having been put into bat by Nottinghamshire, who, uh, well, you know the rest, but they're going to be languishing in the second division, the wilderness of the second division, for some time if they don't get their act together. Uh, that's terrific to see. Glamorgan 39 for five against Middlesex. Ooh. It's a fire guard. That's not great. Worcestershire 84 without loss against Sussex. Freedy again, oh, no doubt. Well, he's, I mean, he's some bowler at this level, isn't he? Yes, to be he perfectly is. Yes, honest he is. with you. Yeah. Uh, no, he's not bowling at the moment, but he may well have got the wickets because uh, let's have a look. Let's have a quick look. Shaheen Chara for his six overs, one made, two for 18. Toby Roland Jones, two for 15. It's been a run out as well. Oh dear. Well, that was a, a brief reappearance from uh, Lackmar. Just the two overs then from the Bennett end. And it's going to be uh, going to see Nick Potts. Mr. Yes, Potts. That makes slightly more sense to me, I've got to say. But, you know. A little experiment just to see, I, I, I suppose, for Lackmar. The ends being as different as they are here at. Upton Steel County ground. Nick Potts then in from the Bennett end. Passed on by Pratt and bowls to Colin Ackerman who leans forward. Just forward defensive back to young Mr. Potts. Always sounds very nice 
Ackerman's back. A mellow sound. This is just captain. Batted uh, pretty well up at Durham. 121 runs for one south. Not a double century, though, is it? It is not a double century. <laughs> is in and bowls to him full outside off stump but too wide to tempt Ackerman to a cover drive just the fifth delivery he's faced single to him they like pots I know the, the hierarchy likes pots I spoke to um, Sam Connors about him uh, bowling in his, on his debut last week we spoke to Sam Connors at the end of one of the days he picked up three wickets in the first innings and um, yeah he said he was bowling at a good pace as well on a pretty flat deck. In he comes and bowls, just drifting on towards the uh, middle and leg stumps of Ackerman, who leans across and punches it, just turns his wrists on it, it runs away through wide mid on for four. Lovely shot again, lovely mellow sound of ball on the centre of Ackerman's bat. Nice way to score your first boundary. And on drive. It wasn't almost, it wasn't really a drive, was it? It was just a sort of punch, Push leaned it on it, pushed it away. Exquisite timing. 46 for two. I knew I shouldn't have praised Potts. Well, Leicestershire, you know, came up against Matty Potts at Durham last week, and he was very impressive as well. Not that he's any relation. In he goes, bowls and full. Thick inside edge there. Ackerman was looking to off drive. Had to adjust. Might just have come back a bit and... Almost took the hand off the bat as it squirted out towards mid-wicket. Martin in good form. We don't go to see him for a while. I think we see him in the height of summer up at Durham. He's been on a cruise, you know. I, I believe so. <laughs> <laughs> I believe so. He barely tweeted either. <laughs> Did he not? Yeah, no. <laughs> Bless him. Down the slope comes Nick Potts and Bowles. Ackerman is uh, tucked up a little bit there. It was full and... Almost got in a position to be yorked and he was getting looking to get on the front foot. So the instinct had to wait for it, hit it hard down into the ground. Potts himself fielded in his follow through. 19 years of age, Nick, uh, Nick Potts burnt upon Trent, another product of the pathway. So that's uh, excellent news for Derby to have two of their own products coming through the ranks at long last. In he goes, bowls. Uh, no ball, as is sometimes the case for probably the first time he's bowled from the Bennett end at the Upton Steel County ground, coming down the slope, the very slight slope. It's, it's more pronounced going up from uh, this end, the pavilion end, but he did overstep on that occasion. Umpire Pratt, no call, again, as you say, no. just the arm going out. Well, he probably says it quietly, you know, no ball or something. But he used to, they used to scream it, didn't absolutely, they? Absolutely, yeah. Potts is in. Ackerman forward. Big stride. Leaning forward. Pushes it up to mid on where it's picked up by Lackmull. And it's the end of the over. 48 for two after 19. Ackerman has five from 10. Evans, who sort of gritted his way through the first hour and 20 minutes. A couple of fours in the last over. He's on 12 off 42. Back in our day. Just scream at the top of their voices, the umpires. Like church mice now. So Anish Dahl's going to continue the... Uh, <laughs> I think <laughs> I think Alex Thompson was having his all on. He warmed up at first slip earlier on. Here is Dahl bowling to Evans, who drives straight to Shamasud. Extra cover and there's no rum. Some interesting comments from Nick, Nick Potts in his oh. who's who, who's who, who entry. His hobby is poker. Hobbies, amongst his hobbies, poker. Guilty pleasure. Solving a Rubik's Cube. Can you solve a Rubik's no. Cube? No. But we might have to put that to the test. And his prediction for the future of cricket. You'll have to wait for that in a moment. The whole next delivery is left alone outside the Austin by Evans. Which is that an English bowler will hit 100 mph. Ooh. And his biggest influence on his development as a cricketer is Steve Kirby. Uh, no, Yorkshire, the Yorkshireman now as you say at Somerset yeah it was Derby's bowling coach before uh, Ashmal Shazad 
arrived. Well, he arrived after Steve left. This next delivery from Dal. Possibly swings away from Evans, but he leaves it alone. And it goes to, to Brooke Guest. Nice to many of the twos are here. Happy Sikandi just walking down in front of us. Spot of training. Having finished yesterday, of course, or day before yesterday? Yesterday, uh, yesterday I think, yeah. They should still be playing today and tomorrow. <laughs> or ah, okay. yesterday right. and today, one or the other. <laughs> it is down, that one is... Uh, could have left that one as well, really, but he chose to play it off the end of the bat, toe end of the bat, down into the ground, fielded at uh, point by Lewis Deploy, and there is no run. Is poker a hobby? I suppose if you're not playing for money, I suppose it's just you know, it's a, a game you play, isn't it? Like Alex Thompson is a is an angler. That's a hobby. Dull one, but it's a hobby. Is Dal bowling, and that's turned into the leg side by Evans. They've gone for one. They think about coming back for the second. Uh, Ackerman was sent back by Evans. Not that he was ever really thinking too seriously about the second run. It was fielded down there in the distance by Matty McKinnon whose name hasn't been mentioned too many times so far this morning the leg spinner into the side for Lewis Reese, 49 for 2 now Evans moves on to 13 from 47, it brings Ackerman on to strike and Dahl's next delivery left allows a good leave left alone by Ackerman to go through to the keeper, it's the end of the Dahl over his boulder, 5 overs, 1 for 10 now Arno's Dell, 49 for two. Leicestershire won the toss this morning and decided to have about first. Ackerman has five. Evans has 13. One more wicket for Derbyshire and it will be their morning. It is, I think, at the moment. But if Leicestershire can get through to lunch with 70 for two, then they could probably say, well, we've got through the new ball and it's fairly balanced. So the session still yet to be... a. Uh, decided in that respect at least Nick Potts poker not on his mind at the moment Comes charging down the slope very straight run and bowls to Evans who's looking to turn into the leg side came off the pad I think and guest scampers out from his position yep just pad out towards backward square gets to the ball quickly and just the single leg by brings up the Leicestershire 50 greeted with a very desultory round of applause, <laughs> no indeed. complete indifference. <laughs> I think that's fair enough, even if they were 50. If they were 50 for none after three overs, then it's, you yes, know, it'd be. terrific. But 50 for two after 20.1, it's... Yeah, it's not quite, yeah. A general shrug went round <laughs> the ground. In goes Potts and Bowles. Ackerman on drives, very pleasantly indeed, but Lackmal... Makes something of a meal of the stop, falling over to his left. But it was travelling quite quickly, and as we've been saying, it's a hard, fast outfield. So, um, well, he'd be fairly used to the hard outfields, you would have thought. Yes. Lush outfields, yeah. I don't know what the outfields are like. They always look yeah. quite, they, they, look uh, yeah, they look hard, don't they? You would assume that, so, wouldn't you? much rain. There. But when it rains, I imagine it absolutely pours down. Teams. Pots in again to Ackerman full. Ackerman waiting for it, comes down and it hard, bounces out. It's very straight, bounces out into the offside, has to be treated with respect. Gentleman with a very large camera to our, uh, to our right on the balcony. A huge, huge number of lenses on it. You get presumably very close up with that. Either that or it's a sort of tank killing shoulder <laughs> missile launcher almost looks like it isn't it Potts is in and bowls Ackerman drives slashes he's caught oh he's given it away goodness me Ackerman went for the wide drive it was in the air and it was just high enough off the ground and Dahl took a really good catch it wasn't too far away from him but it was traveling and oh Ackerman will be absolutely gutted about that a real bonus for Derbyshire and for Nick Potts good work by Dahl and suddenly Leicestershire are in bother they are 50 for three stunning catch by Anish Dahl wasn't it it was barely off the ground I don't think and he, he shelled one I think it was at Middlesex it, yeah, it was at Middlesex, which was just sort of straight in and straight out. He's such a good fielder, Anna's Dahl, but that was a terrific take. And that'll settle Nick Potts down as well. It has It's a sort of multifaceted wicket as much as anything. Not only is it the third one that Darby should have taken, but to get rid of Ackerman, for Potts to get a wicket, just to get him into the game for the 
catch to be taken, which just shows right no liberties to be taken around Anuj Dahl. A big, big wicket. And at 50 for three, having uh, been told that they'd be bowling first here, Darbush, I think they will be delighted. Great out cricket, really. Backing up the, uh, the bowler. And Ackerman just couldn't quite believe what he'd done there. Wasn't there for very long. 14 balls and, and one four. He looked in good touch. He, he looked in very good touch at Durham last week. And uh, yeah, they're in danger here, Leicestershire. 50 for three. It's a relatively inexperienced batting lineup, although it's been strengthened by the addition of Mulder. But it's Louis Kimber who comes in at number five ahead of the South Africa Test all rounder. Kimber getting a chance in the middle. Only had the one innings up at Durham last week. Managed to uh, pull his third delivery onto his his stumps. So just the four runs for him. I think it was his third delivery. I have to look back over my notes. It was very early in his innings. So he's in unexpectedly, I'm sure, to him early as Potts is in and bowls to Louis Kimber, who is solid in defence. Tall young man, Lincolnshire. Back down the pitch to Potts. Picks it up in his follow through. And sends it on its way into the outfield to have a bit of polishing done to it. I seem to alternate it. Who does the polishing? Dahl is a, is a good polisher, but uh, he's stuck at backward point, so the ball takes an age to get back to him this time. Billy Godelman had a go. This is Kimber's just, just his eighth first-class game, so just making his way. As in goes Potts and Bowles to him, it's full on the legs, and he clips it neatly into the leg side, but only as far as mid-wicket. End of the over, a successful one for Nick Potts, courtesy of a very fine catch from Anuj Dahl at backward point to dismiss Leicestershire's captain Colin Ackerman. Never got off the ground very much, but it was enough. Dahl got two hands to it and held a very good catch indeed. 50 for three then. Dahl, a wicket to his name and now a catch. Will be buzzing as he prepares for his next over. He's going to be bowling to Sam Evans. In he goes and bowls. Evans, defensive on the off stump, dropping it out towards backward point. And there's no run. His role grows with importance with each dismissal. Leicestershire opener, just 13 or 49 balls, but he is in at any rate. Has a real job to do now. They cannot afford to lose another before lunch. Leicester very much Derbyshire's morning now as Dahl is in. Bowls. Evans looking to push a delivery off his legs out into the leg side. Doesn't get anything on it as it comes back and bounces a little bit. Pops out towards mid wicket. And there is no run. Bearing in mind the strength of the Derbyshire batting lineup, Leicester do not want to get. Dismissed for the sort of score that will put them in trouble. In goes Dahl and bowls on middle, middle and off this time. Just a little twitch from Evans as he plays it out towards backward point. There's no run. The crowd here at the Upton Steel County ground. A little subdued at the moment. Derbyshire fans expected, of course. Update coming for BBC Radio Leicester shortly as Dahl bustles in and bowls line and length delivery and Evan just leans forward, pushes it out to Masood who's in the covers. Orange heels on his cricket boots. Newish cap of course, very contrast, great contrast to that being sported by Billy Godelman. Darwish is a highly experienced captain at mid-off. Dahl is in, outside off stump, foolish, allowed to bounce through by Sam Evans. Mm. 
Dahl turns a short run and in and bowls and Evans is driving. He's got that one through the covers past Masood. I don't think it's going to go all the way. Masood knees pumping. He's going to drag it back a couple of yards back inside the ropes. Bit of a relay work down there. Duploy followed. Picks up uh, the throw and uh, relays it on its way. Evans takes three. Moves on to 16. 53 for three. Leans on his bat and uh, has a long chat to Louis Kimber. It is actually the end of the over, so Evans keeps the strike, essentially, which would probably not entirely displease Louis Kimber. He's getting us another chance to have a, a little bit of a look from the non-business end. Nick Potts will continue from the Bennett end. Two overs, one maiden, one for six. Still waiting on the update. As Potts comes down the slopes, down the slope even, and bowls. Evans back foot, defensive shot, comes off a thick inside edge, runs down towards uh, deep backward square. He takes one. Here comes the update. Hello, I'm afraid Leicester have lost three wickets now. The latest, that of their captain, Colin Ackerman, who was looking in good touch, albeit that he'd only been in for 14 balls. He drove a delivery from Nick Potts. Thick outside edge, it was only just a few inches off the ground as it flew towards backward point, but a really good catch at backward point by Anaj Dahl. That was the end of Ackerman for five. 50 for three at that stage. Sam Evans is still there. He's been there from the start. The opener is 17, not out. He's been joined by Louis Kimber playing just his eighth first class game. He'll be looking to get through to lunch. Uh, at the moment, Fox is struggling a little bit. They can't afford to lose another wicket before the break. They're 54 for three. Back with you on commentary. Kimber pushed that first delivery from Potts out towards mid-wicket. Fletch is back alongside us. You do very well to do those reports with your own voice in your head like that. Puts me off enormously. Pots from the Bennett end, that's left alone outside the old stump by Kimber. Goes through to Brooke Guest. Derbyshire will be the first bonus point of the match. It's the number of batting bonus points that has been uh, the remarkable thing for Derbyshire so far this season. They, I think they got 12 in the entirety of last season and they've already got six in two matches this time around. Thanks in no small part to <laughs> Shan Masood, obviously. Quite a difference he's made as Potts bowls, and that's uh, driven by Kimber. Up towards mid on, where it's fielded by Sam Connors. Foxy Phil, have we messed this up? Question mark. <laughs> no, um, no, no, no. Ackerman would be disappointed, but the first two wickets were super balls, and, the, and Ackerman's was a super catch, so Derbyshire have done a really good job this morning I think most people would have batted first that, that, yes, that's sir. the way at the moment especially given the way the pitches have been this, this the start of this season as uh, Kimber waits and flashes at that one that's gone all the way down to third man that went in between the slips and the point was fielded down there by Saranga Lackmal to go through for a single Kimber off the mark 55 for three so I think the Derbyshire almost certainly would have batted first themselves but I think you're right, Richard Dabisher, have uh, they bowled nicely and they've, uh, the fielding has been good. Uh, and they're the things you can affect when you, if you, if you don't get the way, what you want to do the first time, you, you, you've got to be able to field well, I think that's a given. And uh, the bowlers have done okay. It's Potts in to complete his over, that's on the leg stump, not his finest delivery, but there is a man at square leg, it's Lee's deploy. He does the fielding, they get through for another single. Evans moves to 18, 56 for three at the end of the over. Kimber has one. Now yeah, we're around about 25 minutes away from the end of the session, which uh, well, if Darbyshire can nick another one out, will be more than theirs. It's a big if. It is. I'm just looking at the scoreboard again. The, the way it's laid out now, they seem to have a little bit more room to to be a bit more expansive and it doesn't just say toss Leicestershire it says Leicestershire won the toss and decided to bat 
with a capital B on the bat. So oh, it's yeah. all very, yeah. a little bit too effusive, I think, there. I think uh, you, can, you can work out in the first innings, as long as you know who won the toss, what they chose to do. <laughs> Lakmar is Fair back. Point. Is back with us, replacing Dahl at the pavilion end. Is in outside off something a little bit short. Gets up on his toes. Evans doesn't time it, but he's got it away uh, in front of point. Scrambles back to Harlow. Uh, gives everything to his cricket, whatever he'd, uh, he's doing, batting, bowling, or fielding. Picks it up and uh, gets his throw away. But even so, there was always going to be two. And Evans duly moves on to 20.58 for three. Well, they could use all that space to spell out the time. 12.36, couldn't they? They could put it in, in words rather than just numbers. That'd be quite nice. <laughs> the clock that told you. <laughs> There's bonus points. Anyway. Akmal is in. Bolts just outside off stump. A big leave from Evans. Lifts his bat high over uh, the line of the ball as it swings through into the gloves of uh, Guest. Two slips for uh, Lakma, still searching for his first wicket uh, of the innings. Point, extra cover, mid off, mid on, mid wicket. And third man and long leg. That was uh, one of Martin's big things up at uh, Durham last week. Mal is in a little bit short and waiting for it in the crease is Evans on off stump. Carefully out into the offside and there's no run. To congratulate Nottinghamshire they've managed to pick up a wicket. Hold on to that. See Brunty's in Nottinghamshire cleaning graffiti. Has <laughs> he? Yes. Well, so Newark, I'm sorry, Newark's I didn't mean in to Nottinghamshire, write all those, isn't it? I didn't really mean to write all those nasty things about Nottinghamshire. Well, he says, good morning from Newark, where he's oh, spending Newark the day is. cleaning yeah. graffiti off signs. He says he wouldn't mind so much if people in Nottinghamshire knew how to spell. <laughs> <laughs> in goes Lackmal and Bowles. Fuller, but wider. So, again, Evans can leave the outswinger. Yeah, Dave Bracewell constantly tweeting about the football teams in Newark. Flow Serb, I think one of their teams was called. But no, I think it was a, clearly a company team that had done ah, quite well okay. and risen through the pyramid. But yeah, yeah definitely in Nottinghamshire. The nicer part, if there is one. Lackmal is in bowls on towards middle and leg this time and on the back foot Evans as he prefers to be in the third has been preferred to be this morning by and large pushes to mid wicket he was getting forward determinedly on an increasingly flat track at Durham last week it was too flat really it, it sort of died a little bit um, on the last day that first game was exciting though wasn't it? I saw your tweet when you counting down the overs and then counting down the balls it was well 26 and a half overs you think mm. It's all over. In goes Lackmar on bowls. Better length, but just drifting onto the legs again. And Evans has played it neatly out through square leg. He's going to pick up a couple. His deploy slides back and picks up and throws in left-handed, of course. Evans on to 22. 60 for three. Just in the last 20 minutes or so, so, so even, he scored a, a little more freely. He's had to really battle uh, through the first hour and a half or so Sam Evans but he has done so and uh, without him it wouldn't be a pretty picture isn't particularly pretty at 60 for three for Leicestershire can you imagine that there's is that Gavin Griffiths down there yes yeah, so yeah. the twos are all down there imagine if you'd sat on one of these benches all day and now all, the, all of a sudden the entire not, uh, Leicestershire second team is doing ridiculous exercises while you're trying to watch the cricket Nick Potts begins a new hole. Oh, and it strikes him on the pad. There's a big appeal, but the umpire's unmoved. Kimber is the batsman. I thought there might have been a little inside edge, to be honest, but I can't hit perfectly. And it just again seemed to strike him quite low down on the pad. That's what I thought, yeah. Maybe, can he have been just outside the line? Sam Connor's having a word with Nick Potts. That's good to see. Don't give up your appeals. There we go. I think they've been moved now. You see that large expanse of grass away to the left hand oh, side? Oh, going possibly slipping down, actually. Okay. It's 
next delivery is uh, shorter and punched into the ground where it's fielded beautifully at uh, backward point by Anos Dahl. Rob Pressler, the fox in Malabo. Woeful, he says. No other word required. Ooh. Yeah, don't give up hope yet. It's early. It is. Mulder is to come. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Expectations, I think you could say, are quite high of the <laughs> <and> Mulder. <laughs> uh, pot's in, and that's driven straight to Billy Godelman by Kimber. Godelman gets down in the long barrier position to do the fielding. And we've got Louis Kimber, and Sam Evans is established now. Harry Swindles after... Pian Mulder. Farmer Ed after that. Eddie Barnes. Good old Barnsy. Yes. They've been in the wickets this season already, which is good to see as uh, Potts balls outside the off stump through to wicket keeper Brooke Guest, and there's no run, obviously. They got into the side at the end, towards the end of last season, and uh, credit to him has maintained, he's kept his place. Is it as, as willing a bowler as you're going to find? Oh, absolutely. And a, a battling batsman. Hard to get out. Magnificently round shoulders. Yes. <laughs> All the way to the world. Well, he's known as the coat hanger by <laughs> Leicestershire. I'm not surprised. The nice lad. 60 for three pots, bowls to Kimber, who pushes this one up to Billy Godelman again, and there's no room. I interviewed him uh, at Chester the Street, actually, when he was on loan at Derbyshire. It had absolutely hammered it down, and he was due to make his debut. But then we didn't play in the T20. But he was he was willing to come and have a chat. Mad keen Leeds United supporter. We, I didn't hold that against him at any stage. So uh, you've got a Bolton fan in your ranks as well, haven't you? Which which I do object to. But there we go. 60 for three. Potts balls to Kimber who drives. Again, doesn't really time it. Beats Matthew McKinnon coming in from cover, but goes straight to Billy Godelman. At a wideish mid off, and it's the end of the over. Kimber won. Evans 22 60 for three. Leicestershire, who won the toss this morning, and decided to have a bat first. Derbyshire will be very pleased indeed. Wickets for Sam Connors, Anna Dahl, and Nick Potts. Brunty's favourite double century moment the sound <laughs> of Bob Hunt crying into his microphone when Ryan Higgins was bowled by Chris Wright when he was on 199 against Leicester in 2019. I must admit, I, I, it's not something I remember. It's perfectly possible, Bob. Oh, absolutely, that sounds, sounds that very sounds Bob. sounds very Bob. Yeah. The old yeah, boy's OK. It. As in from the pavilion end goes Lackmal and bowls. Nice line and length to Libby on off stump. Evans head right over the ball as he defends it out into the offside and there's no run. Occasionally in the effects mic you will hear the sound of somebody um, walking past us. The, walking. the floor on the Burroughs Terrace uh, alongside us and indeed behind us uh, to get into the commentary boxes is a sort of metal grating and um, because obviously it's a flat roof un underneath it so to keep people's feet dry they put up this sort of metal grating on top as Lackmal is in and bowls. Evans is forward, punching it away through extra cover. It's going to be a long chase for Sean Massoud. It's not going to get to the boundary. There could be one for the throw. No, they haven't taken the third sufficiently quickly, so they leave it at three. In comes the throw from Massoud. Evans moves on to 20. Five has already gone up on the board, and indeed the manual scoreboard, the score under 63 for three. Yeah, he's not really bowled consistently enough here, Lackmal, in his second spell so far. He has a new man at whom to bowl now in Louis Kimber. 12 balls faced for Kimber, just a single to him so far. As Lackmal is in and bowls too wide. Kimber just uh, lets it go through, remarks his guard. Lincoln-born Louis Kimber, not as uh, cricketers who's who has it, which presumably he filled in, filled in, Scunthorpe, but 
It's gone for a Mrs. Kimber's co- corrected me. Yeah. Like, where did, would it be like, maybe the local hospital? Say, but where does it say Anish Dahl was born in there? Then? Oh, let's have a look, see. Because I know where he was born. Okay. I'll, I'll find out for you. Yeah. I've not earned as much as Richard, so I can't. Newcastle recall. under Lyme, they Staffordshire. Absolutely correct. As in goes Lackmar, who wasn't in Newcastle under Lyme, bowls outside of stump. Louis Kimber lets it go through. The cricket archive has him down as Newcastle upon Tyne. Ah. Two very, very different Staffordshire. Very different places. Most beautiful thing that Anush Dahl has ever seen. What do you, what do you think that might be? Um. Well, he, hasn't, he didn't see Sean Masood before he uh, before he filled his <laughs> form in. I can't imagine it was Billy. It's, I have no idea. It's Universal Studios Florida, Brackett's theme park. Oh, dear. The most beautiful thing he's ever seen. Come on, don't you? <laughs> in goes Lackmar. And Bowles squared up a fraction there. Louis Kimber is uh, threatened to come back in, but it was a foolish delivery, and he was able just to play it out into the offside. Thinking purely, I suspect, of, of lunch now. They're so close to the Peak District. <laughs> and his hobbies, well, if... if Oh dear. Is Nick Potts it likes yeah. um makes sense after the previous answer. If Nick Potts likes um poker. So it's, it's Anush it's likes riding roller coasters. Right. Is that what I never knew that? I have to ask him about that. Bit yeah. of a roller coaster of a yeah, season. Something of a theme as Lackmal goes in and bowls too wide, trying to tempt Kimber into a big drive, lets it bounce through into the gloves of guest. And what gives him joy? Going on theme park holidays with his brother. So that's, you see, yeah. it's, it's all, it all comes together. So now we know that he likes roller now coasters, you know. basically. Essentially, yes. Excellent. I had no idea. Which is the one in, there's one near, in Derbyshire, isn't there? Towers. Golden Towers, of course. Yeah, mm. that's not far from Newcastle. <laughs> there you go. Not far at all. But clearly not as beautiful as uh, Universal Studios. 63 for 3. The sight of all those roller coasters. Yeah. Do you like a roller? No. No, no, I don't no, know. No, no. I used to, but not anymore. Evans waits as this new over from uh, Potts begins and he clips it down towards long leg. Nicely picked up on the run by Shan Masood. Hasn't got the strongest of arms, but it's a good ground fielder. And he gets the applause of uh, Alex Thompson and Wayne Madsen as he throws it back. A single was taken. Evans moves to 26. Kimber has won. Yeah, the Leicestershire seconds who are, who are currently going through some running and all that kind of stuff in front of the manual scoreboard. Um, I'd imagine that Matty McKinnon saw plenty of those because he's the only player who's playing in this match who played in the twos game. So he presumably would have been pulled out of it had the game not finished. That one is left alone outside the off stump by Kimber to go through to the keeper. Uh, they didn't need to pull him out though because Derbyshire managed to lose it in two days. So uh, yes, it can't have been uh, it can't have been yesterday when it finished. It must have been the day before because Matty McKinnon was here yesterday practicing with uh, Alex Thompson. He's down on the ground at the moment, just stretching his back out. Will he get the over before lunch? As well, I'd give it to Thompson played. personally, but uh, as Potts bowls, and that is defended by Gibbons, another no ball. Spots is second and the third from that end which suggests that uh, Pratt's going to have to keep looking no Bainton yet to signal no ball 66 for three as a result four of the runs four of the 12 runs that Nick Potts has conceded in his four overs and two balls have come via no ball so uh, he's bowled okay as the young man got a wicket as well one for 12 Again from the Bennett end. And the, oh, he gets a thick inside edge onto his pad and dribbles out square on the offside there. Kimber got away with one. Moral victory. We had a number of moral victories last week. Unfortunately, they don't appear in scorebooks. I said to James Carr, who was with us from the uh, Northern Diamonds last week for two days. Good to meet. James. This next delivery is outside the Austin and left alone. Lauren Tuffrey from Derbyshire Women was with us as well. Excellent to uh, meet her for the first time. She was uh, a great addition to the commentary team. Uh, we had Grace 
Ballinger on uh, on Saturday. We were overflowing with third voices last week. So this week, nothing. Absolutely nothing. And we have yet to be favoured. Did you have one? No. So that, have you ever had one? <laughs> have you had one at all <laughs> this, this season? season. I mean, no, no, no. That's what I'm saying. We have yet, yeah. yet to be favoured. Right. Oh, we've had more than you can shake a stick at. This next one's outside the off-stump, wide of the off-stump. And through to the keeper. Kimber. One from 22 deliveries. Or 21 deliveries. It might already have gone up. Evans, 26 from 65. He hasn't had to play it too much, Louis Kimber, one no. way or another, which not entirely displeasing, possibly. Nine minutes or so until the lunch interval. Don't think he'll try to play too many shots between now and then, either, if he can get away with it. This one is outside the off stump from Potts, and again through to the keeper at the end of Potts's fifth over, which is right on the cusp of the number of overs that medium pace has generally bowled. So he may well be uh, told to take a breather because at the moment the helmet is being taken out for at least deploy and the fielding pads. He's putting those on while Soringa Lackmal gets ready for his next over. So we're going to be a bit see a bit of spin before lunch. It's like a Formula One tyre change now. He's putting the pad on his right leg and uh, and Harry Kane is putting the fielding pad on his left leg. And now Sean Massoud's coming to help out as well, which is it's quite comical, really. Somebody will be on to tie shoelaces in a minute. There was there was one um, event of note at Durham last week. The, the helmet was hit. Oh, was and, it? And it's, uh, it was, we were later told, the very first time it had happened against... Durham in their first class history in 30 years uh, really Ned Eckersley spilled one and it uh, went behind him and went onto the helmet five runs was signalled they've never had any luck have they Durham I believe <laughs> in that time 70 runs had gone to uh, against other sides Lackmo is in and bowls on off stump nice line and nice length and Evans half forward steering it out to point there's no run. Must have been the people in the box next to you who found that out, surely. I can't imagine. It was the scorers, yeah. yeah who, who came to, who, who let us know. Yeah. I was going to say. They would be very, very good notes that Martin was taking if uh, if he knew that. Let's have, let's have copious notes. Well, he did think afterwards, as is sometimes the way of things. In goes <laughs> Lagmal Bowles, and uh, very hurried and late on that one is Evans. It was slightly wide, didn't have to play it. It did and was just dropped it down, but it bounced back towards Brooke Guest behind the stumps, an indication of the lateness of his decision to play. Is that Tim McKinnon having a little bit of a warm-up down there at long leg as well? Yeah. So we could get, uh, we could get one from spin. each end. Yeah. We could get one from yeah. each end. Yeah. Everybody Off involved. Spin and leggy. Both. There isn't Often much turn here. In goes Lackmal and Bowles. Nice and uh, straight, but just just outside off stump. Lent forward with an angle bat. Evans and steered it down towards third man. Takes one. Moves on to 27. 68 balls he's faced. 67 for three. <coughs> Leicestershire. Kimber, 22 balls for his single so far. He is, um, and it... <laughs> you look at those figures, you don't think so, but he is he came into the side initially as a big white ball hitter and he looks a big strong powerful young man. He is a big strong powerful young man, but getting a red ball chance as well, it's a very different affair for him. Lackmal is in bowls late dish decision to leave. And he wasn't so very far away from off stump, but a, a good decision. Thompson Thompson has, has warmed up Fully oh, twice yeah, now, yeah. but he, he hope he gets a go. Gives it everything, yeah. What was what was said afterwards? Um, Open Durham. Oh, he, no, Martin hadn't thought he'd seen one before, but uh, right, yeah, okay. So you don't see it very often, do you? Very rare. I couldn't remember seeing. No, one. I don't think I've seen one. I may have done. Lackmal is in. Kimber is leaning forward. On off stump, playing it out towards mid off, and there's no run. We had Not when it's clear, and no. it, it was sort of. We clear, had a five. We have, you see fives. We had a five at, at, mm. uh, at Middlesex through overthrows. But 
uh, that was two dabs. I think it was Shamasud who was the beneficiary. As if you need to give him extra runs. But not seen a helmet hit as far as I'm aware. I'm sure there'll be people out there who'll say, oh, it happened last week, do you not remember? The answer is no. Black Mal in. Side off stump. Kimber leans forward but leaves the bat raised. End of the over the 28th of the innings. 67 for three. We should get two overs, two more overs before lunch. Again, it's coming on, so... Uh, but how can it... Oh, no over eight. We'll, we'll, we've lost three wickets. That's why the over eight is still level, isn't it? So it is going to be Mc Matty McKinnon. Leg spin on the first morning of a game. Derbyshire don't, don't bowl their overs very quickly, though. They never have. In my ex in my time here, they've, they've always bowled them relatively slowly. If we get away by half past seven of an evening, that's, a, that's an absolute bonus. <laughs> we had a five. We had a five past in the first uh, game. And yet third on, day against on day Worcester. one, Sussex bowled their requisite number of overs at six o'clock. They've bowled the last one bang on, which is commendable. It can be done. Yep, yeah, it can. Oh, My dear, not many wickets fell though, did they? Or did, was that another uh, days uh, when they did? Uh, two. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, day day two, sixteen, and then two and one. There's a couple of double centuries that I may have mentioned. McKinnon then bowls, and that, that one is played off the back foot out towards the uh, the cover boundary by Evans, where it's fielded by the man who hasn't bowled yet. Alex Thompson, who's been warming up again. But Matty McKinnon's got the nod. I mean, if if there isn't any turn that the wrist spinner will get any turn that there is more than the the finger spinner, only so it sort of makes sense. It's keeps it's very much habitual, he blows into his hand a lot. I think that's what leg spinners are taught to do. Spins the ball from right to left hand and then blows into his right hand be exhausted in, in a moment lest his batsmen try what they can to prevent another over after this one as McKinnon bowls, that's back into his crease goes Kimber and pushes it back to McKinnon, and rather than just keeping it in his hand and walking back to his mark tosses it to Anu's Dahl, then gets it back off Dahl The proper clock atop the scoreboard is showing one, one, so. doesn't it, already That's a bit quick though, it is 12.58 According to my laptop, this next one is turned into the leg side, into the ground, where it's fielded by the man under the helmet, Lears to ploy. Throwed the, threw the throw, threw the ball back at the stumps and dislodged a bail. Kimber hadn't left his uh, crease at all, though. And now he's just uh, he's spotted a bit of debris there, yep, yep, need to tap that down. Oh, there's a bit more. He's seen that it says 12.59 on the clock now, and we've still got three deliveries of this McKinnon over to bowl. He's in and uh, that's it. off an edge down towards backward point when it's fielded by Potts. He's got a short leg, a slip, backward point or gully. So reasonably deep. There's a man out on the cover boundary. There's a, a mid-off, a mid-on, a mid-wicket. And a deep backward square leg. As Kimber waits. His next delivery from McKinnon turns and he, oh, he's bowled him. him. He's bowled him. I thought it was a catch, but McKinnon, in his first over of the season, has picked up a wicket and Kimber has gone. That one clearly turned. He's been dismissed for one. And Leicestershire on the stroke of lunch. We probably won't get another over now, but another batsman's coming out. A 68 for four. Real bonus for Derbyshire and McKinnon. Derbyshire's morning absolutely now but a little bit of bounce a little bit of turn and uh, it was a little bit too good for Louis Kimber always nice for the spinner when they the other bail is left on but it just clips the off bail and off it went and poor Louis Kimber walks off ahead of his partner Sam Evans who leaves on 28 not out but uh, that is lunch. Louis Kimber thought he'd battled his way through until lunch very nearly did so There'll be one ball in McKinnon's over left after the interval. But 68 for four. This after Leicestershire won the toss and chose to bat. Derbyshire will be delighted.
with their morning's work. Hassan Azad, leg before wicket to Connors for 17. George Rhodes, bowled by Dahl for six. Ackerman, key wicket potentially caught. Dahl, bowled Potts, five. And just now, Louis Kimber, bowled McKiernan for one. Definitely Derbyshire's morning. They bowled nicely, they fielded nicely. And uh, Leicestershire to be four down, having won the toss and decided to bat first on what looks like still a pretty flat track. They will be absolutely thrilled. Absolutely thrilled. Well, we we'll have, both have updates to do. I'm sure that um, Vian Mulder will enjoy his lunch, anticipation of coming out afterwards, but at least he's got a uh, time. He knows it's coming and can prepare accordingly. But he is going to have to do a good job for Leicestershire in a company with Sam Evans if they are going to get this first innings back on track. They are very much on the back foot on what I think we have to stress has been a fairly decent track. Nothing too much wrong with that. But there was that little bit of turn there for McKinnon. Here comes the update for BBC Radio Leicester. Hasn't been a great morning for the Foxes, I'm afraid. They won the toss, chose to bat for first on a perfect morning in terms of the weather, but they lost four wickets throughout the session. Hassan Azad, who was leg before wicket for 17. George Rhodes, who was bowled for six. Colin Ackerman, the captain, who was caught on five. And just now before lunch, Louis Kimber, who was bowled for just a single. Sam Evans, he's been there throughout. He is 28, not out at lunch. He'll be joined afterwards by Vian Mull the Leicestershire's new overseas signing a lot of pressure on him they need him to score big in this innings because they've gone in for lunch on 68 for four
Well, good afternoon from the Upton Steel County ground, Grace Road in Leicester. The afternoon session on this first day of the LV Insurance County Championship fixture between Leicestershire and Derbyshire. Ball by ball commentary brought to you by the BBC, as it does on every ball bowled in county cricket throughout the season. In this case, BBC Radio's Derby and Leicester. Dave Fletcher and Richard Ray your commentators on the game, which will resume with Derbyshire very much on top. Leicestershire won the toss and chose to bat first, but they went in for lunch with a scoreboard reading 68 for four. Hassan Azad having been dismissed leg before wicket by Sam Connors for 17. 
The score 18 for one, George Rhodes was bowled by Anuj Dahl for six, 31 for two, Colin Ackerman, Leicestershire's captain, was caught by Dahl at backward point, a very good low catch off the bowling of Nick Potts for five, 50 for three, and uh, last ball before lunch, because it was the last over before lunch, there will actually be one more delivery in the over. Louis Kimber was bowled on the back foot, going back to the leg spinner, Matty McKinn, and ball just turned and clipped to the top of the off bail. Perfect delivery. Sam Evans batted throughout the morning. He will resume on 28 not out. And with him will be a debutant for Leicestershire, Vian Mulder, the South Africa uh, international all-rounder. Played in his country's last two test matches against Bangladesh. He's played um, ten test matches for South Africa now. His arrival in the country, however, was delayed. Indeed, his participation in the test match was curtailed because he came down with COVID. He obviously has recovered now. We'll have anticipated, probably, the batting in, in somewhat different circumstances, less tricky circumstances, perhaps, but he's going to have one delivery to face from Matty McKeon and Fletch. Richard. At his lunch at horribly quick pace, bless him. He's uh, alongside us to see if McKeon can two make it two. two and two. Two and two on the side of lunch. The scoreboard hasn't updated, but I can assure you it is Vian Mulder. Mulder Wayans, let's hope that McKeon had a rather more leisurely lunch than the rest of us. Tosses himself a catch, slip, short leg in place, and he bowls, and that is turned into the leg side by Vian Mulder. And it's the end of the over, 68 for four. Um, I was told, I was asked what, what the delivery was. <laughs> I said, I don't know, it turned and bounced. That uh, McKinnon bowled to get rid of Louis Kimber. Um, it was the googly, and he, he, he hasn't had a googly up until this the start of this season that's what I'm told it was the googly um, yeah well there's a frown on this you, you look very sceptical about no, just it just seeing the replay look, it looked to turn past the outside I'm edge but I'm not I'm going to try and check it yeah, out let's have I'm a look not, on N yeah. NV play rather than uh, I'm going to check it out here mm. let's have a look did we did, did we miss we're not at the perfect angle by any stretch so could well have been Sir Angelakmal will continue. He's been striving away. He's tried both ends. Mostly he's been bowling from this pavilion end and he is going to continue from the pavilion end. In he goes and bowls to Sam Evans who steps inside one that's directed down the leg side. Gestures at it. Doesn't get anything on it. Taken by guest behind the stumps. This will be Lakmal's 10th over. You've had a look, and it looked to me like the leg spin. The leg spin. Who, said it, who said it was the googling? Can't say, because that, uh, that would embarrass them. They've been watching cricket a long, long time. Oh, I see. Griffin. <laughs> Can't say. <laughs> Doesn't look like a googly to me. No, I couldn't. Well, it beat him on the outside edge. He just yeah. went, he just played it. So, anyway. It certainly wasn't. In goes Lakmal, and the bowls to Evans outside of stump, bounces and swings away, and uh, again taken by Guest, the cameraman having a little bit of a bother with his um, his various wires and what have you, that he keeps hitting the uh, grating alongside us. I don't think he quite understands how the yeah, effects, the effects well, might though, work, so did he, bless him? Mm -hmm. Just ask me if I managed to finish mine. As so well, fortunately, they didn't fill the box to the brim. Uh, they barely covered the bottom of it, in, in, in all fairness. But Sad days, sad days. <laughs> but these days are upon us. In goes Lakmal and Bowles. He's appealing for leg before, but he's not going to get that one. He was propping forward Evans, and it hit him above the knee roll. And, uh, well, uh, just wasn't right, essentially. And umpire Bainton, he's a very good umpire. Hard to persuade. Just shook his head. I could have been persuaded if he perhaps needed to get the game moving on a bit there. One part back to <laughs> like the good old days. It used to happen mm. it, fairly regularly. In goes Lackmal. Bowls and he's reaching for one. Evans drew him into the shot. It was a bit of a half-hearted push out. It is rehearsing 
a drive at the moment, but it was neither one thing nor t'other and uh, could so easily have nicked that one through to Guest or to the slips. Got away with it, Evans. Kim Barnett used to tell a great story. He was batting with Alan Hill, Bud Hill, uh, and the umpire said to, uh, said to Kim, he said, I love the way you're playing, but I'm not happy with him at the other end. If he doesn't get a move on, he's going. So uh, Kim went and told Alan, who just carried on batting the same way, and the first time he was hit on the pads, off you go. <laughs> Lakamali is in, bowls, back foot defensive, push out into the offside, bounces to Dahl at backward point from Evans and there's no run. The full unexpurgated version of that story is much funnier, I always think, but uh, you get the drift yeah. and it happened, you know, I've, I've, don't forget lads. You're displeasing me aesthetically. My, on your my way. train goes at 20 past five, <laughs> last day of the game. turns in and bowls good length but wide a little bit too wide and swings away and Evans lets it go through the umpire Bainton hands Lakmal his cap and uh, sweater end of the over 68 for four remains the score well you would have thought McKinnon would have stayed on but if it was a one off yeah, no he's taking him straight off again New batsman. Connors is going to bowl from the uh, the Bennett end. So bowl McKin nicely this McKinnon morning. goes off with one for one from one. Yeah. <laughs> so Connors eight overs, five maidens, one for twelve this morning. Bowled nicely, picked up the wicket of Hassan Azad for seventeen. The only batsman other than Evans to get to double figures. Lean back so everybody can see. There you go. Oh dear, I can only <laughs> apologise. Here is Connors then bowling to Mulder. A couple of slips in place and Mulder. Does he play inside the line of that one? I'll give him the benefit of the doubt this once. The, I, I don't mind coloured numbers, but they're quite faint on the uh, They are, the Leicestershire weirdly, shirts, they, they are on both the South Africans. There's only oh. Hendricks and now Mulder has come out with this very faint. If you oh, look okay. at the back of Evans' shirt, they're it'll be quite right. clear. Think, but for some yeah. reason... It's in a sort of greyish green uh, on the back of okay, Mulder, then. and um, eventually I'm going to call Hendrick Scully. You are. Inevitably, you but are. Mulder and Hendrick's his shirt. It's Connor's bowls leg stump. Mulder just clips that down towards a long leg for a, a single that is greeted with rapturous applause it's from the Mulder fan club. His first ever run for Leicestershire. Noting Marcus Harris scoring hundreds of runs already for Gloucestershire. Yeah, pointed out to me during the long Shambasu's not done too badly in his first three mat first three innings, but yeah, it happens, doesn't it? It happens. Yeah. Can't always hang on to it. Got to be playing in the first division. You're in the wilderness of Division Two for long, do you, Nottinghamshire? Here comes Connors again, and that one's defended up towards Saranga Lakmal. Just get into the spirit of the, the way the Derbyshire field those balls that just roll up to a fielder. He's just touched the peak of his cap, saying, "It's all right, lads, I've got this." And uh, bends down and picks the ball up. It's Nottinghamshire against Durham. Durham went to lunch just shy of 100. They're now up to 100. 100 for two in 30 overs. Nottinghamshire. We won the toss and decided they'd have a bowl first at Chester Le Street. As uh, Evans waits and pushes this one out to the offside where it's fielded by Matty McKinnon, who's in a close ish cover. There's no run. Little Morgan, 76 for seven. At Cardiff against uh, Middlesex, we've got Shane Shower of Freedy for the second. I thought, should, did he play last week? I'm not sure if he played last week or not. I didn't notice. No, they didn't play last week. That's why he didn't play last week. Middlesex didn't play last week. Uh, so he's making. Did they play last week? No, they didn't play last week. They didn't play last week. No, no, they didn't. Here's Connors in and pulls a full delivery that Evans pushes out into the offside. See, I'm used to talking to myself at home, can't you? Um, uh, so, so he's making his Middlesex debut. And Worcestershire one, two, four for three against Sussex, who definitely played last week because I saw them. So that's all you need to know. You bang up to date and him. Leicestershire is 69 for four. The over rate has gone to minus one already, worryingly, for Derbyshire. It'll get worse than that before it gets better. Here is Connors in, and that one is pushed out into the offside by Evans and fielded 
Out there in the covers by Matty McKinnon, end of the over, 69 for four, Mulder 1, Evans 28. Contrasting figures, Mulder isn't a particularly tall man, but he's uh, strongly built. We had a good chat to him during the show on, on, on which you came on on Tuesday, uh, Fletch, about his background. Rug, big rugby man as well, so he kind of looks a bit um, wider across the shoulders. Played like many South African sports people, athletes, all sports at, at school, but rugby and cricket were his main ones, but he specialised in cricket. He was a failed rugby player, that's what he's saying. Well, I said to him, was, was rugby a possibility? <laughs> and he said, not from 15 onwards, yeah. ba basically. He said, I wasn't big enough. Most, um, of, the, uh, most of his compatriots are playing enough. at Sail Sharks at the moment, I think. There's a, there's a few down the road at, yeah. uh, at the Tigers as well. There's a lot of well. South Africans in the Premiership because they don't get called up for internationals, generally. Good Black them out. Into double figures already, 10 overs bowled. In he comes and bowls to Mulder, who's very correct on the back foot and uh, much appreciated by the uh, Leicestershire balcony below us. They are enjoying it, aren't they, for some reason? They're giving him encouragement, I, I think. think you've gone out there and said, I don't fancy it today, lads. And they've said, no, no, you can do it. Come on, Vian. Paul Nixon has been um, waxing lyrical about Mulder with the ball in the nets because obviously he's used to using a kookaburra ball and he himself said that you he can't believe how much it actually moves around um, new to him it'd be interesting to see how he gets on when he bowls Lackmal is in to him with the ball outside off stump and uh, lets it go through lets it bounce through but at the moment it's all about what he can do with bat in hand he did score a good century for the is it Lions I think he plays for in <coughs> in, in South Africa uh, domestically, of course. Gauteng. Is that couple the of, not sure, to be honest, a couple of <laughs> decent scores for his country against uh, Bangladesh. It, but it was a relatively short test series. Most tests against Bangladesh are relatively short. In goes Lakmal Bowles, very full, and it goes past the outside edge and uh, just swung a little bit. He tried to sort of come down on it and I think just block it rather than drive it and it was sort of through him before he was down on it. If that had been straight that would have been interesting. It was just wide enough as far as Pian Mulder is concerned not to hit the stumps or indeed take the edge. It wasn't uh, Vian isn't one of his given names. It's a sort of combination of his various first names that was were given to him by his mum, believe it or not. Um, I better believe it. In goes Lakmal and bowls. It goes past the outside edge with a really good one. Just leant forward, half forward. It's movement and not something he's used to, clearly. No, it's all right bowling with it, isn't it? But when he mm. just comes to batting against it, it can be a bit tricky. Hardest, Viljean Hardest wasn't his name. He was called GC, but he didn't have any names. They were just initials, two, two initials, GC, Viljean. So he was known as Hardest for absolutely no apparent reason. I saw a very funny tweet about a name this morning. I'll tell you that in a moment. As Lakmal goes in and bowls and on off stump and somewhat uncertainly, but at least uh, solidly, Mulder is behind it, dropping it out into the offside and there is no run. A sister had found out, been talking to her parents about her brother's name, which was... Uh, Arturitu, as in Artur, made sort of slightly longer in the Spanish or Italian style. So well, why did you, why did you call what him day that? Was he born? Yeah. Well, he was born. They, they said we named him after the, that little robot in Star Wars. <laughs> and uh, the, none of the rest of the family had realised this. In goes <laughs> Lakmal, played down firmly into the ground. Dahl, who's done some sterling work at that backward point position makes a save as it bounces down and up two-handed save but uh, they thought he was genuinely r2e2 his name not r2d2 the the numbers and letters and, and so they christened him or given him his name r2e2 thinking think it was a full arthur may the fourth star wars day isn't it? so uh, <laughs> the brother was Disconcerted, and all his sisters found it extremely amusing. Is he, what his brother C three PO? His sister, <laughs> yeah. 
to me too. There is uh, Sam Connors bowling to Evans, who just dabs this back of a square on the offside. And there's no run. We're starting to get to that part of the day when it warms up considerably inside this commentary box. Very nice. It does. But my word, it's going to get warm soon. I've brought the sun cream just uh, in case. I've got my cap. Perfect batting conditions, in a way, mm. in that the, the light of the pitchers, again, it looked to be a bit of pace in it, but nothing too excessive. It's just good, consistent swing bowling at the moment. Connors have got the first wicket, bowls that one is clipped up towards a widish mid, and they scamper through for a quick single, a tumbling stop by Saranga Lack. Mal Evans moves to 29.70 for four now. The um, man responsible for the redesign of the electronic scoreboard oh, yes. is Paul Rogers, Leicestershire's scorer. But what it did do, the old scoreboard, which one this doesn't, is, is between overs it used to change, you know, and give you the bowling figures and all this sort of thing. And I haven't noticed this one do that yet. Next delivery is kept out just about bottom edge of the bat. Toe end pushed out into the offside by Mulder. It was a stifled appeal. Connors clearly wasn't 100% certain whether it was bat first or indeed uh, pad first, but either way, the appeal soon came to an end. Very noisy plane goes overhead. Must be low somewhere. Not towards Leicester International Airport. Oh, he's beaten by that one. That's a sharp delivery from Connors. Good delivery, too. Squared him up. And uh, it flew through to Broadcast, the wicket keeper. He has got a very quick delivery in him, Sam Connors. I don't think that um, he'll necessarily become the first 100 mile an hour bowler, so it doesn't look as though uh, Nick Potts is going to see it close up. That's one of his wishes or predictions for the future. 100 mile an hour delivery from an English bowler. Connors is driven this time by Mulder up towards mid off where Billy Godelman waits. Is it Goff who got quite close once? 94 or 95, mm. something like that, but uh, that's the only one I remember. He's with his tongue in. Not now, not these days. He's different shape now, Goffy, isn't he? Well, yes, I'm, I'm not sure he could. Uh, yes. Yeah. <laughs> He's got more important things to, to do. Hasn't he? 70 for four. Let's not go there. This next delivery is turned into the leg side by Mulder. And it's fielded by Elias Deploy. End of the Connors over. 10 overs, one for 14. Terrific bowling from uh, Sam Connors so far in this match. Mulder has one. Evans is on 29. And Leicestershire are 70 for four. Fairly sure the one o'clock uh, update is the one that doesn't go in the bulletin. It goes after the bulletin in Radio Dow because they have one of these uh, speaker bulletins that they change every three times a day and they don't want anything that's likely to be out of date by half past five tonight, which makes perfect sense. But I do go, I do have an update, but just not into the bulletin, I think. I've only been doing it for seven years. Lackmal in from the pavilion end. Bowls to Evans, who's forward and again oh, dives to his left and saves. Probably two runs there. He went forward, slightly angled, but ran backwards of point. Third man would have had a good bit of a chase to get round to it. And uh, Dahl, however, as well as picking up a wicket and taking a fine catch, has saved plenty of runs in that position and saved two more there. 70 for four remains the score. Evans, 29 off, 82 balls. Someone more intelligent than me could work out the strike rate. In Lackmar, outside off stump, Evans lifts his bat over the line of the ball. About 35 and a half. I was going to say it's about a third, isn't it, roughly? So just under My computer says 35.8. Oh, there you go, the computer's worked it out. There you go. <laughs> no way I could have done that, <laughs> blimey. Absolutely no chance. And Mulder's first name is is Peter. It's Peter. Uh, P i e t e. Yeah. 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 W a uh, <coughs> Afrikaans, obviously a sort of family. Well, Saranga's not Saranga Lakmal's first name, but 
I'm not going there. Is it a tricky one? No, it's a Sri Lankan one. Mm. 16 syllables. Lakmal in. Bowls. Evans leans forward again. Dahl is the fielder. This time, a rather more comfortable piece of fielding for him. He can run onto the ball as it bounces gently towards point. Keeps hold of it and does a spot of careful polishing before handing it on. Rana Singer is his first name. Arach Chig. Or Rach Chiggy. I, I ought to ask him really, but he doesn't speak English, so it's tricky. And then so Oh, like so it's the mom. third name. Okay. Yeah. yeah. 35 years of age, two year contract he signed. He is in and bowling and driving. He's got that one away. Not entirely convincingly from Evans. Sounded a little bit tinny off the bottom of the bat, but he should pick up three. It's a long, long chase for Shan Masood out towards the manual scoreboard on Milligan Road. The Milligan Road side of the ground, that is. And he picks up around about three yards inside the ropes. Gets his throw away. Evans into the 30s, onto 32, 73, 4, 4. Is he the rock upon whom Leicestershire can rebuild the innings? Leicestershire sincerely hoping so. Vian Mulder struggling at the moment. A new experience for him. He arrived on Sunday, I think it was. Might even have been Saturday, but I think it was Sunday. So he's had a few days to acclimatise, so to speak. Lakmal is in. To him, edge is just short, I think, of first slip. Goes through the hands, runs, is slowed en route. No great um, reaction out there, so we can definitely confirm it was short of Thompson, presumably at first slip. But a genuine edge could so easily have flown that extra few inches that was yeah, needed. It barely left the ground, did it, ultimately? And uh, he's a big, tall man, is Alex Thompson. The only way he could have got what could have affected a catch was to have dived forward. Well, I would have been asking an awful lot because it flew. But as you say, he got something on it, Thompson. So Mulder, grateful for the single, can watch for a short while as Lakmal is into Evans, who is forward. And again, Dahl sprawls to his left and feels and saves at least one run at backward point. End of the over, it's two o'clock, so updates time. Evans, 32. Vian Mulder has a couple on his Leicestershire debut. 74 for four, faced with a serious rebuilding job. The Foxes, after losing those four wickets in the morning session, having, lest we forget, won the toss and chosen to bat first. Fango Fox, down in Melbin, as I have been clearly instructed by both Fango and Matilda and a website of pronunciation to pronounce that fair Australian city <laughs> in goes Connors and bowls and Mulder's going to pick up a run there as he comes down on that one and steers it through the gully can't get there this time Dahl who did his very best at backward point flung himself after it couldn't get there and it's third man who comes up to field so Mulder has won Get one more delivery in before the update. Sam Connors is in and bowls very straight. Evans bat in front of pad a little bit pushes out towards mid wicket. Picked up by Leos Deploy running in from mid wicket. Mulder wanders down and ha has a word with Sam Evans. Beautiful afternoon if you're in the vicinity of, um, of Leicester or Aylston in particular, which is where the ground is situated. Plenty of people in as well. Connors is in and bowls, defended by Evans. Here's the update. 68 for four at lunch. The Foxes, they lost to Sanazad, George Rhodes, Colin Ackerman and Louis Kimber in the morning session. Not what they wanted after winning the toss and choosing to uh, bat first on a lovely day here in Aylston at the Upton Steel County ground. 
Sam Evans, though, he's been the constant. He was there at the start. He's 32, not out at the moment. An awful lot depends on him. And so, too, on Vian Mulder, the South Africa Test International all-rounder, who's making his debut for the Foxes. He is three, not out. Badly needs to impress on his first innings for Leicestershire. 75 for four, then, as they look to rebuild. Back with you online now. Just missed the bouncer from Connors that uh, Evans just ducked underneath comfortably enough. Banged it in short, had to bang it in short. Still got the two slips. Thompson and uh, Madsen alongside Brooke Guest. As Connors is in bowl, slightly short on off stump and up on his toes, Evans. Very compact as he Pushes it down to Dahl again at backward point. I mean, rehearses a more forceful shot, but now is not the time, thinks Evans. And I suggest he's perfectly correct in so thinking. 32 off 90 for him. Leicestershire won't be worried about his strike rate, though. Just that he stays there. Lifts his bat as... Connors is in and bowls to him very straight, pushing again slightly across the line as it goes out towards Lakmal at mid on, but plenty of bat on it as well. End of Connors 11th over, 1 for 15 his figures and uh, fully deserved as well. Been, uh, been really good stuff from Sam Connors this morning, 75 for 4 Leicestershire and again although the wickets haven't come post lunch yet. We're 25 minutes into the session. Scoreboard's going nowhere as far as uh, Leicestershire are concerned. So Billy Godelman, Derbyshire's captain, and uh, the coaching staff will be very happy with the way things are. Just said that the other day. There's just seven runs added in the 20 minutes since the lunch interval. Now 25 since the lunch interval. Great minds, Fletch. Great minds. Did you say the same thing? No, just have you. Just no, no, I'm saying that just. That's exactly the point I made in, yeah. the, uh, in the update. There's Lackmal from the pavilion end. That one is pushed up towards mid on when Nick Potts comes and does the filling. Potts, who uh, had a little bowl this morning with the emphasis pretty much on little. Didn't bowl a, a huge number of overs. Bowled uh, five in total. One for 12. Picked up the wicket of Colin Ackham, the important wicket, but it was all about the catch from Anno's Dahl. Uh, his figures, Dahl, six overs, one for 13. He managed to get rid of George Rhodes and then Matty McKinnon, one over. One for one, either side of the lunch interval. Just moving the man on the mid-wicket boundary a little bit straighter. As uh, like Mal is in and this one's pushed out into the outside. Ooh! Yeah, before out I got the middle of the bat. distracted about the pronunciation of Melbourne, which should be Melbin. If I, if I want to sound Australian, apparently. Oh, yeah. Fango Down in Melbourne says, after today's knock, I think, um, well, he's being slightly sarcastic. After today's knock, yeah, I can't really read that out. No, <laughs> no, no really. On, have a word. A little, a little harsh on, on, on George, but uh, yeah, he does need runs in the in the second innings. Leicestershire looking for a consistent number three batsman. Mulder waits, two slips in place, and that one is flooded into the pads. By Bainton's highly unimpressed with, uh, with a half-hearted appeal, really, from uh, Saranga Lackmel on the slips. Alexander, who I know lives in America, says, do you think the county championship would do anything uh, like ticket and meal packages to help bring in the crowds? Maybe have a pound off every pint for every wicket. <laughs> Very good. Um, I'm, sure, I'm sure clubs do that. I'm not sure whether a meal ticket here would necessarily be a good it's, idea because uh, you wouldn't see any giving away 4,000 tickets to you the game against Sussex coming up you so wouldn't, you wouldn't actually see any cricket away. but uh, when you were queuing up for your meal here is uh, Lackmel back into his crease goes Mulder and it's pushed back towards the bowler so that was your first visit into, in, in, first the, time, in the very nice. you're right about good the view views. it's amazing terrific isn't it? it's view, uh, yeah. sort of big yeah, windows really and nice view you yeah. feel very close to the game yeah great view yeah Probably be my last visit to the meet as well. I don't bother anymore. I'll bring uh, I'll bring some sandwiches or something tomorrow. Somebody five for four. Evans thirty-two. Mulder, who's on strike, he's got three. And uh, 
like Mel Bowles too. That one keeps a bit low. It's a, a very full delivery, so may well have, uh, have either hit a bit of a footmark or one of the lines which made it keep low. But Mulder had nothing to do with it anyway, and it went through around about shin height, slightly lower to uh, broadcast. Which makes you think it's usually, the, the guys tell me, about 35 to 40 overs, that if the ball doesn't go out of shape, it goes a little bit soft um, and therefore becomes that so much easier for the batsman. And, and we are at that sort of coming up to the end of the 36th uh, over. Time to get it changed. <laughs> it's like Mal again. Passed on by Bainton and pushed out to the offside by Mulder. Who uh, takes a step forward, holds his bat up as if he was saying, no, no, we'll, we won't take a run on this occasion because we haven't for such a long time. 75 for four, Mulder has three, Evans has 32. 75 for four, did I say that? Probably. Thus far, Billy Godelman hasn't shown the ball to the umpires. I mentioned to Fletch beforehand that during one of the long innings up at Durham last week, the ball was changed four times. But on the other hand, in the other innings, it lasted a full 80. So you never quite know what you're going no. to get with these Duke balls. But I'm sure that message would have been passed to Vian Mulder. Just get through and you might find it easier after 40 odd overs. Connors is in, bowls to Evans, who chops him away through the offside for four. Just gave him enough width there and Evans... Leicester's uh, one constant in the innings so far. Fastened on to it quickly. Chopped it away to the point boundary. And picks up four. Moves on to 36. 79 for four. A poor delivery, wasn't it, from, from Sam Connors. Short and wide. And given the treatment, Steve Dolman, who uh, in reply to Alexander's suggestion about a pound off every pint for it, every wicket, said well, that would cost him a few bob at Taunton. <laughs> Where uh, plenty of wickets fell at the weekend. Connors is in. That's a much better straighter delivery. Evans deals with it. Thick outside edge along the ground out to Dahl, and there's no run. That must have cost him a bit in terms of lost revenue. That uh, that game was finished on the third morning, didn't it? Uh, against well, some game against Essex. Nine down as well. Wouldn't yeah. it? Almost, almost got over the line. But yes, yeah, that game's on a Thursday. It's a high-risk strategy, really, isn't it, for the weekend? Cider sales would have been lucrative, you would have thought, on the Sunday and indeed Saturday. In goes Connors and Bowles, pushing again slightly across the line, Evans there, but getting it out to mid-wicket. Plenty of bat on it. And Lackmal has to move to his right from wide-ish mid-on position to field, so a comfortable single for Sam Evans. He moves on to 37, 80 for four. Limping on Leicestershire, rather. Well, that Evans four was a, a welcome boundary, a welcome boost. Mulder three off 21. Looks up. Connors is in and bowls to him. Very straight, but nice high left elbows. He leans forward, plays it back up the pitch to the... Uh, did we say Staffordshire man? For, for, no, he's Nottingham-born, isn't he? Connors, yeah, yeah, he's Nottingham-born. Nottingham yeah. yeah, we'll forgive him, though. Yeah, went to school not far from the ground. I think it was West Bridgeford or Bridgeford, if there is a such a place as Bridgeford. Little skip at the start of his run for Connors, and he's in and bowls full and driven firmly, almost a half volley, and he raised his eyes to the heavens there, cross with himself. Uh, Vian Mulder, because he picked out mid off, which is usually McKeon and I think it is. Godelman. Oh, it's always Billy. Oh, always Billy. It's Billy. Always Billy mid off. Should I say? Yeah, yeah always Billy. The, the little hop that you mentioned. He says it's. He says he's always had it. I think it's new for this season. I don't remember recall. I don't see it. Uh, don't recall seeing it last season. But he says it's. It's always been that little one. Whoop, there yep. we go. Yeah. <laughs> not a, not a big one. In he goes and bowls outside of some cut away. With some authority off the back foot by Vian Mulder, and that uh, gets a, elicits a big cheer and a, a little round of applause from the Leicestershire faithful because that's the best shot he's played so far, certainly in an attacking sense. And that was uh, put away with some aplomb by Vian Mulder. He moves on to 7.84 for four. 
Harry Kame is on. I couldn't see who he. Uh, who he came? Oh, unless he's just delivering a drink, but he hasn't put a bib on because he's too hot for his, uh, his gilet. But he's out there in his, in his full whites and he's brought a drink out for Saranga Lakmal. Really should have a bib on. Come on, Harry. You know the rules. Yeah, he's running off now. I've switched the stream to the to the NV. Um, hoster and it, and it is better isn't it because you don't get although you don't get the comments you don't get the comments being taken over by spammers as well which uh, is very tedious on YouTube mm. <coughs> yeah lots of interest in the county championship from all over the world at the moment given the uh, imports for this season here's one of them Saranga Lakmal from Sri Lanka Two slips in place as he bowls to Evans, who pushes this one out into the offside. And there's the other. From a Derbyshire perspective, Sean Massoud, the Pakistan opening batsman. Derbyshire are very determined to get their money's worth from Lakmal, aren't they? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Keep, the Keep going. On you go. Keep going. Up the hill, up the slope. You're the overseas, just get us a couple of wickets. Bless him, he's uh, not got the wickets this season that he would have wanted. Fault his uh, application. No. He's running again away from us and towards Evans, who goes down leg side, tries to flick it away. Can't. Nicely taken. Tumbling to his left by Brooke Guest, whose wicket keeping has really come on now that he's doing it on a regular basis. When he first arrived, he did wonder. But uh, now he's a uh, very good cricketer and of course he shared in that stand with Anuj Dahl last season against Leicestershire at the county ground they, when they scored about 500,000 runs on a very flat pitch 84 for 4 on a reasonably flat pitch at Grace Road, Lackmal into bold to Evans who drives out into the offside Billy Godelman has got a bit of a chase on here so they will get through for a single moves to 38 by the time Godelman gets there and throws it back to Guest 85 for 4 They've almost added 20 runs since lunch now almost <laughs> 2.3 the run rate at the moment which is acceptable well, when, when you've got four wickets yeah, down, I suppose, absolutely. all you can do is just... Absolutely. Partnerships, partnerships, as, as they say. There's Mulder. He's already hit one boundary. Lackmel bowls to it. He turns this into the vacant square leg area. There's absolutely nobody there. And as a result, in from the boundary comes Leah's deploy to do the fielding. And they go through for another comfortable single. 86 for four now. Sun beating down here at Grace Road. Just starting to shine off the uh, the marquee at the far end. Which is uh, a little irritating. I need to put some sun dampener or something if there is such a thing on top of that because uh, well, Billy got a bit more like it. You imagine if we were playing anywhere near it, play would immediately stop as Lackmal goes in and it's a ball that Evans didn't really have to play at outside the off stump. He decided to play it, and as a result, it looked a little ungainly as he pushed it back down the pitch. Yeah, it may prove to be an issue later on. I don't know. It's, it's a new. It's quite bright, isn't it? Sort of. Do you not think? Permanent mar marquee. Mm. It is. It is. As you're saying, if we were on that side of the ground, it might cause issues. Not at the moment, because the, the pitch is cut. Yeah, it's a lot of some distance from it. Yeah, isn't it? about a quarter of the way into the square from the west side. Evans waits again. Blackmore balls a full delivery. He drives it out towards a wide mid off. Billy Godelman does the filling. They could have pinched a single there if they'd wanted one, but they decided against it. Evans has 38. Mulder has 886 for four at the end of uh, Saranga Lakmal's 14th over. No wicket for 31, his figures. Yeah, this is... Evans sort of, I was going to say, can bat all day at this sort of pace, where well, he did exactly that at, uh, at Durham. 77 not out off 254 balls on the final day, under no sort of scoreboard pressure in terms of chasing any runs. So we are 
going to get a change. So Angelak Mal is uh, being spelled, and I should think he's quite pleased about that, to be quite honest. 13 overs to the Sri Lankan, none for, I think, 31. Except he's bowling from this end, so I wouldn't, gar I wouldn't guarantee it. <laughs> he's just, he's, he is bowling from this end, isn't he? He is. Yeah, I, don't I, think think he, I think he might have, the, have had the word. What do you think? I mean, I, I, I think he's bowled more than enough by now. Just but he can yeah. be a little contrary at times, Billy. <laughs> just occasionally. It surely can. Just occasionally. Little hiatus while the pads are put on by Leos Deploy, who's going to go in at short leg to Matty McKinnon coming in from the Bennett end. He's going to be bowling to Vian Mulder, Peter Willem. And uh, Jake did send me what his third name was. I did look it up. It's. Look it up in a minute. McKinnon and just just telling his slip Madsen to take take half a pace to his Madsen's right. That is. Then he goes in and bowls back. Goes Mulder. Curious back foot defensive shot. He pushed his left leg, his front leg, sort of well out to the left. So it all looked a little ungainly, a little ungainly, but not unconvincing. Um, his movements are very purposeful. In and in, bowls back and cuts hard down into the ground and it bounces high up into the air and the most comfortable of stops in the end for Dahl, who's moved across to extra cover. Been at a backward point for the pace bowlers. In and is it me or is it, should it be you? No, no, you can't it is, Should it have been I you? I can't remember. I've been looking up uh, Mulder's third name. Adrian with too Adrian. many too many A's Adrian. in it. Yeah. yeah. Too many A's in it. Too many I's in Peter and uh, not enough O's in Mulder. <laughs> McKinnon is in bold, gives it some nice air. Mulder just props forward, pushes it out towards mid on. Picked up by deep mid well not deep, normal mid wicket walking in there, Shan Masood with his orange heeled Cricket boots. Again, and bowls. Clipped past him this time by Mulder. He's worked it out to deep mid wicket. Masood is in chase. Should get three comfortably enough. He's uh, quick between the wickets. And he makes three comfortably enough. Mulder into double figures now in his this his first innings for Leicestershire. Eleven off thirty. Eighty nine for four. 68 for four when Louis Kimber was bowled by McKinnon. Pretty good delivery to bowl him as well. Just, mm. just a nice amount of turn. He is in and bowling to Evans. Very full and steered out into the offside. Didn't over hit it, Evans. A lot of club cricketers' eyes would have lit up and they'd have been trying to thrash that one away through the covers just waited for it as it floated up towards him and made sure he hit it along the ground all the way out to the sweeper on the offside boundary and takes one and keeps the strike Evans 39 Mulder 11 90 for four Evans strike rate 39 I reckon now that's that okay was, that was the 100th absolute opener when one. you've lost your, we've lost four partners already Luciano's Dahl replaced Seringa Lackmel as predicted. Not for the right reasons. Uh, Richard Ray. <laughs> he rolled, uh, five overs for six runs after lunch. Saranga Lackmel. Still to get a wicket though, sadly for him. Anas Dahl's got one wicket already. Six overs, one for 13. Yet to bowl a maiden and he's in and bowls to Sam Evans. A formal delivery which really should have been dispatched to the mid-wicket boundary, but uh, he was rather falling over into the leg side, or into the off side as he played that shot and didn't get much apart from the toe end of the bat on it. The ball dribbled up towards uh, quite a straight mid-wicket in Nick Potts, who did the fielding. Two men close in on either side of the pitch, as well as 
mid off and a mid on as this next delivery is wide of the off stump and just dabbed down where let's deploy from backward point goes around to do the fielding Ryan Dawson on Twitter I think Scott Steele ought to, to get a chance at the top of the order and he says and bring Jigger out of retirement well I'm not sure about the second part of that but there's an argument for Scott Steele getting his chance we get lots of suggestions to build crowds as well I am anyway that's what we wanted free ice cream well, like that's this. quite a good one from Chris Britton who says a free day at county cricket with every T20 ticket as this next delivery is pushed out into the offside by Evans and there's a no run uh, though I know Derby should do a blast pass with well, absolutely they do and it's a uh, good value and it includes the game against India on Friday night at seven o'clock which is going to be excellent in a T20. A T20. Yeah. It's one at Northampton as well. We have India here, but I think it's a three-day three, three day game. I'll just check on that. Well, they've come Four-day game. Coming for a one-off a one -off test, aren't they? This one is defended up towards uh, Lagmal at mid-on. Derbyshire were going to play them in a 50-over game, uh, but that's now been converted to a T20, which is a much, much better idea. I would think the Inco would be pretty much sold out for yeah. that. Yeah. Yeah. Should be a good night. And, and Dan asks uh, whether Sarenga Lakmal is match fit. He looks exhausted when he takes the field, isn't he? exactly steaming in, and as a result, hasn't made much impact at all. I, I think he's still striving. Once he gets a couple of wickets, as that one hits the pads from Dahl, just a little bit too high, as much as anything. Evans back into his crease, though. I've got to be careful of that. 90 for four. I think Lakmal is, is still searching for whatever he needs to find to become the uh, the bowler we know he is in county championship cricket and it might take him a game or two he's had a couple of match uh, a couple of matches the first one was just a few days off the plane Dahl is in and that one is met with the face of Evans bat up to Saranga Lakmal he's always got a smile on his face so he seems a pretty happy chap so uh, of course very unusual to see an overseas left out for any reason other than uh, than injury, you would say. So, uh, fully expect to see Lackmal continue in the Derbyshire side. Mulder has 11, Evans has 39, 90 for four. Leicestershire at the end of that Dahl over. Still the over eight minus one, but they have got a leg spinner on at the moment, so that might help. <clears throat> improve things in as much as they need improving which isn't too much sorts of discussions about the field usually end in no change whatsoever and uh, let's see so far there hasn't been to this one for McKiernan's short leg slip gone back to the same positions Masood is still at mid wicket and Dar still at sort of straightish Pretty much extra cover, really, on the push. In goes McKinnon, drops short, chopped away. Again, quite authoritatively by Mulder. Looks like he knows what he's doing to a certain extent. Picks up a single, though, because obviously there is the sweeper out there. Feels like a lot of muscle in it, doesn't it? Yeah. A lot of muscle. Is he here, is he here for the season he now, is, then? He Excellent. Is, yeah. He's not scheduled to play T20. Oh. Uh, there are two Afghans coming to play T20. Naveen, obviously, who you know about. Mm. In goes McKinnon. Forward goes Evans. And, uh, there's no run. And Gerbaz, the Gerbanator, as he calls himself. Of course he does. <laughs> <laughs> but he, he looks to be a big, an exciting, uh, big hitting batsman. Uh, who knows? But he will be here, um, Fian Mulder, and, and would be available in the event of one of them not, not being available. Or picked, or whatever. In goes McKinnon forward studiously carefully goes Evans poking the ball back up I quite understand whether you can have as many as you want over here and then just pick the two well he's here anyway he's not yeah. going home you know yeah. it's for that period because it, because in the middle of it there's well there's the season is slightly different isn't it it's completely this different it's bizarre McKinnon in Evans forward thick inside edge it goes past short leg he takes a step or two down but no chance because Sean Masood is quickly to the ball sent back by Mulder Fletcher pops next door it coming up to half past half past the hour Sun 
briefly goes behind Cloud. McKinnon is in. Drops a little bit short and Evans goes back looking ready to force but it's pretty straight and all he can do is force it back down into the pitch. And it bounces back towards the leg spinner. Characteristic blow on the right hand. Three times he blew on, four times he's blown on his right hand. It's almost a twitch. In he goes, tosses it up, gives it some air but very accurate. Forward goes Evans, back up the pitch, it goes to McKinnon. And that is the end of the over. Three overs, one, four, six for Matty McKinnon. Update coming from BBC Radio Leicester as well. A little toot on the Vuvuzela, the first of the day, I think, from Stench over there in the Upton Steel stand. Twenty-three. These two have added then for the fifth wicket so far. It's been slow going. Leicestershire won't mind that though, as long as they are still together. The ball is getting older. Mulder will be on strike. Here comes the update for BBC Radio Leicester. Might get it in before Dar bowls. Hello, 68 for four at lunch and in a lot of trouble. Leicester at that stage having won the toss and chosen to bat first to Sanazad, George Rhodes, Colin Ackerman and Louis Kimber having all been dismissed. Sam Evans though, the other Leicestershire opener, batted throughout the morning and is still there now. He's 39 not out, painstaking innings off 111 balls. With him is uh, Leicestershire's debutant, the South Africa international all-rounder Vian Mulder, beginning to look uh, something like the international we know him to be. He's 12 not out off 32. Together they've taken the score on to 91 for four. Still an awful lot of work to do to rebuild the innings, but the process is gradually underway. The Foxes 91 for four. One outside off stump from Anushdal that was left by Mulder. It sounded like a sort of organ note, didn't it? It did, didn't it? it? I was trying to work out what it was almost the, set, the, the note that starts uh, Freebird by Lynn Skinner. But wasn't. Darling, <laughs> defended. <laughs> so, there's, no, no, there's no answer to that. Now, I went in there and said, oh, come back in 10 minutes now. Come back at 25 to, I wasn't near enough, so ah, I said, okay. go back at 33. I didn't want to leave you by yourself. And I thought I could pick up some tips from yours as well, so uh, I'll just basically repeat what you said. Uh, <laughs> my updates makes it a lot easier, doesn't it? They're asking about interesting toilets. Stahl is in, bowls very full and looking to drive, but careful. Mulder, he's knew it was a potentially dangerous swinging delivery and he just blocked it back past Dahl out to Godelman at mid off. One of the fun, th I like, I quite like away games in that respect when you can have a little bit of a two way with, yes. the, with the presenter yeah. and uh, if the presenter's in, in the mood, but I enjoyed myself a lot up at, up at Durham. Grade one listed, they are the toilets of the Philharmonic pub. In goes Dahl, bowls outside off stump. He, twisted there suggesting he might just have tried to roll his fingers across that one and bring it back in but there was no movement for him just went sort of straight on through to Brooke Guest they're in Derby are they? I know in Liverpool when I was at university I knew about them I don't I'd been in them certainly but that's strange on the other side of uh, the country in Hull they have some grade one listed Victorian loos in right. goes Dahl and Bowles soddily forward must be something to do with being a port or safe. Yeah. Who knows? Yeah. Who knows? <laughs> the beautiful Elab things. Elaborate so, green carvings tiles and mahogany and fireplace in there. Seems a bit over the top for a toilet, doesn't it, really? Yeah. But it needs certain... It's a, heck 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 to. Oh, it's, it's a ridiculous place, but it's not far from, it's not far from both cathedrals because they're very close to each other anyway. But yes, they are, yeah. Anyway, I'm glad I came back. 91 for four. Thank you for that. <laughs> <laughs> End of the Dahl over Mulder and Evans. <laughs> Touch gloves in mid pitch. It will be Evans who's on strike to Matt McKiernan. Still the same field short leg and slip 
as McKinnon is in, and Bowles Mulder is using his, I uh, beg your pardon, Evans is using his feet, but to no great effect, all he can do is jam the ball back up to McKinnon, who picks up and threatens momentarily to hurl the ball at the stump, doesn't bother doing so. Wiganer, Matty McKinnon, a Lancastrian from Wigan. Went to school in Lee. Is that blowing on the hand? And in he goes, tosses it up and clipped firmly back to him by Evans, but not taking any chances. Fielded by McKinnon in his follow through. Thinks He reckons he looks like Harry Potter. Matty McKinnon, that is, when he's got his glasses on. He's in and bowls, tosses it right up, forward goes Evans, and again there's no run. Most underrated player in county cricket, he thinks he's Darren Stevens. Well, I'm not sure Steve-O is underrated anymore. I think everybody in county cricket knows how uh, valuable a player he is. And here's something I'd agree on him with. The most beautiful thing he's ever seen. Mid-wicket's gone back, about three quarters of the way back. Tosses it right up and uh, he's going to be in the game as well. Long chase out there for Sean Masood. It's clipped out to deep mid-wicket. He puts in the slide, drags it back in front of the new hospitality marquee. Evans picks up three. Moves on to 42. 94-4-4. See what he was trying to do there, McKinnon, with must sued out there at deepish mid-wicket but he just overdid it he just tossed the ball up a bit too far and it got to Evans on the full he used his feet as well to make sure it did and then clipped it away much straighter along the ground so short leg comes out deploy and goes in at short straight ish mid-wicket about three pitch widths back McKinnon is in and bowls drops very short pulled high away and over uh, Masood by Vian Mulder that was um, a very powerful shot and muscled away really hit it very cleanly though a very clean strike from Vian Mulder drops short McKinnon first really poor ball he's, he's probably bowled at the end, this is coming towards the end of his fourth over, but it was punished. And, and with Sean Masood being sort of 15, 20 yards inside the ropes at that deep mid-wicket, Mulder wasn't worried about clearing him and did. Moves on to 16, 98 for four. McKinnon is in, tosses it up again, hit hard down into the ground. Mulder wants to take on the leg spinner, bounces back to McKinnon. This could be if Godelman keeps McKinnon on, an interesting battle. End of the over though, one for 13 from four overs for Matty McKinnon. Vian Mulder has moved on to 16. Sam Evans has 42. 98 for four, together they've now added 30 for the fifth wicket. And uh, whisper it, let's just support us, but Vian Mulder is starting to play with um, a certain amount of authority and power, certainly. Van Gogh Fox thinks Mulder might be limping a bit, but I'll have a, I'll have a watch. I don't think so, Van Gogh. Watching him running and the way he's playing his shots, but uh, trying to terrify us all. Thompson is coming on. Alex Thompson's going to have a go at some off-spin from the pavilion end yet to bowl in he goes and does bowl to Evans who's forward just popped out into the offside line and length delivery no obvious turn Evans just uh, careful pushing it out into the offside Thompson is in, gives it a little bit of air, drops a little bit short, cut away, and it's got through the man at point who dive to his right. I think it's Sam Connors there. Got two hands to it, but it got through the hands. It's cleared up by Sean Masood running behind him. 
but in the meantime Evans has picked up a couple and brought up the Leicestershire 100. Evans has moved on to 44 from 117. Thompson is in and Bowles tosses it right up driven away behind point this time again he didn't really get it all points going to uh, backward point he's going to pick it up around about five yards inside the ropes down there at wide third man gets a good throw away but again runs to be had for Sam Evans three of them in fact and he moves on to 47 watching Mulder now to see if I can uh, see a limp Seems to be running okay. He has a slightly bow-legged way of, of walking, but uh, certainly hasn't asked for the physio or there's no obvious concern on his part that I can see. Thompson is in and bowls and no, Mulder wasn't ready. So he just st stood back and the ball just missed off stump actually. That was a curious one, but umpire Bainton makes the, that is not a delivery signal. Thompson is in to bowl again. Mulder goes back, plays on the back foot, a little bit late on it, but uh, solidly enough, back down the pitch it goes to the off spinner. 103 for four with that three, four, Evans, who's moved on to 47. Thompson just walks almost to the crease and bowl. Drops a little bit short. Mulder goes back, works it back past Thompson, but a uh, comfortable stop for Lackmal moving across to his left. He's at a deeper than usual mid on, inviting Mulder to try and clear him. Perhaps Thompson, who is in and down the pitch, he goes and drives hard. One, one bounce. For, for over mid-off. Mid-off was up in a fairly conventional position, Godelman, and so it was a not completely risk-free shot. Now, he's not sure which ball it is, Billy Godelman, because there's so many balls down there. Um, I think it's... Is that the one? He's, 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 he's showing it around. Is that the one? There's, there's said that this one's one, two, right. three, four balls yeah. down there yeah. uh, that have been left there by Leicestershire's second team, and, and it kind of landed among them. Should have taken that green one there. <laughs> just as a joke. The, the, just the, to, nobble, yeah. the nobbles on it, that would have moved around a bit. <laughs> nobody's nobody's had to look at it, though, have they? But that is interesting. I mean, we're looking down. There's three There's three balls of rough, well, different ages. But, yeah, an interesting one. Anyway, end of the over. And, and Mulder is starting to play some reasonably authoritative shots, isn't back, is he? That was a very straight-armed pull into the leg side off Matty McKinnon in the previous serve, wasn't it, that yeah, it was lifted over Shan Masood and one bounce for four. So uh, McKinnon's been replaced by Anuj Dahl. Shane Dolan, you're too kind. I'm, I'm not going to... I think that's an over two. So I'd have just given McKinnon yeah, one more just to see. Go on then, if you want to take him on. Well, if he, if he gets hold of it, you've got... You know, you're in, still in control. I'd have given him one more. Anyway. Dahl in his ninth over balls to Evans who plays it straight back to him Mulder trying to take evasive action is uh, is running <laughs> miles from the stumps at the far end well, Fango thinks he might be limping a bit but the way he's moving that's I mean the way he pirouetted hitting, there that's why I don't he's hitting think out it. you see because he's, he's concerned that his game is over <laughs> I think he's Possibly. I think he's fine I think it's just his way of walking and oh, moving okay Next delivery is a turn nicely into the leg side. He didn't get he got too much on it actually, rather than just clipping it fine. And they do go through for a single. He was at this end quickly enough then, Mulder, to suggest it was yeah, like by yeah, as well. He was on his toes, wasn't he? Yeah. So he's he's, yeah. he's fine, Fango. Don't be scaring us like that. Uh, happiness says Andy Mitchell is watching Davish get four wickets against Leicestershire. Listening to Dave Fletcher, you're not wrong. Um, well, sitting, he says sat, but it is sitting, uh, in the back of this RV somewhere in the middle of South Carolina. Well, it is sitting. He's being very nice to you, and you're correct. Yeah, using Come on, Mitch, sort the grammar out. But apart from that, <laughs> thank, the sentiment is magnificent. He mentions Don Amat as well, which is good. Well, it's good to get a mention of Don. 108 for four. How to lose friends. This next delivery is driven straight back to Anish Dahl, but he misses it, which is unlike Anish Dahl. Billy Goldman comes around from mid-off to do the fielding. 
So 40 added by these two now. Don't wish you won't be too worried at the moment. Not but yet, not yet. It's yet. starting to uh, get into, we could, we quite like another wicket territory here. That one is guided to backward point by Mulder, but it's fielded by Lear's deploy. Down to one slip for Anu's Dal, which is fairly standard, really. And if Mulder decides he wants to go on the charge, then uh, he's of the pace that uh, Brooke Guest can stand up and does on a fairly regular basis to Anu's Dal. We think it's a bit of an affront to a medium pacer's pace. He's crouching now, his uh, guest, as that is defended by Mulder. If on I, the walk. Fango now agrees it is the, quote, bow-legged thing. Just looks a bit odd when he walks. It is just a sort of rugby player, sort of odd walk. Scrum half. Yeah, something like that. Scrum half I think he played wing forward, as he said. Did he? What on earth is that? It's the one who sort of packs down on the side of the scrum and uh, hammers the fly half standoff. Mikey Cohen's listening as this next one is uh, ooh, off an edge, genuine edge, down towards third man where Potts will do the fielding. Mulder moves to 21, 108 for four, he says. Uh, Vian Mulder's slightly duck-like wobble is more a unique trait that he's had since I first played him. So Mikey Cohen has played against Thank him. You, or played with him, he says. Iconic, iconic, he describes it as. The iconic duck-like gait. Of Vian Mulder, he's only 24, so... He's acquired icon status quite early. Yeah, well, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Never want to uh, undersell something, Mikey. Well done. Uh, always listens. I was just about to tell you, oh, oh, Matty yes. McKinnon thinks it's the most beautiful thing in the world because I, I oh, really? kind of half agree with him. Oh. And it's it's the Sagrada Familia, the, the cathedral that's... It's not the one in only Barcelona. Just, uh, correct, yeah. It's the most astonishing thing to be Gaudi. inside. Yes. Yeah, oh. They've they just put a star atop it. Oh, have they? Well, yes. Is, is it finished now? Then? Thompson is in bowls and just uh, it's rather jabbed out there by Mulder on the back foot as he defended that one. Uh, no, it isn't basically no. because they're, re they're sort of building a new entrance for it, which is quite controversial. It involves the demolition of a few um, older buildings uh, around it, not older than the cathedral necessarily, mm. but so that they can put a sort of special steps up to it. Thompson tosses it up, not afraid to give it air, waits for it, Mulder clips it along the ground all the way, down too long on. Well, Lakma is the fielder, single taken. So what kind of age is, is, is the cathedral? Well, it started about 100, and 100 years ago, didn't yeah, it? It'd be about so. that, 1920s. Liverpool's but Anglican Cathedral took a long, long time mm -hmm. to build and then finish. But yeah, I thought the one in Barcelona was longer. They, they're using sort of the techniques almost from from older times and things like that but it i mean it's it's kind of very strange on the outside and uh, typical gaudi in goes thompson uses his feet evans gets to the pitch of the ball but just hits it out to godelman at mid off and there's no run just going to say typical gaudi but then again i've only ever heard of gaudi in relation to the cathedral in barcelona well, and so the other buildings in, in, in barcelona is it i've never been to fair, barcelona. fair few others is there, oh okay um, i've never gaudi been to barcelona buildings, yeah oh do Thompson in again, jammed out rather, puff of dust from uh, Evans, as, uh, near Evans' feet as ball is hit firmly down into the ground. And again, Godelman is the fielder at mid-off. Thompson bowls, slightly flatter a delivery, drags his length back a bit. Evans has to be careful, pushes it back down the pitch. He's a tall man, Thompson, isn't he, for Yes, he's taller than me. Yeah. He's a very tall man. Six four, something no, like that. No, six six, like. I would Is say. He? Yeah. And he goes and bowls. Again, Evans using his feet, pushes it out towards Godelman, who can't pick up the ball clean. He skipped to his left at mid-off. Had he done so, he would have perhaps got the throw away. Evans prepared to take it on, but he didn't grasp the ball cleanly at the first attempt. So in the end, the run comfortable enough. Evans on to 48, end of the over 111 for Really good run that put Godelman under pressure because they went on the uh, as soon as the shot had been played they thought that we'll have a go at that we'll get through for the single Billy Godelman under a little bit of pressure couldn't pick the ball up cleanly as a result uh, it's, it's uh, something that Masood has done he's very much a, not quite tip and run but 
but not far off and he kicks the scoreboard along very nicely indeed from Nelson 111 for four six foot five Alex Thompson well, I must be shrinking then because he's definitely taller than me Dahl begins a new over from the Bennett and it's left alone outside the off stump by Evans another Staffordshire boy yeah yeah, P a fully qualified PE teacher who likes angling. Does he say he likes angling in there? Yes, it's his listed under his hobby. Yeah, yeah, big angler. Is uh, Tomo? Most underrated player in county cricket is Will Rhodes. Okay. He wants the T20 groups reshuffled. I do, I do. He's a man after my own heart, apart from the angling. Here is Dahl, <laughs> which I couldn't do. That one's pushed out to the offside by Evans. Two away from a half century. And he rejoices in the nickname Sarge, apparently. Does he? OK. I've only heard them call him Tomo. He was at, uh, at Warwickshire. This will tickle you. This will tickle you. I've told this story before, and I apologise to everybody who's heard it, but yeah, I think it's still quite amusing. So they signed him last season on loan initially, since he signed a permanent contract as Dahl is in and bowls to uh, Evans. who pushes this one out into the offside when it's fielded. Uh, by Sarge himself out there at uh, mid-wicket no, extra cover and um, he went to Durham on loan and then signed for Derbyshire and when he signed for Derbyshire Dave Hatton said well we signed him because uh, we think he's a good prospect and had a really good spell up at, uh, up at Durham where he did nothing but carry drinks because he never played for them Dahl is in and that one's pushed out into the offside not that due, due diligence wasn't done of course great in the nets though Absolutely not one ball bowled, not one moment fielded for <laughs> Durham. But it, that's why Derbyshire signed him. Which, which the alarm bells were ringing by that point. Well, he might have had good reports from the Durham coaches or something yeah, in the nets. Yeah. But he didn't, think he, was, he didn't think he was going to be able to continue a professional cricket career, so he's become a qualified PE teacher. As Dell, I don't know what you have to do to qualify to be a PE teacher, but he's, he is one. That was clipped into the leg side by Evans, fielded by Shan Masood. Uh, presumably a PGC, played for Cardiff UCC EMCCU University, whatever they're called these days or then because his best bowling figures I think remain when he was a Cardiff uh, University player uh, Yep, 6 for 138 for Cardiff MCCU v Hampshire at South I thought so it's, it's all up there but it's just getting it out this one's pushed into the offside by Evans as Dalcombe Completes the over. I think that was a maiden from Anoj Dahl. It certainly was. It was the, uh, the third maiden he's bowled. Yeah, the third maiden he's bowled. Ten overs, three maidens. One for 14. 111 for four, Leicestershire. Evans is two away from a half century. Mulder going along very nicely indeed. Now 22 from 48 deliveries. But he's a, he's, a, he's a top lad. Didn't have much cause to speak to him. You know how you generally speak to players who do something remarkable on a day's play and unfortunately I didn't really have much of a chance to speak to him but spoke to him uh, at the media day and we were talking about you know from where you were this time last year to now and he said yeah this time last year he really was having a, a strong think about a, a long think about exactly what he was going to do because it didn't look like he had a future at Warwickshire didn't play at Durham and then Derbyshire stepped in and uh, People want rid of Derbyshire and other counties, and we all know that, whether they say they do or don't. But Derbyshire have given second chances to so many cricketers. Uh, Matt Critchley, who's currently being touted as a potential England player, would have drifted out, I would have thought, of county cricket had Derbyshire not stepped in when he was released by Lancashire. Lewis Rees, Brooke Guest, well, all of them. Anuj Dahl. Nick Potts. Nick, is Nick back Pono. on at <laughs> the pavilion end, bowls outside off stump. Mulder lets it go through and then sort of walks after it, to, takes a few steps, follows it on its way through to <laughs> Guest. I'm going to listen out to see if they do call him Sarge out there, though. Might be one of those nicknames that he'd like to have. Yeah, yeah. Flash or yeah. <laughs> when you're actually in there, there's something. <laughs> Flash. You know what I mean? I do, it? yeah, yeah. How did you know what my nickname was? <laughs> <laughs> Star or uh, <laughs> yeah. whatever, you know. Yeah, legend. Ledge, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Potts is in, bowls again outside off stump. Giving it plenty, but uh, too wide. Mulder lets it go through and then rehearses 
cracking it away to the offside. Has got cover out there on the offside boundary at point, deep point. Shan Masood is, is out there, pretty isolated in front of the, the refurbished manual scoreboard. Repainted and looking very smart. Potts is in again outside of some, even, if anything, even wider this time and again. Well, that has nothing to do with it. The couple o'clock is, is unique in county cricket. In fact, it's one of only two manual scoreboards now left. Is it? On the county circuit. Let's see if I can guess what the uh, uh, headquarters grounds, presumably. Um, is the one at Canterbury still? Yeah, manual. Big one. There is indeed. Mm. The Les, Les Ames uh, stand. Potts is in straighter this time on off stump. Mulder defends out towards point. Dahl comes in quickly to pick up. You heard a call of no from Jan Mulder. Quite pleased with that. Good effort. Can't read it because it's a sort of long. Yeah, it's very complicated, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. The, I know, I've long it's been there, probably about 60 years oh, people yeah. haven't been able to <laughs> read it. Headquarters grounds, because obviously Chesterfield's yes, got, yeah, got them, got them only yeah. got a manual, and I would imagine Scarborough would only be manual, would it? I don't know, it's a, I can't remember. Potts is in it's a sort of tempter outside off stump, it's inviting the drive, which it gets, but only after Mulder would let it go through, then rehearses the drive. Well, I say manual, and I think a lot of them are those ones that club cricket now have, where it looks like a manual scoreboard, but it's worked off a sort of remote control almost. I'm trying to think of the scoreboards at, at Scarborough. I think there is one of those sort of, yeah, yeah, electronic ones that is brought out for games. I'm sure there are manuals, manual scoreboards as well. Potts is in straighter. Played carefully by Mulder, head right over the ball as he defends it out towards Godelman at mid-off. A maiden over, not the most threatening that uh, Nick Potts has bowled, but he's just getting into the start of a new spell. Six overs, one for 12, uh, the first one he's bowled from the pavilion end. One, one, one for four remains the score. It's uh, been more than an hour since I uh, looked at the scores, so... Uh Nottingham should doing all they can to prevent their ex extend in the wilderness of the second division being. Uh, you do extended. love that. Oh yeah, oh yeah. They've got Durham at 151 for five now, so that's quite a good fight back by Nottinghamshire. Worcestershire 185 for four against Sussex at New Road as Anna's Dahl begins a new over from the Bennett end bowling to Evans full delivery just dabs it out into the offside. Sarge does the fielding. And there's no run. Glamorgan, 122 all out. They're at the innings break there at uh, Sophia Gardens. Yes. 122 all out. Let's see what uh, Shaheen Shah Afridi managed to do in the end. He managed to bowl uh, 13 overs on one ball, picked up the last wicket to fall, three for 35. But he got, he got the main man, didn't he, then, essentially? Labashain and. Uh... Yes, 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 he did. He got uh, Labashain and Sam Northeast. Mm. Here is Dahl, in again, bowls, that was down the leg side, he tries to flick it away, it's a clutch to the second attempt. Must be the phone for somebody outside. Yeah, we're all very professional in here and all have our phones, or both have our phones set on silent as Richard just checks his. <laughs> he was he? <laughs> just don't get any calls. <laughs> Nobody ever calls me anyway. It's a shame. First of it, everybody's playing today. It's very exciting. Last week, not everybody played. First week, not everybody played. No idea why. Yorkshire and Lancashire. Big build-up to the start of a new cricket season. Yorkshire and Lancashire don't play in the first week. Madness. 111 for four here as Dahl is in again. And that one is... Oh, it's a thick edge down towards third man. There is a third man. Quite a fine third man, actually. Nick Potts. But that wasn't a great shot from uh, Evans. He moves to 49 now. Wasn't. 112. For four, so Kent won 25 for three against Hampshire, having chosen to bat. That one's at Canterbury, the manual scoreboard. Essex 116 for seven against Warwickshire at Edge Baston. That's Essex choosing to bat and struggling there. Dahl is in again, and that one is driven into the ground by uh, Mulder. Ooh. Down the ground, and it's been dived over by uh, Saranga Lakmal. I didn't get too excited initially because I thought it was fairly comfortable stop, really. 
but he's dived over, he's given it the full Sydney Harbour Bridge. <laughs> he's gone straight over the top of it, I'm afraid, to Ranga Lakmal. Uh, and Mulder moves on to 26, 116 for four. Yes, we've seen better, we've seen better. Yorkshire 187 for four, they're playing at Northampton at Wantage Road. Uh, Yorkshire decided to bat first there, and Lancashire against Gloucestershire at Old Trafford. Gloucestershire won 36 for three. Uh, Leicestershire's uh, director of cricket operations, Dan Neese, has come out and he's, he's picking up all the loose balls that were left out down there. Good uh, idea. And because it could have it could have genuinely been an issue that yeah. it really could. Yeah. Um, and we still don't know if they play. Billy's pretty sure they're playing with the right one. Billy's playing with the ball he wants to play with. I think whether it's the right <laughs> one or not. Yeah, it? and nobody. No, no, well, neither umpire came and checked, did they? So. Oh. If they'd have had any uh, concerns, I'm sure they would have checked. He did ask, didn't he, or the batters, but uh, uh, Billy did ask the spectators down in front of us, is this the right one? He's going to stand up now, as I suggested he might, if uh, the batsmen were uh, not necessarily taking liberties, but were stepping out of their crease, which decreases the chances of me getting to the end of this over, but I'm... Give it a go. Yeah, I'm gonna, it gets the gets the pulse racing, doesn't it? When, yeah, you, when you push it. Playing with fire. We live dangerously. It's, it's, it's the most dangerous thing I do. Here is Dahl in and bowls to Mulder, who drives again. It's half stopped by Shan Masood, left hand, and he kicks the floor in frustration that he didn't pick that one up cleanly. Uh, Mulder moves to 27, 117 for four. And Derbyshire will just be getting to the point where they. Starting to think, no, we could do with the do with the wicket here. The partnership's 49 now. That's something that could be on the board, isn't it? The partnership, because people who, like me who can't do maths. Uh, Dahl is in, and that one is pushed out into the offside. To the man at point, who is Leas deploy, and there is no run. End of the over. Mulder 27, Evans 49, 117 for four now, Leicestershire. Most updates time, top of the hour. Three o'clock in the afternoon. The over eight minus one. We've had 49 overs now. Forty-seven therefore remain to be bowled today. First of them by Nick Potts. Still got a slip for Vian Mulder, but that is all. Everybody else in a, in a single saving position, third man and long leg as Potts is in, bounces back and uh, hits Mulder amidships, as they say. And he walks off, having sunk briefly to his knees. Winded is the euphemism, isn't it? But there was movement back in there, as well as third man and long leg. There is, of course, uh, Sean Masood, who's out there on the point boundary, 10 yards inside the ropes, because that is the long boundary. Milligan Road side of the ground. Potts, towel hanging out of the back of his trousers, charges in and bowls very full, straight though, so waiting for it on off stump. Mulder just uh, pats it out towards Thompson, who's in the covers. Pitches, obviously, with, with long grass on them on, on that side of the square, all sort of shining very strongly in the sun at the moment. The different cuts reflecting. Potts is in, outside off stump. Hopping away to his right is Brooke Guest, almost in front of Madsen at slip, the solitary slip when he takes the ball. Mulder prepared to let it go through, prepared to be patient. 59 balls for his 27. Darbush, as, as I've said, compared to some not a particularly vocal side in terms of constant encouragement. There's no great barrage of noise out there, thankfully. Here comes the update. 
Yeah, all good for, since lunch for Leicestershire. They took lunch in a lot of trouble on 68 for four, and they're not out of the woods by any stretch of the imagination yet, but they haven't lost another wicket. They've moved on to 117 for four. That's courtesy of Sam Evans, who's 49, not out now. The opener who batted through the morning while four wickets were falling at the other end. And by Vian Mulder, Leicestershire's new South Africa test all-rounder, making his debut for the Foxes today and looking pretty good in moving to 27, not out. Together so far, they have added 49 for the fifth wicket. Leicester need to get that into three figures if they can before they'll really feel that they're well on the way to rebuilding the innings. But it's been a good start since lunch. They're 117 for four. He missed just one delivery, if you're listening online. That was outside off stump from Nick Potts and allowed to go through by Mulder. It looks like they're almost trying to frustrate Mulder out. Derbyshire as Potts is in. Bowls outside off stump and again Mulder lets it go through. End of the over. Potts now seven overs. Uh, four maidens I think it is. One for 12 for him. So keeping it tight. Derbyshire thinking well, if, if we're not taking wickets we, we keep control of the scoreboard. And then if and when a wicket or two does come. Not too much damage done in the meantime. Run rate still 2.3, which is kind of where it's been more or less since lunch. So will be th this be the over in which Evans gets his uh, 50? Fletch will tell you. Dell bowls to him and that oh he almost chops on there Evans it bounced off the bottom edge of the bat as he tried to play it away it was a sort of wafty looking shot out towards backward point that he was trying to play and it came off the bottom edge about straight to the ground could have hit his pads or his boot and rolled into the stumps but as it was it didn't so just a little warning there for him should he need one I don't think he does really this time he is getting, going to get to 50 because he's clipped that around the corner down towards long leg. Sam Connors is chasing and chasing, keeps it in brilliantly. Sam Connors, he is a fine fielder. He's going to restrict the batsman of three runs, but that is a half century for Sam Evans. He moves to 52 from 136 deliveries. He's hit just three fours, and it's also the half century stand between Mulder and Evans. That is now worth 53 as well. Leicestershire 120 for four. Toot of approval from Sanchez Vivazela. <laughs> Been a patient, patient inning from Sam Evans. And he's got his rewards. It's a little wayward there from Anagedale down the leg side. Next delivery is driven straight back to him off the ground and he doesn't quite hold on to it. But I think your theory about the ball is absolutely bob on it. They don't seem to be doing anything with it now, do they? Which is all very well, but doesn't necessarily they're, they're using different balls this year, aren't they? I was uh, sitting watching different the Nottingham. Batch. The same maker, aren't they? The same maker, but they're slightly different. Right. Apparently. I was sitting on the boundary when Nottinghamshire came to Derbyshire in a friendly. This one's defended by Mulder out into the offside. It's fielded by uh, Thompson. He said that they put the lacquer over the seam to try and suppress the seam as well. The problem being that once this lacquer wears off, the seam just springs up and becomes even more pronounced than it was last year. This is according to Luke Fletcher. And then obviously it flattens out again and it becomes just like a rag. And they're looking at balls at the moment and just laughing, basically, a lot of bowlers that I've seen over the course of this season. That one's turned by Mulder into the leg side for a single. Sam Connors does the field in Mulder to 2,821 for four. Nice move prep school the first thing the headmaster showed me when he I think only got in there because I could play a bit of cricket and the first thing he showed me was how to pick this excellent <laughs> I was 11 years old come here boys <laughs> this is yes. what you should do <laughs> <laughs> yeah <laughs> down poles that's a thick inside edge of Evans bat out into the onside he's still potentially getting a bit of movement uh, Anna's down not every ball comes off the middle of the bat that's the end of his 12th over. 1 for 24, his figures 121 for 4. 
Oh, Leicestershire Mother has 28, Evans has 52. Very low key announcement. I can, of I can turn him up a little 50. bit. No, 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 I think it's perfectly yeah, we fine. We do now have the speaker in our commentary box. Which is a strange concept, really, because there's no, never any time when we would ever really need it, is there? Fairly rarely, just occasionally. If, yes, the umpires have decided that that's the end of play today, or something like that. Yeah. So, Nick Potts continues from the pavilion end, charging. Bowls outside off stump edge between the wicket keeper and first slip for four. Nobody went for it. Guest is standing still. He can't quite believe it. He was standing a little bit wide, Madsen, but it looked to me to be catchable height. Absolutely. And goodness me, that's what Potts has been bowling for. Slip was in. Wicket keeper didn't move. First slip didn't move. And it runs away to the finest of third men boundary for four. Well, they may have cause to regret that. That was Mulder on 28. It's not the first one he's edged either because he edged one that fell just short of Alex Thompson, went on just one. Potts in again, bowls outside off stump. Mulder having, for the moment, learned his lesson, lets that one go through. It would have been nice, uh, would have been nice if somebody had gone for it really, wouldn't it? Well, as it was. Just what the bowler's bowling for. Madsen, Madsen looked at Guest and uh, I suppose it's Guest's catch, isn't it, to his so. right, yeah, really, and so. he just didn't move, and then he stood still for quite a long time with his head down, knowing. Haynes was dropped three times. Potts is in, this time a little bit short, punched back past him by Mulder on the back foot, but without sufficient force for it to beat Billy Godelman, moving to his right at mid-off. There is no run. He wasn't dropped initially until he got to 111 but uh, he was dropped three times all by Wayne Madsen in the slips which is very unusual for Madsen who's, who's been a magnificent slipper throughout his career Potts turns in bowls again a little bit short played firmly down into the ground off the back foot by Mulder bounces up and uh, comfortably enough for Alex Thompson, who has got his long sleeved sweater on out there. As I say, it's nice if you're out of the wind. The wind breeze just takes the edge off the temperatures. Mm. Is that Ben Mike who's down there sitting on the boundary's yeah, edge with Lewis Reese? And he was with uh, Harry Kame, and that they've all swivelled around at once. Somebody at WC said, Come on, lads, we can't see. Standing on the boundary's edge. The outside of stump from but sit down, yeah. sit down. That's the eternal we're, we're cry. We're paid to get in here, <laughs> so they're, uh, they're all crouching or sitting down. Harry Kane has in fact disappeared completely. So embarrassed was he at being told to move. That's a popular sitting position. Plenty of t-shirts and shorts mm. being sported down there on the benches. And a few people who bring sort of fold-up chairs to sit right behind the picket fence. Potts is in outside off stump, well wide, and uh, allows it to go through. Vian Mulder, end of the over, an over in which Nick Potts will feel with some justification. He should have two for 12 rather than one for 16. Yeah, absolutely. The players take a, that this is an impromptu drinks break. And it's Dahl is, is having a, a good old gulp there remove the helmet as well because we're now going to see Sam Connors return from the Bennett end. Dahl having uh, completed four overs for 11 runs in his latest spell. Off comes Lewis Reese. Is there a limp? Not really. He did. Uh, he has played the opening two matches of the season but I'm not sure he's 100% yet by any manner of means. Lewis Reese left out of this one. Matty McKeon being given his first start of the 2022 season and uh, picking up a wicket, five balls into it as well. So here is Connors then from the Bennett end. It's his 13th over of the day and that one is carved down to third man uh, by Evans for four runs in the end. I thought Nick Potts was going to get there initially but he didn't quite, wasn't quite able to get round. 
that's a disappointing start to the over for Sam Connors as Evans moves to 56 he'd only conceded 24 runs in his opening 12 over so he's going along at twos and now he's conceded four runs off the first ball of over number 13 starts stops peels away somebody wasn't ready dead ball signals uh, umpire Pratt Connors will start again doesn't even reach the advertising on the pitch before he starts his run he's in now that one is on leg stump and pushed into the onside by Evans Thompson does the fielding should we assume then that uh, these advertising things aren't on the out ground on the outfield at the in core kind of no abso nothing? absolutely nothing no have you come across them anywhere else yet? no 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 I know the uh, marketing boys at Derby were very interested when they saw that this one is pushed up to mid off by <laughs> Evans <laughs> understandably yes I didn't I kind of assumed without really thinking too much about it it might be a, a sort of well, it's county wide, you know, it's na certainly not the uh, national it's rather yeah, than an individual no, no, agreement. I think sure of, uh, Leicester sure of pulled off a worldie there. Oh, right. Fair play to them. It's not the competition sponsor, as this one is uh, off an edge. It's just squared up a little bit by that one, Evans. The ball squirts out to backward point where it's fielded by Dahl. Very nice, Sammy boy. Very nice. Wicket will be handy. Just uh, 11 overs after this one until T. Chances of it being in 20 minutes are fairly slim. As Connors is in, and again, that one is uh, played down deliberately this time to backward point. But Dahl does the fielding. Bit of a shock last night when I realised I had to pay for parking at the hotel this year. Never had to pay for it before. I just thought it would be part of the room rate, wouldn't, wouldn't it? You? Really? Wouldn't you? So you've got to do it on a screen and then put your. Oh, it's such a faff. And I'm a busy man, as Connors is in, and that one is defended by Evans. Back to Connors. It's the end of the over 129 for four. Just that one boundary, the first delivery that went for four from the over. 13 overs, 5 maidens, 1 for 28 now, Sam Connors. Mulder 32, Evans 56. Leicestershire 129 for 4. Got to get a receipt though, you see. And the only way you can get a receipt is if they email you. So you've got to put your email into the machine. Oh dear, oh dear. It is in the town centre or city centre, isn't it? So yeah, I the, suppose it's underneath though. It's right underneath so it. It's part of the uh, the gymnasium's car park ah, as well. I don't want to get okay. those two mixed so up so clearly because <laughs> I might possibly <laughs> find myself in a gym. Goodness knows what injuries I could suffer. <laughs> Nick Potts in from the pavilion end bowls very straight and uh, Mulder very correct forward defensive. Back down the pitch it goes on the on side. Yes, yeah, Chris does confirm that the one at Chesterfield isn't really manual. It's one of those digital ones using a remote or automatically updating via a laptop. That's not really manual, is it? I don't think school. Not in the old is. sense no. of the, the old sense of the word. Potts is in and bowling outside off stump and uh, well wide, a foot and a half wide, and all that just uh, watches with his head over the line of the ball as it goes through to Brooke Guest. And I'm indebted to Mick Wood who sent me a magnificent photograph of his granddad Fred May at Chesterfield. He thinks what well, it looks like Chesterfield to me. He used to sell the scorecards amongst other duties that at the county ground as well. He got uh, Mick into cricket as a lad. Yeah. Terrific photograph. Brilliant stuff. Potts is in. It's driven hard back down. Full delivery. Bounces up and uh, puts out his big right hand as he leaps in his follow through. Manages to deflect the ball. Hard, so hard down into the ground. It wasn't travelling too quickly from Mulder. 
who's being made to work by, by Derbyshire. They're, as I say, almost looking to frustrate him out. And it, and, it, and it pretty much worked. The plan worked, really. He was drawn into a drive in the end and straight between wicketkeeper and slip. In goes Potts, cut away. A nice chunky shot from Mulder, but he's picked out Sean Massoud out there on the point boundary or 10 yards in cover boundary really just looking at him compared to where the square is cut um, more point than cover 130 for 4 Mulder on to 33 Evans has 56 Potts in to Evans who is driving it was there to be driven again never tries to sort of hit the ball too hard steers it out to deep extra cover long chase round uh, for Masood gets to the ball gets his throw away three runs comfortably completed by Mulder and Evans you're talking about getting the money's worth out of Lackmall they get the money's worth out of Shan Masood as well because he does an awful lot of running in the field it's almost like Darby Shook up we've got these two overseas players they're getting paid quite well so we'll stick them either out on the boundary or we'll make them we'll bowl them into the ground or we'll make them score all the runs it is quite it's amusing Potts is in to Mulder trying to get him to drive as well but Mulder at the moment after that edge isn't to be tempted and, and let it go through it was a really wide one that one from Potts, but went through unimpeded on its way to Brook Guest. End of his ninth over, one for 20. His figures now, one, three, three for four. Leicestershire still plenty to do. Add one or two to that. And it still looks a mess, the scoreboard, but it looks rather better than it did at 68 for four. Mick says that his granddad also got him a job changing the overs under the original scoreboard on Sunday. John Player League 40 over matches. Um, identification wise, I think. Griff's your man, I would have thought. Of the ground? Uh, no, of the of, of the person who's standing with his granddad, who uh, he doesn't know the name of, he says he remembers the face but not the name. Connors begins a new over from the Bennett end and Evans defends back towards the Derbyshire youngster who tosses the ball to Billy Godman to have a bit of a polish, if indeed he can still apply any kind of polish and get any shine onto this yeah. ball that is currently... 54 overs and one ball old. Thirty-three for four as Connor's next delivery is uh, off the back foot, driven out towards the cover boundary. It's going to go all the way as well. It's bouncing as it goes over some uh, little bobbles out there, but Matty McKinnon was never going to reach it. That's a nice shot by Evans off the back foot, just sort of forcing it out to the cover boundary. He'll move on to 63, 137 for four. Again, the perfect example of what you were saying in the previous one. He, he doesn't try and hit the hit the cover off the ball. He just he, that was really just a, a back foot punch as much as anything, and it raced away. To the shorter of the two square boundaries, it has to be said. Now he's guided one straight to Wayne Madsen, and that is a poor shot to end Sam Evans' innings. It was a, a decent innings, but he's just given Wayne Madsen catching practice there as Sam Connors picks up his second. Uh, wicket of the match 137 for 5 now Evans goes for 63 I was just saying add a wicket or two to the scoreboard it had been good post lunch from Leicestershire but after that morning session an awful lot to do and they needed more from Evans and that he did a, a very good job for his side the opener it's, it's not a criticism the shot wasn't the greatest he's played and he's very disappointed with himself that he wasn't able to go on but good bowling from Connors again, who's uh, confirming his sort of emergence as the strike bowler, really, at, at Derbyshire this season. Picks up a second wicket, two for 32. Good catch, it was into the bread basket for Madsen. He'd, he'd have yeah, been disappointed to have spilled it. Been the they, only one. They, they, it was travelling, wasn't it? Mm. And so, you, you know, you've still got to cling on, and he did. So, such a strange shot, given all that. He hasn't really yeah. tried any. I mean, that, that's a sort of one day steer it down to third man kind of a shot but if you don't get get the right angle on it, it it's just catching practice for uh, the slip fielder um, 147 balls for fours i think for Evans, five fours five I've got, I've got five but 
Yeah. And the partnership was from 68 for 4, 137 for 5 equals 69. Useful, but not by any stretch of the imagination game changing. No, it's not, no, it's not much defined. Or momentum no, changing. Not much defined yeah. by any means. So there's still plenty to do. And now. Derbyshire will think, right, we're into the sort of all-rounders, so to speak. Well, Mulder's an all-rounder, but he's a class all-rounder. Harry Swindles, you know, the young wicketkeeper. Struggled a little bit with the bat this season so far. Swindles, he's uh, got 45 runs with a best of 29 in the three innings he has played. So he's averaging 15. Connor's working his way towards the uh, interview victim for the evening. <laughs> He'll have it. They, um, so they look forward to chatting. He'll, he'll have sure. it in his mind. He, you know what? Sam's great to talk to. Really good to talk to for uh, for, for such a young and, and relatively relatively inexperienced uh, first class cricketer. It's only his twentieth match. He's in now to a short delivery that really took off to uh, Harry Swindles. 16 and naught against Worcestershire. Bold in both innings. Harry Swindles and 29 up at Durham. The one innings he played. That was a, a missed opportunity, really. He could face 77 balls. He'd got himself in, but he just pushed up at a very wide one and got an edge to sex sleep. He's waiting now. And Connor's ball's a length ball, and he rather hurriedly defends it straight back to the ball. No run. Before the arrival of Mulder, he's been batting at six, which is at least one position too high. Mm. Seven, much better, really. Sort of seven, eight, really. Matty McKinnon's going to bat at six, I'm told, which is probably too, too high, but he didn't want to move. Uh, the next delivery from Connor strikes the pad. Big appeal. He's been given, and he's only lasted. Three deliveries, two deliveries. Harry Swindles, three deliveries. And he has gone for a duck. It's two in the over for Sam Connors. Uh, well, Richard said it. Add a couple on. It's now 137 for six. And Derbyshire right back on top. Well, bold. Sam Connors again. Sharpish. Came back in. Harry Swindles. Beaten by a little bit of pace and movement early in his innings. Thought about it again, by Pratt. He doesn't, he's not one for instantly raising the finger, is he? But uh, again, looks pretty adjacent. A very decent shout. And Sam Connors has two in four balls. Mm. And the scoreboard has taken on a very different hue. Doesn't take much, does it? You're absolutely right. If you can get a couple in quick succession scoreboard can suddenly turn slightly unpleasant for the batting side and that's what's happened to Leicestershire here thanks to Sam Connors who, uh, well he's having a terrific season is Sam all power to him he's now got uh, 12 no, 13 wickets this season which is a really good return for him and now uh, your old friend what did you call him? Farmer Barnes. Farmer Barnes. He's a farmer, isn't he? <laughs> he's a farmer. He was. Um, lives on a farm. Nairsborough. Yeah. Yeah, lives on a farm. Up in North he's Yorkshire. A top, he's a top man. Ah, oh, splendid. Chap. He's got 13 wickets at 24 now this season as uh, Sam Connors, which I think is uh, is all right in three matches. He's going okay. I'm going next door. With some nice things to tell the. Uh, I was Listeners wondering, I was wondering if I could Derby. get away with, well, they still have got a wicket this afternoon. Not a bit of it. Just looking at that Evans replay again, that wasn't the greatest shot that Sam has played. And Leicestershire back deep in the mire at 137 for six. Vian Mulder, however, it was the last ball of Connors over. Two in the over for him. Lackmal has been brought back to bowl to Mulder outside of stump cut away for four. Short and wide and smacked away by Vian Mulder. Uh, wide long hop is a wide long hop, whatever the situation. 
and especially if there is no one fielding out there on the point boundary, there was no cover for Lackmal, no sweeper. And uh, Mulder put it away, moves on to 37, 141 for six. 53 runs for Ed Barnes. He's, he's very much a, a bowling all rounder. Bowling is his profession, but he's a tough, nuggety, hard to get out batsman who gets in line. Going to need to do that and more if Leicestershire are going to put up a decent first inning score here. In goes Lackmal Bowles, very wide, but fuller. And uh, Mulder lets it go through. Guess takes it on the walk in front of Wayne Madsen. Yeah, it was again a pretty good shout. Which umpire Pratt answered in the affirmative against Harry Swindles. Not too much foot movement. In goes Lackmal and bowls edged, but a long bounce well short of what would have been second slip. Madsen sort of fell to his right following the ball as it ran on down towards third man. Mulder picks up a single. Moves on to 38. Update coming from BBC Radio Leicester. Yeah, not Leicestershire, though, unfortunately. They're not basking. They're in a bit of trouble, I'm afraid. It's an expression in cricket. Add two wickets to the score and see what the scoreboard says. And that is just is what has happened to the Foxes. They were going very nicely after lunch, which they took on in a lot of trouble on 68-4-4. But Sam Evans and Vian Mulder had added 69 for the fifth wicket when Evans, having passed his 50 for the second time in consecutive innings, poked at a widish delivery from Sam Connors and Ed to slip he was gone for 63 just three balls later Harry Swindles who came in to replace him was pinned leg before wicket by the same bowler without scoring so 137 for four had become 137 for six Mulder is still there though Leicestershire's new South Africa signing international all-rounder looking very much the part he's on 38 not out of 79 balls he's been joined by Ed Barnes who really is a bowler he's coming in at number eight he's going to have to really apply himself and give Mulder some support. He has yet to face the ball. The Foxes in bother. They're 142 for six. And that was the first ball for Barnes. Second ball for Barnes, I beg your pardon. Just outside off stump from Lackmal. Didn't really get up and Barnes pushed it out, looking to stroke it away through cover or backward point. Hit it down into the ground and didn't really go anywhere. No run. Two slips and a gully, though, now for Barnes, the new batsman against Lackmar. Lackmar yet to pick up a wicket. None for 36 as he comes towards the end of his 15th over. He is in and bowling solidly forward is Barnes on off stump. Out it goes to Godelman at wide mid-off. And that is the end of Saranga Lackmar's over his 15th. And as I say, none for 36. His figures... 56 overs bold now, so another eight until T. Looks likely to be taken around about five past four. Always seems to be the way of it. It's usually about 20 minutes, 30 minutes late. Assuming the friends of Grace Road are doing their cakes. I haven't heard any announcements um, about it. with the usual outstanding selection up there in the meat. There's usually a cake that's appropriate to the visitors amongst the usual suspects. Sometimes it's Bakewell tart with the Derbyshire. In goes Connor's tail very much up, but he's been driven out into the offside by Vian Mulder. 
there is a sweeper on the cover boundary, so it'll be just one. Still movement out there if, if Mulder's hand gestures are to be believed. Movement through the air. He's moved on to 39 with that single. One, four, three, four, six. Three for 33. Sam Connor's impressive figures at the moment. He bounds in and bowls two Barnes, who's back and across and defending on off stump out into the covers. No run. Connors in, clipped away off his legs rather neatly by Barnes, went back on to his stumps. That would have probably been a shout for leg before had he not got anything on that, although I'm guessing it might just have slipped down the leg side. But he did actually manage to play it neatly, clip it down to long leg. Where Sean Massoud fielded. Barnes is off the mark with that single, 144 for six. Second slip goes out for Mulder. Strengthens the offside. Connors is in and bowls. Gets a bit of lift. Just drops his hands, Mulder. But a good delivery from Connors. Boosted by that double wicket taking over last time out. So full of beans at the moment, understandably. Got a little bit of extra lift there. But Mulder played it well by not playing it. By just dropping his hands. It's warming up now, isn't it? It's lovely out the back, in the shade, with a bit of breeze, just for a split second walking between the two boxes, but my word, it's warm. Gorgeous. In goes Connors, outside off stump, and Mulder lets it go through. But you're used to this year round, you see, we're not. <laughs> this, is, this is not. You don't get to open a window in your in that splendid new media centre, do you? Uh, we have two yours. windows at the top, yeah, okay. in our box, in the, in the Radio Derby box, but not anywhere else apart from in the written bit down the far end. So you have to rely on the air conditioning. Connors to finish his over is in. Bowls nice and straight. Good line, good length. Mulder equal to it. On off stump. Everything behind it. End of the over. 144 for six. Is that no. a the ice cream oh. buns here. Well, no, the ice cream parlour is, is the word. So it's a little room at the bottom of the... He said for the first time since 1986 or something like <laughs> that, didn't he? The ice cream man has been here every day, despite, you know, even on the most freezing day, you can hear him so going up and down. So the parlour's a new, a new innovation, is it? Uh, no, it's just open this. It's just open for the first time. It's, it's always there, but oh, right. it's, it's just opened for the first time this season. That's so quite, it's quite a... a Quite a grand, ice cream and sweets grand and nice. announcement for a, an ice cream shop. Parlour. It's a nice old-fashioned word. Yeah. <laughs> God dear. Here's Saranga Lackmel. 144 for six. Bowls to uh, Barnsley. And Ed Barnes pushes it back up towards mid-on. Where it's filled by Shan Masood, who's now fielding uh, mid-on. to hear again, says uh, Norman from uh, Chesterfield. In the 60s and 70s, the scorecards of uh, Chesterfield were, pr uh, were printed below the scoreboard. Each morning, the scorecards were updated. Well, Derbyshire have gone to no scorecards now at, uh, at the county ground. Apparently, it's green. It isn't, but that's why they, they just can't be bothered. As uh, Lackmel Balls edged and cool. Is it caught? No. Now then, did that carry? I think it did. I think it's, it's a drop by Alex Thompson at first slip. It stayed very low, but, well, he's not having any luck at all, is he, Saranga Lackmel? If it did carry, it looked to me as though it did with the naked eye. The, re the body language of Thompson suggests it did, didn't it? Yeah. I'm, uh, have a look at the replay. We're just behind on the stream, so here we go. So Richard will have a look at the replay, but my instinct. Oh, yes. Yeah. Oh, yes, and yeah. it wasn't a difficult one either. No. It was lowish, but he should have caught it, shouldn't he? Yes, he should. So a drop, and poor old Lackmel. 
comes in again. Bowls to Barnes, who oof, <laughs> plays at that one, then pulls the bat inside the line about a second and a half after the ball has landed in the gloves of Brooke Guest. 144 for six. So it, I was just saying about uh, Vian Mulder, he's aged three. One short of Thompson. We gave him the benefit of the doubt there when he was on one, one between Guest and Madsen on 28. And then uh, to the right of Madsen, Madsen at slip on 34. He's on 39 now. Now Barnes has aged one to Thompson that has been dropped while Barnes was on one. He's on strike again now. And that one is an off an edge as well. But that's into the ground and down to third man as he moves on to two. 145 for six. Imagine how better a position it would be for Derbyshire had they held on to their catches. I mean, catches go down. Don't get me wrong. Two but, taken. Uh, a good one by Dell. Yeah. And a fairly really straightforward, straightforward one by Madsen at slip. Yeah. A couple of leg before wickets to Sam Connor. Swindles and uh, Azad. As Lackmel wicketless so far is in that this one is almost chopped on by Ed Barnes. He, he want to carry Ed Barnes round with him because he looks like a walking wicket at the moment. I'm not sure whether he's an eight, is he? It was Mulder. Oh, it's Mulder. Beg your pardon, because he took a single the previous one. Yeah, so that was a poor shot from Mulder. But I'm not sure Barnes. I'm still not sure whether Barnes is an eight or not. No. I think uh, it might I, be. I, a, I agree. Might be a one a place or, or two or high. Yeah. 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 At the moment. Although he did make a very good, oh, I think, think it was 80 yeah. not out against Somerset. I Taunton. think he can hold a bat. Yeah. But, oh, uh, no, yeah. But not on a. You wouldn't rip, put your put your house on him, would you? This one is uh, guided by Mulder to backward point when it's fielded by Dahl. It's the end of the over. Mulder, 39 Barnes two. 145 for six now. Leicester should won the toss this morning. They lost four wickets before lunch and then two in four balls. A good way into this afternoon session, in all honesty. An hour and 40 minutes or so. Mulder and uh, Evans batted. But unfortunately for Evans, just guided one into Wayne Madsen's midriff. Well, it should be T, but we are six overs away. That's not bad for Derbyshire. Six overs. I'm happy, they have I'm taken happy with six that. wickets as Sam Connors is in bowl, chopped away by Eddie Barnes. He's coming too Probably low, has he, Barnes? <laughs> <laughs> After you probably heard all those sort of comments that were being banded, and uh, that was just enough width for him to uh, go back and cut it away, and no cover on the point boundary, on that short boundary, and he picks up four. I'll make him feel a little bit better. He moves on to six. One, four, nine for six. So it was a good, a good batsman. <laughs> Connors is in, bowls to him straighter, and uh, Barnes is behind it on off stop, playing it out towards extra cover. McKinnon picks up, and there's no room. Terry's watching the pictures and listening to the commentary. He passed one of those tests, which is not good. <laughs> He's watching from home. Connors in, bowls again outside of stump, again cut, but this time it was a little bit closer to him and uh, just cramped him very slightly with the result that he cut it down towards backward point where Dahl, who misses very little if it's within reach, sometimes if it isn't, almost made a comfortable stop. His love of a cut may well be his undoing if he plays it shot after shot after shot. There's Barnes. Sleeved shirt, Holder in his short sleeved as in goes Connors and looks for the Yorker dug out reasonably comfortably by Barnes in the end, albeit a big buffer dust pushes it out to mid on. The flags on the Milligan Road flagpoles are fluttering, so a bit of a breeze from the sort of east, which is why it's just taking the edge off the temperatures. The cameraman has put on a, it's been cold. a an anorak of some kind. 
in goes Connors. Bowles goes past the outside edge, I think. He certainly went forward, Barnes. Whether he curtain wheeled the bat back inside the line, his back was to us, but I suspect he had a little feel for that one. Got away with it. He's walking around slightly hangdog. I appreciate that's his general demeanour anyway, just in terms of the way he's holds himself, bless him. Connors is in, Bowles squares up, Barnes a bit, but everything behind it. Thick outside part of the bat sees the ball squirt out into the offside. End of Connors over, his 16th. Five maidens, splendid figures of three for 38. Yeah, he's bowled nicely, really nicely has uh, Sam Connors. Yeah, they don't particularly flatter him. They're, they are deserved. Lack, Lackmal deserves a wicket. I think so, but hey. You don't always get what you deserve, do you, in this game? You don't. Don't do that to me, Greg. So great to hear you again, Dave. Love your commentaries and humour. I don't normally read praise out, but on this instant, then he says, what was lunch like at Leicester? Well, we're not going there. It's very kind it's, of his, kind It's of just the contrast, isn't it, which is sadly... Uh, I, well, I'd have been happy with the, with what I got if it hadn't been half an hour after I went into the room to get it. Lackmal begins a new well, but strikes the pad out. Mulder's gone, and Lackmal does get the wicket that he deserves. That looked out from the moment it struck the pad, and the umpire, Neil Bainton, was in absolutely no doubt whatsoever raised the finger pretty quickly there and it's 149 for seven now Saranga Lackwell finally gets his wicket and you can't help feeling that that with Vian Mulder goes Leicester's last real hope of posting anything like a respectable first innings a score he applied himself really well the South Africa all-rounder been bowling out swingers Lackmal but that one pitched up he was on the back foot and it looked look out, it, didn't it? It, it, not it think kind of did. It yeah, sort, yeah. Of, it sort yeah. of fell out. I mean, we're by no manner of means uh, in line. We will see the a terrific here view, comes, but we're here not comes in the line. Replay. Let's have a, a look at that. Uh, 86 balls with six fours. I think that's fair enough. I think it may even have hit the back pad as well. Uh, uh, Neil Bainton was pretty quick to fire him off is usually a sign that they're absolutely certain or yeah. they've got no idea. I think in Neil Bainton's 39 instance. 39 off, as you say, 86 deliveries. A promising innings, as far as Leicester are concerned, but in the context of this particular innings, they needed him to well, probably make at least 100. Yes, um, yeah, I think you might be right. You might be right. But he can clearly bat as one would hope from an international all-rounder with yes, Parky well, Lacey after tea yes Parky, Parky and now. Barnsley yeah excellent familiar figures to you yeah, familiar figures to uh, well Derbyshire were very keen to sign Callum Parkinson way back when when he came to the club on loan from Lancashire but he, he opted for Leicestershire and fair play to him he's uh, become very much a regular in this Leicestershire side he's skippered them hasn't he he's vice captain yeah, yeah. and has as you thought say I'd, skippered them I'd seen him skip them Ackerman must have been away when Derbyshire played them one time. Here is Lackmal bowling to Parkinson, who uh, oh. well, rather squirts this away <laughs> down past the right hand of a tumbling third slip. Lears deployed to get off the mark first ball. And the uh, 150 is up for Leicestershire, but I would imagine the 150 will be uh, greeted with the same indifference as the 50 was. And well, there's absolutely no reaction no, at all no there's there? less reaction than there was with the 50 it's very it's a very sporting sport not sporting sporty thing to do is is to say oh Leicestershire well they haven't been very good have they and I know one or two supporters have said that when I was walking around at lunchtime as in goes Lackmal and this one is oh, played rather hurriedly like, off yeah. the back foot one that does keep low would have been crashing into leg stump I fancy but Barnes has kept it out I think you've got to give Derbyshire plenty of credit for this. And Derbyshire will be equally culpable of saying, yeah, well, you know, Derbyshire aren't very good. And, and it's a very sporting thing to say. It's like when you, you're 2-0 up and you, why, why are they defending so deep? Well, they're not necessarily defending deep. They're being pushed back by the team who wants to get back into the game. But supporters don't really see that. In this instance, Derbyshire have bowled really nicely. Leicestershire having won the toss and decided 
the bat with a capital B and in comes Lackmel and bowls no one is defended back to him by Barnes and there is no run. We're not too far away from T now. Uh, where's the... There it is. Uh, four overs after this one, so not too far away. We'll get the four o'clock update and then we will actually probably get 20 minutes off because the toilets are probably 10 minutes away from where we're sitting, aren't they? Can't get in that door halfway down the stairs. No, not anymore, I'm afraid. So it's back so down it's, in the... Which is a mile away. It's the only it? way to get in the restaurant these days. <laughs> yes, yes, absolutely. I'm afraid. So, until we get a bucket out the back... Lackmal is in and that one is that one is an attempt to pull it around the corner I think it's a no ball yeah no ball signal by uh, Neil Bainton I was somewhat startled during the game against Leeds Bradford to uh, open the door at the back and see a fox on the roof really <laughs> yeah. it wasn't a running one was it alas no just standing was it he just, just looked just at me standing. and I looked at the fox and you how it got, got up here I think it must have come over the sort of flat roofs and leapt up and Exploring use anything. the stairs then. I, I think I'm even, sure it would have been a, seen going up the even stairs. Even a fox is too clever to walk up those stairs. So, uh, yeah. <laughs> I'm thinking haven't of coming it, across the room. I haven't seen it since. But, uh, oh, excellent. I'm oh, very surprised. I saw a fox on a football ground once at Rochdale. Well, at ground level, they're everywhere, as I said. Well, but yes, but I mean, actually but during the game, which yeah. was quite remarkable, yeah. One of the Bradford players tried to tackle it, which was a little dangerous. A short delivery from Lackmel. Uh, Barnes just... Ducks out of the way at that one allows it to go through to Brook Guest. Did it nutmeg him? Bradford aren't very good at the moment. <laughs> this was when they were okay, but they're not oh, very good okay. at the moment. You're absolutely right. They're, uh, they're struggling despite the appointment of Mark Hughes as manager. That's a bit like Derbyshire, I don't know, appointing somebody like Mickey Arthur. One's, one's worked and the other one hasn't. <laughs> really, Mickey Arthur hadn't been out of work for five years. In comes Lackmal again, and this time full face of the bat on a shot that uh, is so hits so straight that it crashes into the well, crashes, trundles into the stumps at the uh, non strikers end. It's the end of the over, and Saranga Lackmal now has one for 40 from his 17 overs, 152 for 70. If he picks up another one, that's not a bad day's work, two for 40. So we'll keep going, and he'll be buoyed by the first wicket he's got so far in this match the quality of the wicket as well very important mm -hmm. Mulder was as I say not the last hope but you know you do, you do feel from a Leicestershire point of view he's capable of, obviously capable of scoring quickly look powerful as well but good delivery a little bit of movement back in a bit too good for him Norman's played a blinder here he's just sent me a, a copy of the he used to be the groundsman at Chesterfield and other places. But the Derbyshire versus the South Africans from June 1965. The full filled in scorecard. Eddie Barlow playing for uh, the South Africans. Ali Backer. And Oshdal bowls on the back foot. Parkinson defends out into the offside. Replacing Sam Connors Dahl from the Bennett end. Colin Bland. He was the fielder who was... Uh, lightning quick wasn't he in the field yep. Colin Bland there's yep. uh, Graham Pollock's in there as well I notice one or two names that I wouldn't necessarily automatically know Derbyshire side that uh, included uh, Ian Hall I notice who was opening the batting Dahl is in and bowls Parkinson is at forward this time thick inside part of the bat defending out towards mid wicket Ian Buxton Derek Morgan's in there as well uh, Bob Taylor <laughs> batting down at nine, which is probably uh, too too high for him. Harold Rhodes in there as well. Excellent stuff. If you, if, with your permission, I shall pass that on to David Griffin because he may well uh, he may have it, and he may not. Dahl is in again. Parkinson is solid in defence on the front foot, pushing out into the covers, picked up by Alex Sarge Thompson. As nobody appears to call him. <laughs> uh, no. <laughs> so Barnes and Parkinson digging in, just trying to get Leicestershire through to T without any further damage. Dahl bowls. Parkinson again is forward, looking to drive on that occasion, not really getting it. Rolls out to Lackmal at mid on. There's no run. The only partnership 
of any real significance in the innings end 69 for the fifth wicket between Sam Evans and Vian Mulder. As Dahl is in and bowls, Parkinson is playing across his front pad a touch, pushing across it. Pushing the delivery off middle, middle and leg out towards mid-wicket. But even during that partnership, which lasted an hour and a half almost post-lunch, the scoreboard was never allowed to tick over too quickly. They kept things tight, Derbyshire waiting for something to happen where they were patient. In goes Dahl and bowls. Parkinson again pressing forward in defence. Out down the pitch on the onside. The end of a maiden over from Anish Dahl and that was a sort of case in point really. Keeping the Leicestershire batsmen batters honest. Making them play. Not giving them anything to get away. That was the main thing. Dahl 13 overs. One for 24. Barnes 6. Parkinson just a single. 1-5-2 for 7 is the score. Change of bowling at the pavilion. We're going to see uh, young Nick Potts. Takes a wicket and then <laughs> off you go. It is strange, isn't it? You've done your job. Yes. So perhaps he's not going to get two for 40. Well, he's not. Not at the moment. Anyway, one for 20. Nick Potts, nine overs, four maidens. We're going to look at the uh, new ball, I suppose. Which is still 19 overs when it's that new ball. I should be quite glad if it, they get to that point, I would imagine, at the moment. <laughs> Only three wickets away. And as you say, 19 overs. Barnes on strike. He's got six. Waits and then cuts very nicely. <laughs> straight to Anish Dahl, who is so fast. Everything he does is fast. His bowling's not rapid, but he's quicker than he looks. Running between the wickets is ridiculous. It's very quick hand, yeah, isn't he? He's, a, he's, he's a such a good cricketer. Such a good cricketer. The score remains 152 for 7. And roller coaster rider. Yes. Very exciting, or not, depending on uh, on your views. The next delivery from Potts is outside the off stump, where a lot of his balls have been delivered. Almost got Mulder with uh, an edge that went in between the wicketkeeper and the slip. The wicket that he did pick up was a fantastic catch by Dahl to get rid of Colin Ackerman for five. Terrific take from uh, Dahl. They only got one slip, young Potts. As I said last week, he's got the towel hanging out the back of his trousers. Not sure why. The ball is not going to get down. That one's driven by Barnes, but straight to uh, Lear's deploy. Quite often see the motorbikes, don't we, them yep. on the Milligan Road. <coughs> yeah, from the chapter, the outlaws. Come on, boys. I was fancy the bike, but I was too scared to get on one, really. Barnes waits, pops his next delivery, he's wider the stump again, and again, it allowed to go through to broadcast. He just needs to bowl one slightly straighter that doesn't move in the air at all and he may well get his man. You never know. 152 for 7. Barnes 6. Parkinson 1. There's a slip and a just slightly backward point. There's a man out on the cover boundary. There's a man close-ish in at cover. The mid-off. They're the off offside fielders. There's Potts is in, balls to Barnes, who leaves this one alone. That one didn't move, it wasn't as wide at the off stop as the previous ones had been, but it was wide enough for Barnes to leave alone. There's also a man down at third man, I've forgotten about uh, him. There's a long leg, there's a mid wicket, and there's a mid on for Nick Potts. I can't have touched my computer for a while because it's gone into lock mode. Next delivery is left alone outside the off oh, stump to go through to wicketkeeper Brooke Guest. 179 for 6 now Durham. That's the end of the over incidentally here. 152 for 7. 179 for 6. Durham, Leicestershire. Oh no, that's this game. Uh, Worcestershire 237 for 4 against Sussex. 
And Middlesex are 57 for one in their first innings. They trailed Glamorgan by 65. That game has moved on rapidly. Mm. Foxy Phil on uh, so the, the non signing of a solid overseas batter. Looking worse by the innings. From Leicestershire's point of view, Anuj Dahl is in bowling to Callum Parkinson, who again is very solid in defence. And then he sort of walks aggressively away towards short leg. Shoulders squared, Parkinson. He does Bris like he's bristling, bristling with defiance. He does defiance. look like he's bristling, doesn't he? Absolutely, that's exactly and he will, the word. will be, he will be. That's how, that's how he sort of plays his cricket, Callum. Very cross to be left out up at uh, Durham. Dahl is in, bowls to him, and he's walking into a defensive push. Out into the offside it goes, picked up by Thompson. He's got in, in the two innings he's played, Callum. 14 and 7, but each time when he started then to try and expand his repertoire of shots, he's kind of got himself out. So, But that's not his job at the moment as T approaches back foot defensive push and he's got that one away into the gap might just run all the way the outfield is so fast it is lovely piece of timing actually I did him a little bit of an injustice there he jumped up on his toes slightly short of a length just enough width and punched it away through wide extra cover and it runs up to the extra cover boundary for four beautifully played really nice nice piece of timing indeed moves on to five one, five, six for seven. They badly need the tail or, as Paul Nixon insists, or I ought to refer to them, the lower middle, middle order because they can all bat. Well, Derbyshire have got a tail. To, uh, <laughs> <laughs> to make runs. Dahl is in outside of Stump. Big stride forward from Parkinson. He lifts the bat over the line of the ball in the modern way, the prescribed parabola. Six for seven. If I'd upset him down now, she's going to go back there. There goes the chair. <laughs> I think he's fed up, the cameraman. Bless him. Dahl is in and bowls, and Parkinson is looking to drive, isn't quite there to be driven, steers it out to Thompson at shortish. Extra cover. I think they were frozen into position in the first game against Worcestershire at one stage. Oh, very sorry from and there's your ice cream man. Heading right. up Milligan Road. I'll see you in a minute. The sign that it's at the top of the hour. Dave is leaving, not to get an ice cream, I don't think. He's heading to update BBC Radio Derby as Dahl bowls and Parkinson is forward defending. Maybe, maybe fancies a 99. With monkey blood, as uh, Martin Emerson suggested, which I think means the raspberry sauce. End of the over, one, five, six, four, seven. Barnes, six, Parkinson, five. What would be a respectable score? That's to be over 300, really, when you've won the toss and chosen to bat. In goes Potts and bowls, bounces up, comes back in and Paul Barnes is felled, that it uh, hits him in a very painful position. So uh, he's down on his knees at the moment, picks himself up. He's on his haunches now. He's going to take a, a moment. Which gives Wayne Madsen a chance to come out from slip and have a word with Billy Goddard, whether he's seen something or not, I don't know, but uh, that did hurt. Ed Barnes, and he's staying well out of the firing line at the moment, bending over and waiting for the pain to subside to the extent where he feels able to, to bat again. Madsen and Godelman have had their word. Godelman has received Madsen's advice. Barnes walks tentatively, gingerly back into position. Sees Potts coming in and bowling to him. Outside off stump goes for the cuts and it bounces over the top edge. 
into the gloves of Brooke Guest. That was a, a disturbed shot and Barnes knows it. Walks back towards short leg, then leans on his bat. He was disgusted with himself, really, at the shot. He's got away with it. Six off 28 for him now. Here comes the update. Just four balls, or three balls now, until T, but it's not been a great half hour for Leicestershire. They've gone from 137 for four to 156 for seven. Sam Evans and Vian Mulder had added 69 for the fifth wicket when Evans poked it a wide one from Sam Connors and that gave Wayne Madsen a comfortable catch at slip. Just three balls later, Harry Swindles was pinned leg before wicket by the same bowler without scoring. And a few moments ago, Vian Mulder, having played really well on debut for the Foxes, 39 off 86 balls, it hit six fours, looked very powerful, but he was pinned on the back pad leg before wicket by Surigal Lakmal for that 39, 149 for seven at that stage it's now 156 for seven Callum Parkinson has five Ed Barnes has six but this remember after Leicestershire won the toss and chose to bat first it hasn't gone well two balls to go before T as Nick Potts is in bowls, and that one is successfully cut away by Barnes. It was enough width, he should pick up two. Third man has a lot of ground to make up to his right. And by the time he does so, Connors, it is down there. Barnes is back for the second, moves on to eight, 158 for seven, one ball. To go for Leicester to survive. John Philip Webster, hello to you. Enjoying the commentary and stream. He was wondering about Fletcher's listed lose and wondering what the fireplace was for. I daren't speculate. In goes Potts and bowls. Barnes is forward, thick inside edge and pad. Pushes the ball, a combination thereof, into the offside. And that is over. And that is T in another session that belongs to Derbyshire. Didn't look like it was going to. While Sam Evans and Vian Mulder were adding 69 for the fifth wicket. But Derbyshire were patient, they kept at it, they kept the scoreboard under control and they picked up their rewards with those three late wickets of Evans, Swindles and Mulder. A consequence that they are very much on top at the tee interval. Lots of high-fiving going on up there. Leicester should go to tee on 158 for seven. Callum Parkinson on five, Ed Barnes on eight and we'll be back with you at the Upton Steel County ground for the final session of the first day's play in this LV Insurance County fixture in around about 15 minutes or so's time.
know that I know it's a radio. Well, good afternoon. Welcome back to the Upton Steel County Ground Grace Road in Leicester for the evening session on this first day of the LV Insurance County Championship fixture between Leicestershire and Derbyshire ball by ball commentary brought to you by the BBC as it does on every ball bowled in county cricket throughout the domestic season. BBC Radio's Derby and Leicester. Dave Fletcher and Richard Ray, your commentators for the game, which is about to resume with the Derbyshire very much on top. Or so it would appear, because there's a, uh, there are many old cricket sayings, but one of them is don't judge a pitch until both sides have had a bat. So perhaps there's a little bit more to the pitch than appears. Derbyshire, that said, have bowled very well. 158 for 7 Leicestershire. Three wickets for Sam Connors. He's been very much the pick, but everybody has chipped in. Most recently, Surigal Lakmal, who had bowled without any luck, really, but had persisted and then eventually took a, a potentially key wicket. That Vian Mulder leg before wicket hit on the back pad right in front of the, of the stumps for 39. He looked dangerous and Leicestershire will be hoping for great things from him as the season goes on. Well, all the players are ready, I can tell you. The Derbyshire players have been out there a good five minutes. The two Leicestershire batsmen are there. We await only the arrival of the umpires, Messrs. Bainton and Pratt. You've gone a bit early there, Rich, haven't you? Blimey. Well, it's... Well... <laughs> see, but the players were all out there. Derbyshire are keen to get out there to get this, uh, the get this over we, race we, we, Well, it? exactly. We could, uh, as a thing, as it 
pans out, we could we could have got a good over in two by hour, now. Two hours from now, we're looking at half six. I mean, here they come. We are. Here they come. Come wandering out, Neil Bainton, Neil Pratt. It's a pat on the back. Neil Bainton wanders out. Both have given leg before decisions. All look pretty adjacent to us. Looked pretty adjacent to us. Both umpires wearing their wide-brimmed sort of Panama-style sun hats with a black ribbon. But umpire Bainton, the smaller of the two in terms of height, anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Tread carefully, whatever. Come on, one Rich. One no says these days. That. No need for that. You'll be getting into trouble. I, I did actually get into a little bit of trouble, and rightly so, with, with Neil Malander. Did you? At the first game of the season, because what? What I, I said, in a very sort of. Bloke. He is a smashing guy, yeah. but he's quite well padded these days. And oh as, he, as he came out of the pavilion, I said, Out comes Empire Malander, preceded by his dummy. <laughs> Which was intended to be purely jocular, but it was yeah, personal, and I'd apologised on air and to him you afterwards. Were basically which was suggesting there that he'd wintered well. <laughs> it really wasn't. But he laughed afterwards and said, I clearly need to get back into, into the gym, but it, it was a poor thing to have said. Anyway, 158 for seven. Can Derbyshire finish Leicester off and uh, embark on building their own first innings score. Callum Parkinson and Ed Barnes, both with Derbyshire connections, are going to try and do their best to prevent that happening. Yeah. Connors looking for a five fur. What's his um, best for Derbyshire? He's got a five fur, definitely. I saw it. No question. But I bet it, it might have conceded a few more runs than he has so far. I suspect. Yes, that's true. Five for 83. And that was at Chesterley Street last year. So every opportunity for him. He is in and bowls to Parkinson, who's pushing it out towards wide. Redon immediately calls Barnes through for the quick single, but it was a good call. Um, Lackmal was slightly on the back foot. Runs out towards wide-ish. Midon. And... Parkinson has won. He moves on to six. Oh, half past updates move slightly after half past. They're not half past anymore. They're at twenty-five too. But and we have a yeah, we have a sort of sports, sports bulletin. Desk, yeah. That's right. Uh, so you got the news uh, then, then the weather. So uh, slightly more expanded updates, but tend to come a, a little bit later. Don't they? In comes Connors with that uh, characteristic now. To us, hop bowls down the leg side, flicks at it. Barnes not taken cleanly by Guest and Connor's hand started to go into the air. But I think if, if it hit anything, it probably just flicked the thigh pad of Ed Barnes. He's been a very nervous man at the start of the season. The danger that Leeds United were in, not anymore. It would appear. No, that'd be safe. Well, safe enough. Ever another one. Albeit they? they are now just a football team like everybody else. In you know what I mean? If that yes, makes sense. Yeah. In goes Connors and Bowles, and Barnes is trying to turn that one off his legs and does, I think, successfully. I think there was a bit of pad involved as well. Runs out to uh, Sean Massoud, who's down here in front of us at wide long leg. And Barnes takes one, moves on to nine. I have to say they were fun to watch from a neutral point of view, the chaos whenever they played and mm. Bielsa was a lot of fun yeah, it was a bit of a and when it worked it was his it was outstanding but uh, sadly didn't always for them in goes Connors bowls full driving is Parkinson nice high left elbow but on the sort of back foot punch and drive out towards Billy Godelman who is at uh, mid off still a long sleeve sweater less which, as I said, I'm, I'm taking my time to get used to. <laughs> I spent years watching yeah, Billy swathe in long sleeves. Unsurprisingly, he's got quite white arms, like like <laughs> blue white, <laughs> like Derbyshire white. Yeah. He goes Connors bowls, parks some back foot defensive shot back down the pitch on the onside, out to Lackmal. Yeah, they've never seen the sun the sunshine for years. His arms. Trees now. Uh, the breeze has strengthened a, a little. Trees moving. The blossom still on, on some of the trees around uh, in front of the groundsman's hut alongside the Turner Indoor Centre. 
as Connors bowls. Again, it's sort of foolish. And again, he's, he's looking to drive, not quite timing it. Rehearses the shot. It went straight out to Godelman. End of the over. 160 for seven. Two singles from it. Parkinson's six, Barnes nine. <laughs> he's got to get his 20 overs in. He's got to get his money's worth. Didn't bowl in the over immediately after he'd taken a wicket. It was replaced by Nick Potts. But now he's going to bowl the first over after T. Every time he takes his sweater off, he reveals that he's wearing a, a skin underneath his Derbyshire top. Because it makes him look like he's, he's, he's not even bothered by the, by the brisk breeze. He must have been frozen at Lord's. John, John knows what the fireplace was for at the Liverpool oh, okay. um, lose. A, a serious answer. I, I'm, I'm not entirely sure, All but right. it kind of makes sense. Oh, okay. It's like well beginning a new over from the uh, pavilion end and bowls to uh, Barnes. It just turns this into the leg side. There's no run. Can I suggest, <laughs> says John Philip Webster, it was for gents to warm their hands prior <laughs> to using the lose. <laughs> You could suggest that. Kind of makes sense. Magnificent. Absolutely <laughs> magnificent. Yeah. I mean, it might just have been to warm the womb generally, but uh, <laughs> I suppose the effect is the same. Or to dry them afterwards. Oh. <laughs> yeah, no, after you washed your hands, because there would have yeah, been no, no air blowers. So no, yeah, yeah. More hygienic yeah, than towels and stuff. Yeah, yeah plates, true. yeah. Pounds weight, and that one is defended. Wayne Matson was very excited for a moment there for some reason. Ball was played off the middle of the bat. Down to Billy Godelman at mid-off. It's barely got to flick the pad on the way through, isn't it? And the appeals oh, go up these days. I do get very excited, yeah. yeah. It's one of the less endearing parts of modern-day cricket, it has to be said. All action all the time. Well, it's, it's not like that, nor should it be. 160 for seven. Blackmail turns. Walks past the uh, advertising mat and he's on his way in to bowl to Barnes, who gets struck on the pad going down, clearly going down, I would have thought. But he appealed anyway. And they think about coming back for a second leg by, which isn't on, as he's fielded there by uh, Potts out in the deep. 161 for seven. Barnes remains on nine. He would have had to have done a bit of that, wouldn't it? Mm. He is sort of, they are outswing, but he started it pretty wide. It was a sort of half appeal, wasn't it? He stopped very quickly when he realised that the umpire wasn't going to give it. It wasn't the worst of shouts. Bill Bainton said no, and this next one is also on the uh, leg stump, but bounces a bit higher. Why there was an ooh and an ah then, I don't know. But there was. Parkinson moves to seven, 162 for seven. I think Wayne's had something in his tea, which has... <laughs> with his tea that has... Just had orange juice. Enervated him. Very excited. That's good. They're, they're uh, offering encouragement to Saranga Lakmel, whether he needs it or not. One for 40, his figures at the moment. One for 41, in fact, off 17 overs and four balls. He's on his way in again. And this one is again on leg stump and turned into the leg side. More work for Nick Potts. They're going to come back for the second. What's the throw like? Well, it's not going to be quick enough for a start. It was accurate enough, but not quick enough from Potts. He didn't. He had to sort of run round the ball with him being right-handed and the ball going to his left-hand side. As a consequence, Barnes gets back for a comfortable two in the end. He moves on to 11, 164 for seven. We are, uh, after this delivery, we'll be 14 overs away from the second new ball. I can't imagine it'll be a bit particularly lengthy spell from Lackmal, this from the pavilion and the final ball. Oh, he plays at that one, does Barnes. He has a tentative push at it outside the off stump. Misses it. Ball goes through to Brooke Guest. End of the over, 164 for seven. Leicestershire. Barnes has 11, Parkinson has seven. Updates time as the sun goes behind. A little high cloud. It is only a little, basically set very fair here yeah, about a, a mile or so south of Leicester city centre
Connors is in and bowls. Parkinson forces it out to mid off. Here's the update. Yeah, they chose to bat first on what looks like a decent track as well. They lost four wickets in the morning session. Hassan Azad, who batted very well uh, for his 17 before being trapped by an in-swinger. George Rhodes failed again, unfortunately. Just six for George. Colin Ackerman rather gave it away. The captain, four, five. And then just on the interval, Louis Kimber was bowled by Matty McKinnon. A leg break uh, for just one. So the batting problems continuing. There was a really good stand after the interval of 69 between Sam Evans, who batted throughout the morning, and Vian Mulder making his debut. And then Evans, having gone to 50, second consecutive innings for Sam Evans, that he passed 50 on 63, just poked at a wide one from Connors and gave Madsen a, a comfortable catch in the slips. Harry Swindles came and went very quickly, just three balls for Harry before going leg before wicket. And then Mulder, who batted really well, looked very powerful, hit some really good shots. He too went leg before, in his case, to the uh, Sri Lankan Suragal Lakmal for 39. 158 for seven at T then. It's now 165 for seven. Callum Parkinson has eight. Ed Barnes has 11. They both have Derbyshire connections. They'll be very keen to do well against a club, I say, which they both spent uh, some time. But an awful lot to do to, to drag Leicestershire towards what might be a respectable score. The pitch looks pretty good, and when you win the toss and bat in those circumstances, you're looking for at least 300. Long way before they get anywhere near that. 165 for seven. Side off stump there from Connors, left by Barnes, allowed to go through, no run. Do tweet us at Fox's Cricket 22 or at Fletch Sport if you want to get in touch. As Connors is in, back goes Barnes on his stumps, turning his wrists on one, and Midland that's going on towards Midland Lake, pushing it out towards mid wicket, and there's no run. Light shadow extending across the pitch now. Connors is in, driving his barns. Another brilliant piece of work by Dahl. He of the hands that really everything seems to stick. Flung himself to his left and um, there was a third man so it might just have been a single but even so... Another really fine piece of work by Anuj Dahl, who has uh, made his contribution today with bat, uh, sorry, with ball and uh, as a bowler and a catch and uh, some quite brilliant fielding. Saved one there. Lakmal, the ever willing, is to continue from the pavilion end. Connors has bowled 18 overs, so too has. Lackmal, so he's every chance of maintaining his 20 plus overs per innings record. And Fletch will tell you about it. On his way in from the pavilion end, bowling to Callum Parkinson and hits him. Not sure what kind of shot that was from Parkinson, in all honesty. It looked like he was thinking about turning it round the corner. It's been given as leg buys. He is down on his haunches at the moment. That'll have hurt. And what has it hit exactly? Because he's actually dropped his bat now as well at the non-striker's end, having uh, completed the single. He, 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 does it hit him on the arm? They're going to call for the physiotherapist, and it's his left hand, by the look of it, that's causing him grief, and that's not Which good news for a left arm hand. spinner, oh, is it, in, really? He's in a bother here, isn't he? Yeah, that's not great. Gets a pat on the back from Lakmal. And he wants, he wants uh, uh, an arm guard uh, yeah. of some description, unless... Uh, so elbow area, something like that, that he's been uh, he's been struck. But it was a strange old shot, wasn't it? It looked like he was going to try and turn it around the corner. Then he thought, I'm not going to play a shot. He and he thought sort of it was going to get up more than it actually yeah, did and, and sort of took a ducked action into it, really misread it. But he's been hit right on the left elbow, it looks like. He's showing to Will Garvey, Leicestershire's physio. The umpire was, has to take the ball because there's a, a stoppage in play as well. This will all be taken into account when we... Revisit the uh, the over eight, which is minus two at the moment. We'll get one knocked off for this. Fortunately, Will Garvey's directly got his back to us. Otherwise, we could tell you exactly what was happening, whether he's just manipulating or spraying or a bit of a bit of an 
anesthetic spray or some of something going on. Parkinson takes off his helmet. Waves again at the pavilion. He's going to be okay. Drinks are coming out. Parkinson. I think he's, he'll con yeah, he's not broken or anything, is it? He'll have a no. lump. I would yes, imagine he will. on it. Yeah, he will. It's never nice yeah, maybe when, he's you, when you're struck or when you see somebody struck like that. It didn't look to be in any trouble before he got to the non-strikers and uh, back into uh, into safety, if you like. But uh, yeah, he's he's fine. He's a tough, nuggety Boltonian. Boltonian, as you say, uh -huh. Lancastrian, and uh, I think he might want an arm guard, though. Yes. On one comes. Yeah. It looks like. And, uh, <laughs> brought on by. It. Not sure who that is. I think he's a member of the Leicestershire Academy. I think the twos have all gone home now, haven't they? They were doing a lot of running before. Bless them. So they've been given the rest of the day off to go and relax. The life of a professional athlete. Yeah, it's, it's, it's tough. 166 for seven. Just the one ball of this uh, over. Here comes Lackmal to bowl the second to Barnes. It's another shortish delivery and he deals with that quite nicely. He pulls it down a square leg and they go through for a single. So that leg, by, I suppose he was taking evasive action, wasn't he? Yeah. So he didn't just yeah. let it hit him. But he almost, almost played a shot at it at one point, but then sort of decided against it. Former Leicestershire player Luke Wright has tweeted, how good is all the live streaming from around the country of the county championship, he says. He says he's glad it wasn't around when he played, though, because he used to tell his daddy he got a pearl at every week. An absolute <laughs> jaffer. Like my balls. Edge then caught nicely, really nicely by Wayne Madsen. Moving away to his right-hand side, he was a long way from his body. That and Parkinson, well, may well have been a little shaken up by being hit two balls earlier by Serenga Lackmal, but Lackmal now does have his second wicket of the innings. It was a good catch by Madsen. Parkinson's gone for eight, 167 for eight now, Leicestershire. Yeah, he'd been hit, but that was not a great shot, I'm afraid. It was a sort of wide-ish delivery swinging away. Could have been left, could have really got, he's really cross with himself, and rightly so, almost steered it towards Madsen didn't he and though it was a little bit wide of Madsen he's got good hands the South African two hands to his right never looked like making a mistake and Leicestershire's problems continue Parkinson gone for eight 167 for eight pleased for Saranga Saranga Lackmal as well because yeah. he's bowled nicely now he's got himself uh, two for 44 which is much much better reading much better reading for the uh, Sri Lankan. He hasn't had an awful lot of luck. As Hendricks walks out to the middle. Well, nobody has yet managed to dismiss Buren Hendricks. <laughs> he's had three innings and he's had three not outs. 16, um, 16 and a, was it 13? Looks back through his through my notes. The good news is that Barnes will be at the other end and when they get him out, Davis will be there as well. So uh, they can let Buren Hendricks bat 21 getting him out. School. Yeah, well, <laughs> he's not bothered about his extraordinary character, very, very laid back. And uh, when he f arrived, he had a net and although they're impressed with his bowling, obviously, that's why he's here. Paul Nixon said well, he got out about 15 times with that. Uh, well, you know, Put him since when? <laughs> <It's not laughs> when it matters, he's not been dismissed. Famous last words, but uh, we'll see what happens. He's got him up to ten anyway. Keep with two slips. The new ball seems a long way off now. Around the wicket comes Lackman and balls to Hendricks. He goes up onto his toes and pushes it out into the offside. No ball, which is, I think, his fourth. From uh, off the top of my head, Saranga Lackman. Uh, the point Luke Wright was making was that is that you can't quote get away with anything these days. And no uh, hiding place. No. Nope. Yeah. yeah. And that footage is available, obviously, to to every county as well. So They're all free, apart from one, I think. In goes 
Saranga like Malaget. Oh, inside edge. How does that not hit the uh, off stump? No idea. Then the ball is picked up by Brunkess and thrown in. It actually hits the back of Hendrick's leg. Uh, Guest apologises. Hendrick says no need. And we'll get on with it. Good to see. 169 for 8. It remains. Good delivery from Saranga Lakmal, who may well be about to uh, match or nearly match Sam Connors figures. If he can get another wicket here, it's two more to get. 169 for 8. Lakmal around the wicket, bowls, and that one is turned nicely into the leg side by Hendricks. He gets one. He wants to come back for a second. This will be interesting. Oh. Throw by Masood and the bales are not removed by uh, <laughs> Brooke Guest because Hendricks got back. I think if he'd have thrown it to the, the bowler's end, then Barnes might have been in slightly more trouble, actually. He's going to come over the wicket now is uh, Saranga Lakmal, but we can forgive uh, Sean Masood for not having the strongest arm in the field. Because whatever runs it may or may not cost Derbyshire, he's more than made up for them already. I'm sure he's got his mind on batting even now with two more wickets to fall. 171 for eight. Final ball of the Lackmal over. Looked like a slightly slower delivery and Hendricks was up to it. Just props forward and defends it. Back to the bowler. A good over though. 171 for eight. Now Hendricks has two. Barnes has 12. And we're... Uh, 12 overs away from the potentially getting a second new ball for Derbyshire. They'll want to get these last two wickets before then, I fancy, and, uh, and have a, a decent bat this evening before the close. Hendricks faced um, 60 balls in that last wicket stand with Hassan Azad to save the game against Worcester on the in the first game of the season. I said to him, after, you know, a little bit sort of nervous or worried. Shrugged. In goes Connors and bowls quickly and it's full and Barnes is a little late on it but does dig it out. It's enough. He's South African weight. I've experienced far tougher situations. And it wasn't a bead of sweat on him. I don't think there were he's the most laid back man. That's the thing about Masood, he doesn't appear to, to be flustered or sweat ever. Remarkable. Connors is in and bowls cut away by Barnes, but a brilliant stop as ever. I think you can assume that if it's within his radius, Dahl will stop it cleanly as well. I'm trying to think if there's any one bobble out once that have whistled towards him. Not a catch, uh, just a, a fielding <laughs> piece of fielding. Such quick, clean hands. And another save by him. Connors in Barnes is again steering it wide this time he's got it well inside Dahl even he can't get there down towards third man it goes between Madsen at second slip and Dahl at backward point Barnes takes one moves on to 13 brings Hendricks down on strike to face uh, Connors for the first time it may have done Ed Barnes a disservice calling him a walking wicket it seems to have settled, settled his down time again at turn, now. yeah. Connors in and bowls, looking for the Yorker. Hendricks plays it well. It's a good ball, but the big, tall left-hander with the left-hander's elegance. Just down on you see his. Number. number as well yeah. is is yeah. is grey and enemy. it's very strange. It just must have been the two that were printed for the South Africans just haven't quite come out in the same sort of lime green that is on the numbers on all the other Leicestershire shirts. Connors is in bowls clipped neatly away down towards long leg. Doesn't actually race away. Again, there's a little bit of hesitation. Always was to to be had there. And uh, Hendricks called Barnes through, ordered him, I suspect, through. Barnes, little choice but to respond, did and made his ground comfortably. Hendricks was running to the danger end anyway. He moves on to four. So that's 
Yeah, it does. 57 runs without being dismissed. In goes Connors. Bold him! I asked for that. I apologise to Hendricks and to the Leicestershire listeners. It was a full toss. I think it was very full. He went to try and drive it where inside edge and onto the stumps. It went. Pretty sure that's what happened, he says. Turning like to it. the feed. Yeah. It looked a little bit wide, looking for maybe the in-swinging York. It might just have sort of started to shape back in. Took a thick inside edge. Yeah, and right onto middle stump. He managed somehow to steer it onto middle stump. So another one goes. Leicestershire <laughs> subsiding. Is that the right word? It kind of has been since 137 for four to 174 for nine. So five wickets for 37 runs. Hendricks goes for the first time in his Leicestershire career. Bold for four. Gives Sam Connors the opportunity to get a five for he's only, uh, that was the last ball at the over, so he'll be, uh, he won't be hoping that Saranga Lakmal doesn't pick up the final wicket, but it is Will Davis. Another. But a, a bona fide former Derbyshire player who came through yeah. the academy at Derbyshire, Will Davis. Burst onto the scene with a very impressive spell against the touring Australian side many years ago. Last season he got his career best figures. Yeah. He finally got rid of the uh, against Middlesex and Merchant Taylors. Yeah, finally got rid of the his best, which had been a Colwyn Bay, I think, against Glamorgan prior to that. In the Aniron Donald match. He's he playing for Hampshire Twos at the moment, isn't he? Well, Donald me. Donald just happened to oh, Davis just happened to be bowling or not bowling when Donald was going mad, which which helped him enormously. Barnes on strike as uh, a full delivery from Lackmal is dug out nicely up towards Billy Godwin at mid off 174 for 9 Derbyshire with the maximum bowling points Leicestershire yet to get a batting point Sussex last week didn't get a batting point or a bowling point they've just exited the game with the 8 points they got from the draw which is quite unusual Then we started to pick up Derbyshire wickets once uh, 110 overs had been passed. 174 for nine. Lackmile bowls. That one is guided very nicely off the back foot down to uh, a square third man where Sam Connors does the feeling that batsmen get back for a couple. Barnes moves to 15. 176 for nine. Nice shot from Ed Barnes. Polishing the ball furiously before handing it on to Leah's deploy and then via Billy Godelman back to Sam Co uh, to Saranga Lackmel. He turns, just pauses for a moment. Now he's on his way. He's past the umpire now. And Barnes pushes this one out into the offside where Leah's deploy does the fielding. No, not even an inclination that it's going to cool down inside this commentary box anytime soon. Wow, it's warm. Do you not think? Oh, no, you're, you're accustomed to it. It's about right for me I'm now, from, I must, I'm, I must I'm admit. I'm from but Bolton. <laughs> <laughs> this, is, this is ridiculously hot. We could open the back door to get a draft no, it's too through, windy but then it would be, yeah, yeah, unfortunately, it just, yeah. yeah seems I'm not be. complaining, really. It is just really warm. It's lovely, really goes Lackmal again and that was turned around the corner by Barnes down towards the, the man at long leg that's Matty McKinn and it is in the far distance they pick up another single Barnes moves to 16 and Will Davis will now face for the first time two balls left of this over before Connors has a, a chance to improve his best figures in first class cricket he got bounced out by Potts last week <laughs> They'll know. Will Davis, so I would imagine one or two have seen it. It, it was yeah. a good delivery, a good bounce. It take long to get round, does it? He didn't back away, it was just a bit too good for him. Well, he's got, a, he's got a quite a good eye from memory. This is a full delivery, almost like a bluff. And he digs it out nicely. Does really well in actual fact. And there's a shy at the stumps from a long way away from Wayne Madsen. I think Davis may have been in. It was a good bit of backing up, actually, by Shamasud. 
scramble through for the for Davis's first run. I don't think Sam Connors will be too disappointed if this next ball's a dot ball. Wayne Madsen's still got his hands on his head. <laughs> and his doll joined him momentarily, but the final ball of the Lackmal over. The twentieth over, of course it is. Two for fifty two his figures. Four of those 20 overs have been maidens, and he's in to bowl to Ed Barnes down the leg side. Horrible delivery. Uh, and they go through for a bye. Neil Bainton almost forgot to signal that because he was happily removing Lackmal's sweater from his, uh, his little hook around his waist. Uh, end of the over, 178 for nine. Disappointing for Sam Connors that he's not going to have a bowl at Will Davis because Davis would have emerged from the pathway you'd have thought while Sam Connors was in it. And it's always very encouraging, isn't it, for the youngsters who are in the pathway to see these players who have come through the pathway and gone on to play first-team cricket. So I'm sure he'd enjoy bowling to him. Of course, he's played in the same side as Ed Barnes, or certainly been in squads with Ed Barnes. Who faces up to him now from the Bennett end bowls looking for the Oka clipped away through mid wicket by Barnes could be two should be two Davis turns you heard the yeah 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 as he saw that uh, Lackmal still hasn't put his sweater on was sort of scrambling away to his right and slid as he picked it up picks himself up very slowly where is he done his 20 yeah, yeah he's done <laughs> 20 now. now yeah he's done 20 he's allotted 20 minimum minimal requirement Sarankal as in goes Connor bowls and getting on the front foot and looking to drive and comes off a thick inside edge there at Barnes and it trickles out at a much more acceptable pace as far as Lackman is concerned straight to him gives the ball a gentle polish on the back of his uh, right leg before tossing it to Sam Connors Four for 46, Connors in his 20th over. Hop and runs in and bowls straight again, looking to hit the stumps, making Barnes play. Leans forward, steers it out towards mid-off. 18 not out to Ed Barnes. His best, obviously, last uh, year in terms of Batting 83 not out against Somerset at Taunton. In goes Connors and bowls to him. Steers it wide of the leaping dial down towards third man. Really long, a long way wide. So Barnes happy to take one and give Davis the strike. Well, not sure about happy, but prepared so to do. Moves on to 19. So he is the third high scorer in the innings now after... Evans 63, Mulder 39, uh, Barnes 19 not out, Hassan Azad made 17, everybody else single figures. In goes Connors and Davis gets behind it, pushing it out to mid on, picked up by Lackman who wipes the sweat from his brow, puts it onto the ball. Is it a polish? But, um, Will Davis's first class best is. Find out for you. Forty two huh? last year, should remember that. In goes Connors, hit down hard into the air, bounces high above the leaping Connors and a comfortable stop for Godelman at mid off. So not in that over, his twentieth Connors. A fifth wicket, four for 47, Leicestershire 182 for nine. Yeah, against Kent here on this very ground. He says that maiden five wicket haul against Glamorgan was his most exciting day as a cricketer. Uh -huh. and his nickname is Spaceman, which I've never heard Anybody anyone no. use. <laughs> Spaceman, has Connor's got a nickname? Out. Get your money's worth out. Get my money's worth out of your book. Yes. Sir <laughs> <laughs> so Angle Lackwell's going to continue from the pavilion end. Two for 52. 
Well, he's, he's put Sammy. somewhat orig unoriginally Sammy, yes. Yeah. I don't know if that's a nickname, is it? Not it's it's his, his name. name. <laughs> Pretty much his name. Here is Lackmal in and bowls. Ooh, what a wild swing at that one. And drive from Barnes. Misses. Goes through to Brooke Guest. And as Dahl wants a drink for Sam Connors, I think. And uh, I think he wants a change of boots by the look of him. If that's the end of Sam Connors, that'd be a shame. Ed Barnes has defensively written down Barnesy as his nickname, but uh, that isn't true. They've heard all sorts of <laughs> odd <laughs> names. Nothing uh, uh, unkind, Bless but uh, some, yeah. Bless him. He's such a nice lad. <laughs> yes, he is. He's waiting now as Lackmal passes the umpire, and uh, this one is defended out into the offside up towards Billy Godelman. There's no run. So, as things stand, if they were to uh, get this wicket in this over, Derbyshire would have to bat for 22 overs tonight, which is which is enough time for the openers to get themselves in properly and then uh, score a few runs and mm -hmm. chip away at that. Oh, they could make a big hole tackle. in it, couldn't they, really? They could, uh, they could knock half of it. Well, you think ish. even at three and over, you're looking at sort of 70 sort of area, yeah. aren't you? Minimal. And that's yeah. a, a wonderful day for the visitors if yes, it comes about. Like Mal, in again, Paul's not really set. Played quite late at the bottom of the bat out into the offside by Barnsley. Scarecrow, coat hanger. Scarecrow. Yeah, all sorts of heard. He's not a quick mover in the field. Though. Well, it's, <laughs> it's not, I know he isn't, I've seen him. But <laughs> it's just how he always, yeah. you know, just something about, there's always this, he looks quite neat at the moment in fairness to him, but there's usually, a, especially when he bowls his shirts out of his trousers and his hair's all over and he's... A Yorkshire farmer. To talk to him about that. We'll have to get him back in. I'm sure, he's a farmer. Inga, <laughs> hope he is. Like mild balls and balls. Defends out into the offside. Well, he's a professional cricketer, but his dad or whatever his family yes, might yes, be. Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And, he, and he does work on the farm. farm. He right. does work on the farm. Up in Knaresborough. Very nice part of the world. Indeed. Might have been better if it was f building land rather than farmland, but they're worth a few quid. Seems just doing a few stretches at mid on. As like Mal runs away from us, bowls to Barnes, who well, he tries to leave that one, almost plays on. It actually hit the bat, bounces down into the ground, and back to Brook Guest behind the stumps. Go, it's five o'clock already. Soon comes it round, it flies round, absolutely flies round. This will be the last ball of the Lackmal over. He's 21st of the innings. He'll be hoping he gets a day or two's rest. And probably be hoping he doesn't have to bowl again. Only had to... Uh, he did have to bowl twice, of course, again. Batted once. And goes Lackmal and bowls, and that's defended. Back towards Lackmal. He can't quite bend down to stop it, but Shamasud comes around. And the other 182 for nine. Barnes has 19. And Davis has one. Yeah, over 100 overs in the county championship now for Lackmal. So he's, if he's hit, he is getting paid, but uh, come the end of the season, he might be, or the end of his stint, whenever that may be, he might be a, a tired young man. Now, is it going to be Connors to continue? It is. Still searching for that uh, fifth wicket and his best first-class figures. The ball is being shown to the umpire now at uh, 72 overs. It hasn't got long to go. Umpire Pratt walks over to see umpire Bainton, who's got the hoop or the sort of circle that through which they push the ball. It's going through at the moment in its various ways, so it looks fairly circular, but no, umpire Bainton is going to jog down to the nuclear code box, sort of a metal box, a black box with metal all around it, in which the um, alternative, we can't call them new balls, alternative balls are kept. Reese, Lewis Reese, the 
Derbyshire Twelfth Man brings them out rather reverently. He carries the case and lays it, an offering before umpire Bainton. Bends over and examines the balls. He's going to have to find a, a pretty battered round one. Bearing in mind, this one is 72 overs old. Almost made it. Didn't quite. Umpire Pratt has one handed to him by umpire Bainton. So happy enough that they've found a roughly spherical one. Little delay as a consequence. We'll just extend our finishing time. Which is now theoretically 57 minutes away, but we've still got 24 overs to bowl. Take off two for the change of innings, of course. As and when that happens, 10 minutes. It is still going to be half past six at uh, the earliest, I would think. Ooh, update's time. A little bit of a delay while the ball is changed. Leicestershire, glad of any delay, really. They have lost their ninth wicket. Buren Hendricks, who hadn't been dismissed for the Foxes in three previous innings, got a wide full toss from Sam Connors, tried to drive it away, got an inside edge, and the ball cannoned onto his middle stump, knocked it out of the ground. He was gone for four, 174 for nine. The score has gone on to 182 for nine as Will Davis edges down to third man. It was almost all over. Leicestershire won the toss chose to bat first and when you do that you're looking for at least 300 really so it looks like they're going to be bowling tonight the foxes and they're not going to have too much to defend they're 186 for nine that was the update you missed just one edge from davis down to the third man boundary that one bounced a bit the new old ball so to speak from connor's but it evaded Madsen at the second slip. It was well wide of him. Connors is in. Bowles. Davis whips him away off his toes. Doesn't quite get all of it, but he's going to turn for the second. He's going to have to hurry. Does hurry. Makes his ground as the throw from Sean Massoud comes in from wide long leg. So Davis picks up a couple. He's moved on to seven, 188 for nine. Can Leicestershire drag themselves to a batting bonus point? It would be scant consolation, but it would be something at any rate. That is 12 away. Jake reckons I got I got Hendricks out. Probably did. In goes Connors and Bowles down the leg side. Davis tries to help it on his way. Doesn't get anything on it. Not taken cleanly by Brook Guest behind the stumps, but he does stop it. I think in your defence that is a lot of nonsense. <laughs> um... <laughs> But, you know, some people believe in it. They do it often enough, it does, yeah. Yeah. But you never point it out when it happens. And the 58 times it doesn't happen. It never gets pointed out. Connors is in and bowling. Davis is on driving, but just checking the shot. It was quite straight and a comfortable stop at mid on for Lackmel. I may be wrong, but Connors is just starting to look a fraction tired. Yes. He, but he's striving for this five for... Uh, and Billy wants to try and give him the opportunity, yeah, doesn't absolutely. he? But at the same time, be mindful that uh, he does have to bowl quite a bit this season. This is his 21st, this 21st over. In he comes and bowls and driven hard down into the ground by his former, I was going to say former Derbyshire teammate, but as you're saying, possibly didn't play on the same they side. No, but they I'm sure they look across each other in the next, next door. or whatever. Yeah. No, not, not teammate. Debbie McCardle says, greetings from Riga. He isn't Ooh, normally Latvia. in Riga. He says, where the sun has been splitting the stones all week, this isn't natural. Well, probably isn't. Connors is in. Bouncer goes for the hook, misses it. Hooks well underneath the ball as it bounces through to guests behind the stumps. And that's the end of Connors' 21st over. And I suspect, unless... He's very insistent and Godelman is very accommodating his spell. But he too now has bowled over 100 overs in the championship this season in five innings. So he's, he's bowled 102 overs, but he's got 14 wickets, which is pretty decent. I see a change of bowling. Lackmull's four over spell has, uh, has come to an end. Yeah, Sam Connor's 14 wickets at 23. It's not bad. 
Right, that's very good indeed. 188 for nine then. Billy Godwin having a chat with Nick Potts, who's going to replace Saranga Lakmal. That little spell, as I say, four overs in total. Four overs, one maiden, one for 12. That was Sam Connor's fifth over of the current spell, one for 15. So the two bowlers have done okay. He, he really, perhaps, ought to have had a wicket in that last over, that Davis shot over the slips. Here is Potts in to bowl to Barnes, who edges this one down to third man. Gets a single. He's on to 20. Was it, is it fair to call that an opportunity, the Davis edge? I thought it went over the slips and one of them I, had ducked. I, I, <laughs> I think it was just wide of Madsen. Was it? Um, OK. But right. certainly was in the air when it flew past him. Somebody's ranked every county championship lineup graphic. Um, right. It's gone to that trouble. And Worcestershire's is first, with Jack Leach featuring. Where, where do the rest of us come? Glamorgan, two. 189 for nine, and goes Potts bowling to Davis, who guides this one. That's an excellent stop by Wayne Madsen at slip. He sort of edged it into the ground, and Madsen moved to his right to stop it. Derbyshire comes in at ninth, you'll be pleased to know. And it says, Derbyshire have gone for a baby's first PowerPoint theme for this one. <laughs> OK. I'm not entirely sure I understand the, uh, the concept, but here's, here's Potts. It's very witty tech talk. Is it? This next one is dug out by uh, Davis and out into the offside, which is why I don't understand it. Then. A homage to the classic Australian TV graphics of the 80s and 90s. 90s. Leicestershire comes in at 10. It says, is it fair to say this is just oh, very Leicestershire? Graphics. It's just mm. the graphics that they're... Uh, oh, OK. Love the fox. Ticks most of the required boxes. Just don't see any th the need to make everything so tiny. No, that fox is definitely running. Here is... Pots in again from the pavilion end and it's pushed out into the offside by Davis. Don't drop your phone. That would be my advice. Yeah, I can get it. Yeah. Whoa. Oh, blimey, how could you reach down? I couldn't have done that. Good effort. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Felt a bit sore in the morning. Got swimming tonight as well. Have you? Mm -hmm. You don't sound very pleased about it. No. <laughs> it's hard work. Yeah. It makes us do all sorts of horrid, fast things trying to do fast things. I can't find something cold to drink. Here comes Potts again. Balls edged and just short of Wayne Madsen and Slip. He, he threw everything at that, Davis, in fairness to him. Got an edge and it hit the deck very quickly indeed. They've had the ball changed. They had it changed while I was next door, didn't they? 72 overs, yeah. yeah. So uh, I've had a, a ball change. Although with nine wickets down, I'm not sure it's going to have an enormous effect. 11 away from the bonus point still. Leicester shit. The first and potentially only. This next one is played off the back foot into the leg side. Somebody looked eager for a run there. There wasn't one. Shad Masood does the fielding. It's the end of the pot's over. Just one run from it. Barnes has 20. Davis has 7. 189 for 9 now with 22 overs left today. A chat, Barnes and uh, Davis in the middle. Durham on the brink of being dismissed by Nottinghamshire, who uh, remain, etc. In the wilderness of the second division, uh, 223 for nine, Durham. Worcestershire, 277 for four. Middlesex, 94 for four in reply to Glamorgan's 122, trailing by 28. A few wickets in today, perhaps mm. been redressed the balance. In goes Connors, and uh, up on his toes is Barnes, chopping him away through the offside, cutting him away for four. Good shot. It was a effort. You had a grunt from Sam Connors, but he was misdirected and a little bit short outside off stump, and the width was there, and uh, Barnes did get right on top of it and crunched it away quite nicely into the shadow of the trees in front of the Upton Steel stand over there. So, seven more for a batting bonus point. There's Connors 
is in and bowls down the leg side this time. Tried to clip it on its way. I think it was just pad. It's going pretty slowly and guessed. Actually, running back gets there before um, Masood running up from long leg. Did he signal leg by or did he get an inside edge onto the pad then? I don't think he did. No, signal, it, did no he? but it, there wasn't. The, no run has been added to Barnes's score, I don't think. I don't think. No, it hasn't. Must have, must have signaled leg by then. 194 for nine. Will Davis back on strike. Connor's steaming a bit as he searches for this fifth wicket. Is in and bowls. Davis is solidly forward. Very annoying if you're at the bowler and a number 11 does that. Hits it in the middle of the bat in a solid forward defensive with the bat next to the pad and all very correct. Not just me who's being optimistic at Derbyshire this year. I'm delighted to say. There's an email from Ian Crooks. Connors is in and bowls onto the leg stump, clipped neatly by Davis down to Masood at long leg, and he takes one. The comfort which, with which these two are playing does not bode well for. Leicestershire, you wouldn't have thought. No. I, I, yes, I accept it's a very old now and soft ball. But perhaps the pitch under the sun is just, if there was anything in it, which I don't think it's... Flattened out even more. But yeah, but it, you wonder. The Bowlers are tired. Connors is in. Bowls. Barnes cuts him away for four. Steers him very stylishly, actually, away for four. Eddie Barnes there. Didn't try and overhit it. His second, feet well. The second part of this email won't make sense now. Um, he, he played around the golf today and was listening to us. Great to hit Derbyshire on top of the game where Leicestershire got off to a decent start. They could have got away from them very quickly. Do you think we're seeing the dawn of a new Derbyshire side? More in the sense of attitude than ability, perhaps, he asks. I think Masood is, of course, a brilliant signing. But there seemed to be a bit more steel with bat and ball this season. It's great to see after so many years. Connors is in. Barnes is defending on the off stump out into the offside, and there is no run. One nine nine for nine at the end of the over. This is the bit that doesn't really make any sense. So many years of being rolled over cheaply, and then having the bowlers crashed to all parts. That I was just going to been better if I had read that before. Uh, poor old Sam Connors was crashed to the boundary by Ed Barnes, but. Uh, 199 for nine. Now, thanks for getting in touch, Ian. Always good to hear from uh, everybody who wants to get in touch. I'm just delighted that anybody does, really. Davis will be on strike. He's just taking a fresh guard. It's going to be Nick Potts to continue, though. This is 13th over, one for 23. So, again, uh, nice and economical from Nick Potts. Just the one wicket, though. Chance here to pick up a second, possibly, as Davis, the number 11 batsman. Waits and Potts bowls turn into the leg side. And that is the 200, which is greeted with slight, slightly yeah, more, ironic. slightly as well potentially, but slightly more enthusiasm than the uh, previous landmarks. 200 up for Leicestershire, their first bonus point of the match. 201 for nine. I can declare now. Wicket falls in this over. Derbyshire would have 18. So around about an hour and 10 minutes. This next delivery is... Oh, he plays at that one, does uh, Davis. That misses. Tries to cut it too close to his body to cut. As a result, it flies through to Brooke Guest behind the stumps. This is now the second highest partnership of the innings. 27. Yeah. being the uh, Mulder and Evans 69 for the fifth wicket yep. 201 for nine goes pots and balls it's pushed out into the offside you're right though it does look a lot simpler batting at the moment doesn't it an awful lot simpler not much has gone past the edge not many false shots at the moment which will be telling the Derbyshire batsmen that as long as they don't do anything silly, there's a few runs in it for them. Mm. But the Godman talking to me yesterday about batting at the other end to Shan Masood and how much you can learn from the shots that he plays and the calmness with which he bats. And goes, 
pots and uh, put everything into that when it's turned around the corner off a glove, I fancy, by uh, Will Davis. And he does indeed pick up another single. He moves on to 11. 202 for 9. It's getting slightly irritating now, this 10th wicket partnership from a Derbyshire perspective. Learn everything they know about batting at Derbyshire, of course, these two. So it's not surprising that they're showing grit and determination. Although they were at the club when there was precious little of either. In goes Potts again. and That's a defensive push into the offside by Barnes. Picked up by Lear's deploy. Well, I suppose they might have to take the new ball after all if they, if they want to. Derbyshire. Yeah. Still four overs four away, four overs, overs and, and one delivery. But uh, it's not something that was really in our calculations 20 minutes or so ago. Potts, final ball of his elbow, runs away from us. Bowls, two bars, short ball. It's out towards the boundary. I think it might have gone all the way, you know. It has. It's a six to Ed Barnes down towards deep backward square leg. He got hold of that all right. Neither of the fielders out there on the boundary moved a muscle. And the ball sails into the seats for six. 208 for nine at the end of the over. Barnes 34, Davis 11. I think they ought to bring a spinner on here. Yes. Because the leggy tailenders do find it hard to here comes the helmet resist, for, uh, don't they? Brooke Guest and here's the leggy. There you go. All about reading the game, Rich. Magnificent. Years and years of experience. <laughs> Yeah, almost by osmosis, you can't help picking up the odd idea. I find that if I say enough over the course of a day, I'm right, usually once, <laughs> perhaps twice occasionally. Like like a clock. Yeah. 208 for nine. So, well, Barnes, 34, is now a third highest scorer and approaching a, a 39 of... Mulder, but it, it is a quite hard to pick it up from down there. And not, I'm, I'm pretty sure neither long leg, not that they would have been able to get anywhere near it, or, or deep square saw it, or could pick it up, looking out of the, the sun behind them, looking towards the east. McKinnon then. 20 runs off the last two overs. Is in with a short leg and a slip. Drops horribly. So and he's bowled uh, wide down the leg side. It's going to run away for four byes, which seems very harsh on Brooke Guest. But he speared it down, foot and a half, two feet down the leg side. Davis went across, but no chance of hooking it, uh, pulling it away. And uh, Guest couldn't get across. And it runs down for four byes. But just, just slightly... This will be more than irritating for Derbyshire, yeah, uh, I yeah, suspect well. now. 174 for nine now, 212 for nine. They're still very much on top. It's still been a very good day, but they don't want it to spoil it. In goes McKeon and Bowles outside off stump. Leaves Davis. He's got a googly, won't want to believe in too many unless he's reading it out of the hand. and blows on his hand four times before coming in and bowling. Davis smacks it past him off the ground, out towards long off and takes one. Moves on to 12, 213 for nine. No, that scoreboard. Yeah, yeah, there we go. I thought the scoreboard had cracked on already. See what Barnes can make of the leggy. In he goes and bowls. Barnes goes back and rather shovels it. Back down the pitch to Matty McKiernan. Picked up one wicket in his over before lunch. Lovely delivery that just bounced and went past the edge of Louis Kimber's back. Clipped off stump in the bales. Barnes pushing it out towards mid on. The, the, ooh, there's a, a collision between McKiernan and Davis. They pick each other up. Davis still interested in one. There's all sorts of uh, consoling pats and high hand slaps and it all goes down as a dot but I thought for a minute that Davis was quite slow picking himself up but he's the one with pads on he's okay and a bat and a helmet McKinnon made sure that 
He was okay and is in again to Barnes who goes back. That might have been the googling. A bit hard to tell from behind because he went back and had to sort of come down on it quite quickly. On off stump, have to check the replay. Well, didn't End have of the one over. In January. <laughs> He's got one now. 213 for nine, so 39 at the stand now. This is excellent winter work from Matty McKinnon. Get himself a the ball that goes the other way. He's the go-to leg spinner following the departure of uh, Matt Critchley, of course. England star of the future, Matt Critchley. He's playing red ball, is he, for... Is he? he got a century on debut and picked yeah. up four wickets, yeah, because uh, Harmer wasn't playing. He didn't bowl last time because Harmer was playing. Potts is in and bowls. That one is pushed up to mid on. And Lackmall does the fielding. And there's no room. Yeah, so he's uh, oh, he's definitely playing red ball. He's a very good cricketer. Durham have been dismissed for 230, but Chester the Street, so Nottingham will be batting. Nottingham Shirt will be batting fairly soon. Who's playing in that? Broad playing in that one? Is he? Um, I think. So they, I, think they got a I do think so. I got a very cryptic message off my my lad earlier. I'll have a double check. So in comes Potts again and balls. That one is going past. Oh. He's taken the edge and Davis has gone for twelve. And uh, Derbyshire do have the tenth and final wicket. Two hundred and thirteen all out. Uh, Leicestershire. Davis caught behind for 12 of 25 deliveries. The night bats when Ed Barnes well batted him. He made 34 to say all out for 213 and that having been uh, having lost the toss Derbyshire and Leicestershire having decided about first is a very good result for the visitors. It is, no question about it. So that last wicket stand will have irritated of 39 but um, certainly is not enough to spoil Derbyshire's day. Could spoil it if they're 30 for 3 at the close or something yes, but yeah, um, absolutely. well and only then but by the end of today given that 16 overs remain so what will it be 14 have they taken off the 2 yet I don't know but uh, could have 14 yes, have. could They've be 16 they have so 16 yeah. overs so an hour's cricket and we will know a lot more about um, the pitch and from how the Derbyshire openers play it upon it. But three wickets, four wickets then for Sam Connors. Didn't quite manage his fifer, but he was the pick, I think. Oh, no question. Yeah, no question about it at all. Um, no, Nottinghamshire didn't have uh, Stuart Broad, Lynn Fletcher, James Pattinson, Dane Patterson, Linda James, and Liam Patterson White have got a five for five for 54. A lot of Pattersons playing in that match then, one way or the other. Patterson, Patterson, yes. Patterson, Patterson White. Remarkable, uh, yeah. But Leicester will feel they are, what, at least 100 under par. Uh, I think so. I, I, I would it feels think. like that. Yeah, it feels like that, doesn't it? You, you'd be looking at, if you can get 300, it's a pretty decent uh, It's a decent start. You want 350 to 400 if you bat first, really, mm -hmm. once you've decided to bat first. So, uh, yeah. Derbyshire will be uh, very, very pleased indeed, I would suggest. Let's have a look at the final bowling uh, figures then. They were, he says, clicking away. We got them. Yeah. Excellent. Sam Connors, 22 overs, 5 maidens, 4 for 62. Economy rate of 2.81. Saranga Lakmal, 21 overs, 5 maidens, 2 for 52. Anuj Dahl, 14 overs, 4 maidens, 1 for 28. Nick Potts, 13.2 overs, 5 maidens, 2 for 32. Matty McKinnon, 5 overs, no maidens, 1 for 14. And we just saw 2 overs from the off spinner, Alex Thompson, for 11. Yeah, unusual to see the, the leg spinner ball more than the off spinner, but I suppose he's more of an attacking option first innings, isn't he, than the, the off spinner may well, who knows, come into play. Later on in this match, whenever Derbyshire bowl again, Sunday afternoon, something like that, <laughs> when they've eventually declared. Uh, but yeah, no, it's... Uh, they, will be, they will be delighted. So 16 overs 
to face Derbyshire. And uh, I don't think we'll see sparkling batting between now and the close. Although Saranga, uh, 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 Sean Masood is a is a pretty special batsman to watch. I think it'll be about being there first thing tomorrow morning and hoping that the weather's similar to today. They've got the heavy roller trundling up and down the uh, the pitch at the moment to just uh, Interesting. flatten it down if there was any uh, any movement. So that that will take four or five overs to wear off, you'd have thought, before we see the true nature of this uh, Grace Road pitch. Well played to Connors and Lackmal. Well played to Nick Potts, two for 32. So he's now got six wickets this season, which is uh, which is great for him in his first season of uh, county cricket. Nick Potts, he's bowled quite nice. It was a little underused, I thought, in the game against uh, Sussex in the second innings, especially. So Matty McKinnon, with that one wicket today, he's got an average of 14, but we can discount him. But Sam Connors, 14 wickets at 24. Potts has begun his career with six wickets at 27. And Lackmal's figures are looking slightly better, but he still needs a few wickets. He's now got four at 73. I don't think Alex Dahl's been doing any favours by those figures either. His average is 55, five wickets at 55, which seems a little harsh to me. Updates uh, coming up. Uh, do you have one at half past? Yes. Yeah. Uh, yeah. For both of us, we'll have a, a quick two minutes to grab a cup of tea. I suggest you do the same because we'll be back with you eft soons. All right, speedily.
So another heavy roller being driven off by Leicestershire head groundsman Andy Ward. Pitch has now been remarked. Umpires Bainton and Pratt are back out there. Leicestershire. Follow them. And the two Derbyshire opening batsmen. Sean Masood and Billy Goggleman follow them. Masood, well, what a start to the season he has made. 392 runs with a high score of 239. He's only played three innings. And he's averaging 130. Slightly less spectacular for Billy Goggleman. 73 runs from his three innings at 24. Hasn't really been needed, but are we keen to uh, get his season up and running, so to speak? His best uh, score, 38. Bjorn Hendricks is going to open the bowling for Leicester. Left arm over to the left-handed Sean Masood. Leicester would dearly love to get Masood early. Three slips. Hasn't got a short leg in. He has got a long leg, very wide, and a third man, Hendricks, is going to go up the slope from the pavilion end. In past umpire Bainton and Bowles. Masood is tucked up a little bit, but he plays it well enough. Takes his bottom hand off the bat as he just pushes it around the corner. Helps it on its way down to long leg where Ed Barnes is the fielder. So, Masood up and running already. One from one. Godelman, of course, also a left-hander, so... No changes to the field required in terms of left right combination. Will it be a different field for Godelman? No, essentially the same, well it is the same field, precisely the same field. Three slips standing very much in an echelon as Hendricks is in. Oh my goodness, that almost goes on to the stumps. Hendricks cannot believe it, nor can the slips. Played it down into his pads and it trickled past leg stump ended up behind the stumps and somehow Godelman uh, survives well is that the is that the lucky break he, he needs because that was so so close to dribbling onto the stumps didn't Godelman survives Hendricks is in bounces in and bowls, and Godelman is hurried, but defends it on the back foot back to Hendricks. Well, the fact that Derbyshire are batting probably tells you all you need to know. They bowled Leicestershire out in their first innings, Leicestershire having won the toss and chosen to bat for 213. And that uh, was largely courtesy of a solid last wicket stand for th of 39 between Will Davis and Ed Barnes. Barnes, who finished 34 not out. They desperately need to make some early breakthroughs. Leicester Buren Hendricks almost bowled Billy Godelman very first ball. The South African is bowling very quickly. Thumps into the pads of Godelman there. We will be able to judge after the next 15 overs or so whether there is anything in the pitch for the bowlers or whether Leicestershire batted poorly and Derbyshire bowled very well. They did bowl very well, but there was a little bit there in terms of movement through the air and the Foxes have to exploit that. They have to stay in the game and uh, keep this free-scoring Derbyshire side uh, within bounds. At the moment, Derbyshire, in reply to Leicestershire's 213, are one without loss. Hendricks is bending his back and bowling pretty quickly at the moment. He's certainly hurrying Godelman. In he goes and bowls outside off stump and it bounces high through two swindles. Godelman lets it go through and there's no run. It's as quick as anything I've seen so far this season. Sharp, isn't it? When he bends his back, he yeah, is. He is sharp. Yeah, he is. Blimey. Which makes you kind of think, it should really be, should he be going up the slope? But he's very strong and very fit. And he, and he gets it through in the late 80s, that's for sure, when it's going well. 
These first overs are usually pretty nippy. In he goes and bowls. Cottleman plays it nicely though. Turns him off his legs down to long leg and takes one end of the over. The pace does vary with Hendricks quite a lot though, but when it comes out well, yeah, it is sharp. Two without loss after the first over. It just uh, takes away my summer pastime for the moment, watching Sean Massoud bat. I've thoroughly enjoyed it. Derek Allen's tuned in for the last 15 overs or so from up in the northeast. His daughter Ellie is uh, the walking to the net. Three hour walk, he says. That's quite a long way in Almuth. I think Bunty was in Olmouth last week with the, with the dogs. Yeah, it's nice up there, isn't the it? The beaches. Derek keeps in touch through the winter as well, which is uh, very good of him. So Billy Goldman's on strike. It's going to be uh, Will Davis, who we will have faced any number of times in the Nets. He was Davis's captain earlier on in Davis's career. I'm sure Davis would love the scalp of his former skipper. He's in now from the Bennett end and balls to Goldman and leaves alone outside the Ostom. In a manner that only Billy Godman can. He flies, absolutely flies through uh, to the wicket keeper, Harry Swindles. I've got myself in the right old mess here with wires. Which happens by the end of the day, doesn't it? You sort of knit yourself into a corner. <laughs> yourself into a corner. And then you trip over one and everything is oh, pulled the out. the whole lot goes. <laughs> yeah, the whole lot goes. I dare drop this this laptop. It's worth a fortune. It's not mine. Davis in again. Balls to Goldman, who again leaves outside the Ostom. Pitching just about on line, perhaps, with the Ostom, and then moving away. So Goldman very comfortably raising his bat out of the way. So Masood comes down for a little look at the pitch. Gives it a Tab. I'm, I'm looking forward to, to the contrast in styles. There is one. I suspect there might be. <laughs> There's definitely a contrast in styles. Well, Billy Godelman has a mountain of runs behind him. Pushes this one into the offside. Lots of noise out there from the, the Leicestershire fielders as there often is at the start of an innings. It's, uh, it's the thing these days. Vian Mulder well, he has a very good pair of hands. He's at uh, mid-wicket. Leicestershire slip cordon is undisturbed. Hassan has had at first. Colin Ackerman, a good, what, three feet in front of him? Yeah. Long, long way. way in front of both second and third slip are a long way in front, aren't they? Third is uh, Louis Kimber. And Kimber will be lucky if he sees the ball if it comes to him and he's standing so close. He might even need a helmet. This next delivery from Davis goes through to the keeper as Godwin lifts his bat out of the way and allows it to pass. Yes, I hadn't noticed them before, but they are remarkably close. They weren't quite as close for Hendrix. No, no, the other no, end. no. That really stand, would fly through. Stand back here, thank you. <sighs> Can't say I blame them. The three slips and the gully, or backward point. Is there a third man? There is no third man. There's yeah. a long leg. Davis is in again and Godwin pushes this into the onside. This time it goes up to mid on. There's no run, so they've got a, a man, at, man at cover, a mid off, a mid on, and a mid wicket. As they uh, look to attack, I think they have to attack really, unless they should, given that they were dismissed for 213. Darbush will be looking to uh, post another decent score. Something they really struggled to do last season, but not so much this season. So far, Godelman waits and Davis bowls him, strikes him on the pad, inside edge. I fancy the way that the appeal stopped very suddenly. And it's the end of the Davis over. A maiden. Masood has one, Godelman has one, Derbyshire are two without loss in reply to uh, Leicestershire's 213. They're batting a long way out of his creases. Mr. Goodman. Possibly pitched outside leg as well. But apart from that. Hendricks to Masood. Then just the one ball. Masood faced uh, 
in the first over, which he managed to work down to long leg. Hendricks in and bowls and is met with a very solid defensive bat from Sean Massoud. Back down the pitch into trickles on the onside, but kind of everything was respectfully right about that defensive shot. Not a big stride, nor would you expect there to be. You don't plunge forward to Hendricks, I wouldn't think. <laughs> no. You're very brave no. or very foolish. Certainly not in his early overs, anyway. In he goes and bowls and back foot, defensive shot. Just turn of the wrist, pushing it out towards mid on. You heard the no, no, no. Because it had a bit of ground to make up to Parkinson, but Davis was running across from mid wicket. Didn't get there, but he might have done so. It didn't take the risk. I don't think they'll be taking too many risks in the uh, 13 hours and four balls that remain this evening. You would hope not. No Chris Wright for Leicestershire. Picked up a, a, a little groin strain against Durham. In goes uh, Hendricks. A little bit of bounce, extra bounce. And Masood leaning forward. Managed to just about get on top of it. Steer it out to George Rhodes at backward point. Volley of noise from the wicket keeper and slips. The good thing is, I'm sure that Shan Masood is used to much, much worse, and also with crowds of uh, yeah. several tens of thousands. Hendricks kicking up his heels in and bowls, and outside off stump left by Masood very calmly. Yeah, it's not sort of um, sledging noise, it's not aimed at no, the batsman, no, it's no. Event, just encouragement really um, as, as Paul Nixon says a bit of theatre he says it never does too much harm and if it's sort of in the right way no no it mm. doesn't if it's not if it's not sort of in the batsman's face as, as seems to have happened at Lord's then it's fine Hendricks is in Masood is forward pushing in front of point but without any great force and watches and waits as Rhodes gets across to his left where he's on a, a wicket that it's the sort of one of the practice wickets really, but it's been repaired now and they, they've been reseeded. It's come up beautifully actually. Emerald green reseeded with some splendid seed. Must get some of that for, <laughs> for your lush back garden. We got one. Not here. No. 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 Me neither. Hendrix in. Bowls. Masood looking to get in position to back foot, sort of cut it, drive it away. But they just have come on to him a little bit more quickly than he expected. Plays it hard down into the ground and there is no run. But it's probably fair to say that Sean Masood played Buren Hendricks with a degree or two more comfort than Billy Godelman. But Billy often in his early, he never looks comfort comfortable against anybody, really. No, no, that but is true. But that is true. It obviously is. Yeah, but the Godelman just the uh, 9,600 exactly. first-class yeah. runs at, uh, at 32, which is a little lower than he, he would like. I score it's not too bad, though, two, is it? 227. No, absolutely not. I'd take it. Shan Masood. Often eight, made in adversity eight, as well. Yeah, in a, in a very average side. He leaves this one alone. First ball of a new Will Davis over from the Bennett end. Masood, 8... eight 1,336 first class runs. Fewer games than Billy Godelman's in his 176th first class match, which is uh, some going. Good longevity. Doesn't miss many. Hasn't missed many over the last six seasons, certainly. Waits now for Davis to bowl to him and he just. His initial movement is back and then he pushes forward out into the offside. It's fielded there by Sam Evans. And there's no room. Beautiful evening sunshine now. Bathing Grace Road. One or two wispy clouds up above. Just heard the weather forecast. Cold tonight by the sound of it. Three or four degrees. So quite chilly. I swapped duvets last night as well. Thinking, oh, that's it now for the 
winter I, I one. I slept on top of the bed one. last night, mm -hmm. so warm. I can't get hotel room temperatures right. Godalman defends this next delivery pack to Davis. Not the fact that I basically fell asleep listening to the radio anyway, but I just thought I'm comfortable enough here. I have to put a blanket back on. Mm. Certainly, not, certainly not putting the heating on, are you? No. No, indeed. Little current prices. I've got one of those smart meters a few months ago. I'm going to put it in the bin it's fairly soon. Davis bowls to Godleman, who fiddles this one out into the offside. There's no rub. Can you do that? Can you disconnect it, or is it not to have to be? Well, it's only a little thing that tells you how much you're spending. Yeah. yeah. But is it not sort of wired into the system? You can no, no, you it's can just freestanding. It yeah, oh, yeah, okay. yeah. It's a horrible thing. You get come downstairs first thing in the morning, you've already spent a quid <laughs> when you're asleep. I mean, what's going on there? <laughs> That's all the charges, I think. Team without lost Derbyshire in the fourth over of their reply to Leicestershire's 213. Davis from the Bennett end bowls to Godleman, who is a little bit hurried by that one, takes his bottom hand off the bat. The ball trickles out into the offside. Lots of excitement out there amongst the Leicestershire fielders. Shadows lengthening. The floodlight on the far right hand corner near the big scoreboard is uh, almost, the shadow is almost across the field now. And it's some field to get across here at Grace Road. As Davis is next, Hillary's turned into the leg side a little uppishly. It wasn't too far away from the man at midwick, and I don't think it's going to get all the way to the boundary either. It's just been hauled in there. Well played, that man. It was. Uh, Beyond Mulder, who dragged the ball in. The batsman did get through for three runs, which means that Billy Godelman has pinched the strike. He's got four. Sean Massoud has one. Darbyshire for five without loss after four overs. But it was in the air just for, a, just for a moment. It was probably three or four yards to the left of Mulder. But uh, Davis will have been cheered by that, I'm sure. Parkinson polishing the ball furiously on the front of his Leicestershire top now on the back of his trousers. Hendricks from the pavilion end into Godelman, who again looks hurried but plays it off the back foot comfortably enough, keeps it down, guides it away through the vacant gully area down to third man. It's interesting because. Um, Mulder is down there and he's sort of although he got he picked it up as it rolled along the ground I think he's saying I'm struggling to actually see it or yeah. pick it up and, and it isn't great from down there we saw earlier when Barnes sort of hooked a six that neither the Derbyshire they fielders didn't move, did they? saw it them really so it's not always the easiest ground on which to pick up a ball Masood back on strike Godelman on to five Hendricks is in bowls. He's he's getting forward there, solidly pushing the delivery out to Sam Evans, who's a wide mid off. Still 11.4 overs to go today. We're coming up to well, we're past 10 to, so we'll be fairly close to half past before we are done for the day. We will get every over, that is for sure. Bright sunshine flooding the ground as Hendricks is in looking for the Yorker. Nicely dug out by Masood. Turns it wide of Parkinson at mid on. Parkinson gets across the field, but one is taken. That the game that stopped uh, on the day that stopped at five past seven, was it three weeks ago now, stopped because the sun actually sank below the trees. Essentially, the light was, you know, yeah. but um, couldn't see a thing. As, as Dave Bradley told BBC Hereford and Worcester, the players stop because the sun has set. <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't far off. Hendricks is in and bowling outside off stump. Godelman leaves as only Godelman can. 
Oh, look, a sort of blur of hands and feet and bat and lifting over the line of the ball. Know who it was, wouldn't you? You would. Oh, yeah, you really would. So Middlesex is six down now, 110 for six against Glamorgan, who were bowled out for 122. They could be over in two days there if they're not careful. Didn't, wasn't the first game at Cardiff something similar? Didn't a load of wickets fall then? In goes Hendricks and bowls, hurries. Godelman with a full delivery, which he digs out. Pushes it back down the wick on the offside. Evans picks up, throws to Parkinson. Went wicketless in his first match here. Buren Hendricks picked up a couple at uh, Durham. Good court and bowl off his compatriot David Beddingham. When Beddingham had 180 odd, so a long time coming. Hendricks is in and pushed out into the offside by Godelman and immediately calls Masood through for a single, seeing that he pushed it into the gap in the covers between Evans and Rhodes. So good running, good calling, good responding. And Derby should move on to eight without loss after five overs. They have... Uh they're, ba they're batted pretty well together. They've run well together. That first game at Sophia Gardens was against Glamorgan against Durham. Ended up in a draw, I think, because of the weather. 234 and 224 for five. Glamorgan, 383 all out Durham. That's not too bad. But, uh, more wickets than we saw last week, certainly. Both wearing caps now. Look at this. This is, this is proper. You appear to be wearing yours in a slightly odd fashion as Will Davis pulls and it's driven into the offside by Billy Godelman. Masood was a little reluctant to come for the run, but Billy Godelman was very keen to get to the other end. And as a result, it is taken. Godelman moves on to 7 9 without loss. That's better. I think putting hats over headsets is, is slightly bizarre. <laughs> Look like one of the T-Fall men. You remember the T-Fall men? Were they T-Fall? With the pointy heads? Or was it Uzi? Can't remember. It was the appliance of science. This was in an advert. Oh, yeah, yes. Yeah, yeah. Television. <laughs> it was television. It's television, Granddad. <laughs> Nobody watches it anymore, do they, really? Davis is in balls to Masood, leaves it alone outside the off stump. That the makeup of Derbyshire's batting line will have changed a little bit. There were four of the top six were left-handers when Lewis Rees was in there, but as I understand it, uh, Matty McKinnon's going to bat at six, and he's definitely right-handed. So it'll be half and half until we get to uh, number six. The wind's starting to get up. They said that on the forecast that the wind would get up. Look at the players in the slips. Their clothing is being buffeted. Didn't notice that earlier on. Davis is in and Masood leaves alone outside the Austin. Goes through to the keeper. He's got the win, which would blow the ball back in towards Sean Masood from uh, the Bennett end. It's coming across from Manuel scoreboard away to our left hand side. Brian Mulder already warming up his bowling action at mid wicket before sticking his hands deep into his pockets again. Davis is ready at the top of his mark. Three slips in place. Balls to Masood, who defends this up to mid-off. I believe Ed Barnes does the fielding. There's no run. Nine. For no wicket. Still ten overs to go after this one. Darbish will be more than happy just to be non down by the close. Come back tomorrow, get themselves in. That'll be the plan, certainly. He scored a pretty decent lick as well, Sean Masood, in his time so far at Derbyshire. As uh, Davis fields the ball as Masood defends it back to him. Do you think the Leicestershire will, will try all their bowlers this evening just to try to get certainly the break? Certainly, they will try Barnes and Mulder. Yeah. Um, that, that's for sure. Uh, probably before too long either. Weather 
you might chuck the ball to Parkinson for the last over, or just to see is it possible? If, because if or it, if it himself can, with it being an off spinner to the left handers. If they can nick a couple out, that would be a, a massive boost to the home side, wouldn't it, really? It, it surely would. Davis is in again, but see who pushes it out into the off side. Ken. There is no run. It's the end of the over. Nine without loss. It was Evans once again who did the fielding. Godwin has seven. Masood has two. Ten overs to go. Looks like they're going to see uh, Buren Hendricks continue from the pavilion end for now. Still got the three slips, as you would expect. Nine off six. Scoreboard still just about under control as Hendricks staying over the wicket is in past umpire Bainton and Bowles outside of stump. The, the Godelman shuffle and lift of the bat over the line of the ball sees it bounce through to Harry Swindles who taps his gloves together above his head in approval. Still plenty of people in, in the ground. Quite a few have left for home as Hendricks is in. Bowles again, Godelman leaves outside of some little hop and a skip from him across his stumps and he wanders away to towards short leg and leans calmly on his bat. You talk about how hard the outfield was to walk and you can see how dry it is out there because there, is, there isn't a mark on the pitch really, is there? Either side, there's barely a mark on it from here. No, one of the, that's not the reason they got him, a left arm, a left arm seamer, but Colin Ackerman was thinking, well, a bit of, bit of rough outside the right-handers off stump. In goes Hendricks and Bowles. Gottleman hurried, but behind it, on the back foot, out into the offside. Top of the hour, final updates uh, time. Dave heads off next door. Been a pretty good start for Derbyshire to the game. And indeed to this innings, well, only nine up on the board, but no real alarms as yet for Masood and Godelman. Hendricks halfway through his fourth over, none for five at the moment. Pia Bainton puts out a right arm because Godelman is uh, not in position. He is now tapping his bat as Hendricks is in and Bowles, big stride outside off Stump as he lets that one go through. Bang, bang. This is Callum Parkinson. We saw that happen a couple of times in the Leicestershire innings, notably when Sam Evans was dismissed and three balls later Harry Swindles went leg before wicket. Hendricks is in, Godelman is forward pushing into the gap in the covers again Evans runs back into his right to field from that wide mid off extra cover position single taken by Godelman moves on to seven on to eight I beg your pardon Scoreboard fraction slow. Electronic there by its high standards. <laughs> Hendricks to finish his over is in to Masood, who is pulling and uh, out to Will Davis, who'd gone back at deep square. In front of square, actually. But Masood played that with some degree of comfort takes one and keeps the strike he moves on to three 11 without loss after seven nine overs remain and if Dub should get through them it's been an outstanding day for the visitors really dismissing Leicestershire for 213 having dismissed Leicestershire for 213 if Leicestershire can pick up a couple Feel it is reasonably balanced. 
Davis trying to pick up at least one. Three overs, none for four at the moment from the former Darvish man who goes in and bowls to Masood, who's guiding it wide of Rhodes, who dived to his le left. He got two hands to it and slowed it down, but he'll be disappointed he wasn't able to stop it entirely. It runs another 20 yards or so behind him. He picks himself up and... Uh, Goes in chase, returns the ball, but Masood picks up a couple, moves on to 5-13 without loss. Davis looks at the ball in his hand, transfers it from left to right, and then sort of bustles in and bowls on to middle and off, and middle, really. Masood is forward solidly on the offside. Update coming for BBC Radio Leicester now. Yeah, they've had the worst of it by and large as well. After winning the toss and choosing to bat first, they were bowled out the Foxes for 213. Only Sam Evans passing 50. He made 63. Vian Mulder made 39 on debut. He was pretty impressive, but otherwise with the exception, the honourable exception of Ed Barnes, who made 34, not out. Everybody else in pretty much single figures. They're trying to take a couple of quick Derbyshire wickets to balance the day up a little bit. So far, they haven't managed to do so. Billy Godelman has eight. Sean Massoud, the man very much in form, is five, not out. Derbyshire then, with eight and a half overs remaining in the day, replying to Leicestershire's 213, are 13 without loss. Davis comes in and Bowles does go past the outside edge of Masood's bat. First time, I think, that um, either batsman has been beaten. Arguably, you could say Godelman was with his first delivery, which came off the bat and went onto the pad and just trickled past his leg stump. But that was a genuine play and miss from Sean Masood. A rare thing. Mm, absolutely. Don't see that very often at all. By his standards, it wasn't a great shot looking at the, the replay. Did poke at it, rather, as Davis is in and bowls. And he's bat and pad close together. The ball's in the air a little bit as he pushes forward there. Bounces miles short, a long way short of Sam Evans at extra cover. But Davis just, just perhaps getting a little bit of movement now. He's been out three times, Shama said. He's been caught down the leg side. He's walked past a, a spinner and been stumped. And he's been out caught behind, trying to reverse sweep. So he could be, it's been said to have got himself out. Sort of <laughs> well, thing, really. that, that, that's the suggestion. <laughs> Davis is in to finish his over. Masood is uh, just dropping his wrists on it, deflecting a ball. He was looking to get forward. It wasn't there to get forward too. Managed to deflect it down towards backward point slash wide gully where Rhodes fielded. End of Davis's fourth over, none for six for him. Derbyshire 13 without loss have reduced Leicestershire's first innings lead to just 200 now. Psychological. <laughs> we'll see Pure and Hendricks continue from the, the pavilion end. Not 33 without loss after 10 overs up at Chester Le Street and replied to Durham's 230 all out. Leicestershire 311 for 5 at New Road. Middlesex now level, 122 for six with Glamorgan, so four wickets in hand to build a first innings lead. Derbyshire 13 without loss. Billy Godelman on strike as Hendricks bowls to him, and that's a full delivery. Billy Godelman meets at the ball. At the moment, it pitches, pushes it out into the offside. And there is no run earlier today. Four wickets for Sam Connors, two apiece for Saranga Lakmal and Nick Potts, one inch for Anuj Dahl and Matty McKinnon. Good bowling display from the Derbyshire boys. Now the batsman. One batsman l less or fewer. Well, uh, less probably. Uh, certainly one batsman light. With Lewis Reese not playing in this match. Hendricks is in and that one's outside the off stump and Godman. Leaves alone to go through to the wicket keeper. But it was interesting when, when Mickey Arthur was saying he's going to play McKinnon as a number six batsman because he doesn't want to move Anuj Dahl uh, and Alex Thompson from seven and eight.
because that is their role in the team. They are the number seven and the number eight batsman, and he thinks that that is important. But people know their roles. They're happy in their roles as well, and those two have certainly been happy with the bat so far this season. I think it's fair to say, as Hendricks bowls to Godelman, who rather hurries him, pushes it back towards the, the big South African. Halfway through his fifth over now, Hendricks. Not for seven. With the Derbyshire batsmen aren't looking to attack, but just letting him get into a bit of a rhythm here. Just depends how long Colin Ackerman wants him to wants him to run in. Still three slips in place. This next over is left alone by Godelman. I don't think I'd ever, ever wanted to have bowled to Billy Godman. I mean, he would have biffed me to all parts, clearly, given the, uh, the standard I was playing at. But he looks like he's giving you chop opportunities, but he isn't really. Yeah. He knows what he's doing out there. He's, he knows his game. Penultimate ball of the fifth Hendricks over then. Around the wicket, uh, over the wicket, he Ooh. comes. He's a left arm, and that's left and not claimed by uh, Swindles. Didn't get up, did no, it? No, it didn't. The odd one hasn't, though. No, from this end, yeah, sometimes it's way of it. But uh, the bowlers won't mind seeing that. Batsman, not so much. Billy Godman doesn't care, they're looking at him just leaning on his bat. He goes for a little walk, kicks a bit of debris away, and then leans on his bat again. Goes through his mind when he's batting. Sean Masood leaning on his bat at the non striker's end for the final ball of the Hendricks over. In he goes. That one is pushed out into the offside by Godwin. Fielded comfortably by George Rhodes, and it's the end of the over. A maiden, I believe. Hendricks has bowled at five overs, two maidens, naught for seven. Godwin has eight, Masood has five. Derbyshire 13 without loss. There are seven overs left this evening. And we're going to see. No, we're not going to see the first change because Will Davis is going to continue from the from the Bennett end. Mulder's starting to warm up. He's pulled a couple of looseness, so to speak, and touching his toes and stretching his sides. So I think we can. Definitely say we're going to see him fairly shortly. But for the time being, Davis continues from the Bennett end. In he comes, bowls to Masood, who is on the back foot in defence. The ball perhaps shapes back into him a fraction. Shire, at least like Derbyshire did before them, keeping it tight. Barnes, too, has just bowled a, a loosener or two, so certainly they both expect to be on. Davis is in. Masu batting a long way out of his crease as he defended that one. His weight was, wasn't particularly forward, but he'd, he'd shuffled forward. Lots of applause for Davo, in inverted commas, from his teammates. As that is almost behind Ackerman. Look, you know, look, looking at it. It's weird, isn't it? He'd almost be surprised if it sort of squeezed past Ackerman to Azad. In goes Davis and bowls onto leg stump this time. Masood turns his wrist on it, pushes it firmly into the onside, but straight to Vian Mulder. Sorted out there in the Mulder. Beginning perhaps to realise this scale of the, the job that's expected of him. A major contribution is required. Davis, elbows jutting out, runs in and bowls, played firmly back towards him by Masood. Davis picks it up in his follow-through and makes it so to hurl it at the stumps, but actually doesn't pick up the ball in his follow-through, but went through 
with the throwing action anyway. Masood was already hopping back smartly into his crease. Theatre, theatre. Uh, you want to see a bit of aggression from your fast Absolutely. bowlers, don't you? Of course you do. Absolutely. Or even your medium bowlers. <laughs> Davis is in and bowling. Stays perhaps a touch low as Masuda just pushes it back down the pitch towards Davis, who uses his left hand to try and flick the ball back towards the stumps. Not only did he miss Godelman, far, far too old a hand, I suspect, to be caught in that way. Runs have dried up a bit, though, for Darbys. You're not, they won't be too worried about that. Six overs remain, but looks like it's going to be 13 or off 10. As Davis is in and bowls. Masood's working it to mid-wicket. It won't be 13 off 10 because he's going to pick up at least two. Could be four. Parkinson's after it. Can't get there. It is lightning, this outfield at the that. moment. And uh, once it beats the infield, it's got every chance of going all the way. And that one did. So nice shot from Masood. Just turned his wrists on it and timed it nicely. Picks up four, moves on to nine. 17 without loss after 10. Six to go. We might be lucky at 22. It's going to make it tight to get into the programme at seven o'clock. That's between six and seven, Richard, isn't it? Get the interview and uh, get on the show. We, we do put the interviews out though now on on the sort of on a sort of podcast thing yes, with a link to yeah, it yeah, yes, so so people can will be able to hear it on the talking foxes podcast at some stage this evening do you subscribe. do it every day do you yeah you over from uh, hendrix well that was uh, remarkably played by billy Godwin, who basically went down virtually on his knees and swayed backwards out of the way of that one it was a sharp short delivery from hendrix we put some interviews out on a podcast at the end of a day's play, uh, end of the match, which we round up. And David Griffin comes on and gives us a his view and a bit of a statistical roundup of where we stand. But obviously, not every interview goes out because some of them are pretty much the following day specific. As Hendrix bowls and Godwin leaves alone, does he? Now there's big appeal and he's gone. He tried to leave it alone, but he couldn't get his bat out of the way in time. And Leicestershire have got the breakthrough. Billy Godelman goes for eight. It's 17 for one. He was trying not to play a shot, but it was just too quick for him. And Hendrix has the breakthrough. Yeah, not exactly out of nothing, but it was slightly unexpected. Godelman, though... He'd been hurried once or twice, seemed to be pretty much in control, but he was just a little delayed as he put, whether it maybe just climbed on him a bit or, or shaped back in to him a little bit, and caught the, let's have a look, see on, on the replay where it could have caught the glove or, or, or the bat face, but it certainly caught something and it went through at a fairly comfortable pace actually, which suggests it might have been glove to the wicket keeper. Harry Swindles made no mistake. His first wicket in front of his uh, home supporters for Buren Hendricks. Is that a Billy Goggleman? I think it was fairly important for Lastis to get something today, though, yes. wasn't it? Yeah, yeah. Before Absolutely. the close, just to keep themselves uh, in the game. Eight for Billy Godelman. 17 for one. Leicestershire's first wicket fell with a score on 18. 11 wickets in the day. I'm waiting for see if we see a, a, a replay of that one. It is high quality, this stream, isn't it? You've got to mm. you, with the various cameras and what have you. Broadcast the new batsman. Very much the number. Designated number three batsman hasn't really uh, got the runs he would have wanted so far this season, but we know he can bat. It's slightly, slightly strange that he's batting at three, but successive coaches have put him up there. And Hendricks is in, and that one is turned into the leg side, not too far away from the man at short leg, who's now appeared to try and put some pressure 
on the new batsman and almost, almost took a catch there, Sam Evans, under the lid. That would have been uh, a very good double for Hendricks as it is. Guests off the mark, 19 for one now. Trying to see how close it was to him. This will be as quick as anything that's brought guests. Mind you, he, he grew up, he grew up at the, in Western Australia. Played for Australia under 19s, despite being born in Manchester. Got a twang, bit of a twang, but next delivery is oh, what on earth is he pl trying to play there? He's trying to play a defensive shot, and again, I think it's it's bounced more than he was expecting. Probably a little bit sharper than you expected as well. Hendricks sensing a bit of an opportunity. Oh, I know what I can do. So I'm just talking to myself now. Why, why did I say that out loud? In comes Hendricks and Pauls that turned around the corner by uh, Brooke Guess. He's going to come back for two again and uh, already he's up to four. Good throw. Yeah, from the deep, wasn't it? From Mulder, right over the bales, which were removed. Guest was home, though. 21 for one with one ball left at this over and five to go after that. I might have to nip next door and do something clever in a, after this over. I'll, I will be back. I promise. No worries. I promise. When I say clever, I mean very average, but for me, exceptionally clever. <laughs> <laughs> I don't usually do anything that's clever, I've got to say. Next delivery beats Brooke Guest outside the Ostrom, keeps low, not taken cleanly by uh, Swindles as he was down, trying to gather it at his bootstraps. And that was another very impressive over from uh, Buren Hendricks. Are we going to see Vian Mulder now? Looks that way. South Africa international rounder who last bowled against Bangladesh in a test match is now turning his arm over in anger for the Foxes. He's going to be bowling from the Bennett end and he's going to be bowling to Shan Massoud. So high quality confrontation in prospect. Late in the day here at the Upton Steel County Ground, Grace Road in Leicester. For those watching on the stream, for those here in the ground, international quality confrontation. Bowler against batsman. Three slips behind Shan Massoud as in comes Vian Mulder and bowls on the money and uh, solidly pressing forward, leaning forward is Massoud to that one, which is on middle and off. Mulder with the walk back to his mark. I'll get used to it. It is slightly... Just odd like is the right word, but it? you can see why um, Pango Fox down in Melbourne was a bit concerned, but once he gets into his run, he looks very athletic. In he goes and bowls. Again, it's on the money. And again, Masood meets it with a solid defensive push back past the bowler out towards mid-off. There's no run. If they can pick up one more before the close, Leicestershire, they, they really will take a lot of heart from that. I think they'll be encouraged anyway, having picked up one. Oh, they would dearly love to have get Masood out, knowing that McKeon due to come in at six. In goes Mulder and bowls outside off stump, cut away nicely by Masood, elegantly in front of point. Might not do it, but there could be a four run here as Rhodes flicks it back. They're thinking about, yep, no, went a long way back down. I think they're probably might have been Masood sort of got halfway back down his fourth run. But Guest wasn't interested. He never he never moved for uh, having completed three. Possibly wisely. Probably, yeah. yeah. It wasn't a bad sort of relay throw work in the end. It would have been an, an unnecessary risk. 24 for one. Masood into double figures now. 
on to 12. Brooke Guest on, uh, on four will be facing Mulder for the first time, who will be looking to swing it away from the right-hander. Three slips still, relatively conventional field. Mulder is in and bowling, tucks up. Guest who tries to work it away into the leg side but then indicates with his right hand that there was movement back into him. From Vian Mulder, bearded, not, not excessively, if that makes any sort of sense. Vian Mulder, slightly <laughs> fair haired. You've got a problem with excessive beards, <laughs> is that what you're saying? Shame on you. Well, the turns and is in. And I guess staying on the back foot defends. Very straight ball. He's making the batsman play. I just remembered that that clever thing that I was going to do, I can't do because the thing that I need to do it with is in the back of the car, uh, which is 200 yards across there. And I'm never going to get there and back in time. So... Uh, Kick that one into the long grass. I'm going to try something else. Tomorrow. Well, p possibly it might not be needed tomorrow. It's needed very much tonight. But oh. uh, we'll, we'll cross that bridge. Mulder <laughs> is in very straight again, and guess on the back foot, working it out on the leg side, more or less straight to Evans at mid wicket. And there's no run. If it's urgent, pop and get it. No, no, no. I, it, no, it, no, it, no, I, I should be able to do it on Lucy Live. I should be able to do what I need to do on okay. Lucy Live. It's just that. Um, got a bit of a gap in the show apparently this evening so I'm, I'm required but I'll have to go down and do the interview to fill it so they said can you do the interview live well the only thing I've got is my uh, my other phone so I think I can do it but don't worry don't alternatively worry. if if we are done you could always use the oh no sorry yeah no it's got to be down next. there oh, right. yeah okay. that's the yeah uh, I could I could lob a I could lob a long wire down I suppose but I think I've worked out it would get Ed, ba Ed Barnes Yes. Oh, excellent. We're going to see Barnsley. Also known as the Scarecrow. Also, the coat hanger. I like the coat hanger, though. <laughs> I do. It's, it's brilliant. It. That's Parkinson came up with that one. He's reasonably round-shouldered. There's uh, Edward. Ed Barnes, but he's a, he's a top man, as we've been saying. Looks like he's letting his hair grow a bit. Right arm over, bowling to Shan Masood, who's on 12. 24 for one, four overs remaining, so we'll only get a couple of overs here, Will Barnes, and he's on his way in now, and that one is uh, pushed out into the offside by Shan Masood, and there's no run. His prediction for the future of cricket, Ed Barnes, yeah. and there's something in it. He says he thinks it's going to become more and more like baseball, but I suppose that's with the increasing dominance of white ball cricket in a way uh, you can kind of see what he's saying 150 162 games in the regular season and uh, playoffs at the end of it marvelous is that what base the baseball season yeah. is Barnes bowls clipped into the leg side nicely by Masood there's runs here for him they've run one they've run they'll come back for a second and they'll certainly Get a that third. Could, uh, if they went, they could. Yeah, no, if no, they no, really no. wanted to, they probably, probably could have uh, come back for three. Is that Louis Kimber? It's, uh, no, it's Evans, not, it's Sam Evans. Evans. I beg your pardon, yeah. it's Sam Evans. Because he's got the fielding pads on. And they do complete three runs. There's definitely one for the throw from, what, 80 yards? Oh, it's a long, long way. It 85? took him a long time to get there because he's got the fielding pads on. And then he's got to chuck it in pretty much the length of a. The home straight on a running track. <laughs> I mean, so a hundred. You reckon a hundred? It must be close. Be far off. I think it's close. They seldom bring it in for T20s either, which is very impressive. This next delivery from Barnes is defended by Brooke Guest back towards the bowler. There is no run. Twenty-seven for one now. Pursued on fifteen. Guest has four. Really getting the movement and no. swing that the Derbyshire took a, got. Well, This one is driven very pleasantly by Brooke Guest, but straight to the man at 
at mid on. It took. It takes a few overs, I think. It does. You yeah. know, to so have they got, have they had enough time yet? Yeah, possibly not. I mean, 12 overs in, the, almost 13 overs in. You'd expect it to start doing something around about now for for 10 or 20 overs before it goes soft and starts to do absolutely nothing again. I do think that is a problem in cricket. I, I, I don't know how they get around it, but there has to be some way of sort of getting parity between bat and ball. As Barnes is in again, that one strikes the pad of Brooke Guest. Stifled appeals. And uh, so stifled that I don't think the umpire even contemplated taking his hand from behind his back at Neil Bainton. And I'm not surprised that he didn't either. Barno. Excellent. He turns. <laughs> he's bowled from the pavilion end. It's the final ball of his first over. He's gone for just the three so far, and three is all he will go for as Brooke Guest pushes that one into the leg side. And there's no run. 27 for one then. Derbyshire Shamasud has 15. Brooke Guest has four. Man out. Billy Goldman for eight. Three overs to go. You would assume now that Parkinson won't bowl before the close. The changes having come when they came. Because Barnes is only going to get one more over, so just a couple for him and, and, and three all together for mm. Vian Mulder. So Seam is going to go the distance. Mulder is in and bowls. Again, very straight. Again, Masood. All care and attention as he pushes the delivery off. Middle and off up towards mid off. Barnes picks up. Throws the ball directly to his new teammate, Vian Mulder. Who turns his his fiance has come over with him. He's settled down. He's got a his house sorted out already. He is in and bowls outside off stump and good lead from Masood. A little bit of shape back in after the ball had gone past uh, the off stump there, but taken to his right by Harry Swindles behind the stumps. Mm, I think I can do it this way. Slightly nervous about it, but I'll give it a go. <laughs> All that in bowls again, straight again. Studiously leaning forward is Masood, pushing it back down the wicket to Vian Mulder. Eyes on the prize as far as Masood is concerned. He's just getting through to the close, really. Yeah. 15 off 35 for him. Quite reminiscent of his innings. At Lords, this one where he, uh, he got to his 50 off 100 balls and then started to uh, speed up after that. Well, the bowls, Masood is forward on off stump, playing it out towards Barnes at mid off. One of the things Paul Nixon said. Watching Mulder in the nets, he said he never wasted a ball, never wasted a ball, and and you can sort of see he's nagging away. He's making famous last words, but he's making the batsman play. It's all you can do. <laughs> in he goes and bowls. Fuller this time, not exactly dug out by Masood. He was in control, but puff of dust. Plays it out to Barnes at mid off. One ball left in the over. 13 left in the day's play. But Derbyshire will still be pretty pleased with. But they'll know. Well, they often say this, but I suspect tomorrow it is a crucial first hour because of the, the ball, really. In goes Mulder and Bowles. That one didn't, it just started to shape back in and he managed to play it well enough out into the offside so 
end of the over. Two overs for three runs from Fian Mulder. He gets a low five, is that the word, from Harry Swindles, the wicket keeper. Yeah. He walks off towards long leg. Two overs left, 27 for one. 15 Masood for two book guest. Who's going to be on strikes? Yeah, first of those. Two overs will be bowled by uh, Ed Barnes from the pavilion end. Already bowled one over for just three runs. Brook Guest waits, just flexes his knees as Barnes bowls to him and he leaves alone. Outside the off stump, ball flies through to the keeper. Stumps at Chesterler Street, Nottinghamshire 50 without loss in reply to Durham's 230. So they got themselves in a decent position. Yeah. Perhaps they are to get out of the wilderness of the second division <laughs> sooner rather than later. Hack their way out with a machete. <laughs> Middlesex have now moved on to 151 for six and lead Clamorgan by 29. Worcestershire 337 for five against Sussex at New Road as Barnes is in again and balls to a Brook Guest who pushes it pretty much back down the pitch. And there's no run the first division, Essex were dismissed for 168 at Edgebast and Warwickshire 76 for two at the close. Somerset 283 for six at the close against Surrey at the Oval. Still going at Old Trafford where Lancashire have started their first innings nine without loss, trailing Gloucestershire by 243. And at Wantage Road where Northamptonshire are 26 for two, trailing Yorkshire by 270. Barnes in and Guest pushes this out into the offside. And there is no rum. I, I think we go to Wantage Road once this season. It's a real shame. Well, up to a point. I like try, I like going there, but we go once in the T20. And this again, they always televise for absolutely no apparent reason. Northamptonshire versus Derbyshire. Thursday night, chuck it away. <laughs> uh, they'll be they'll be laughing on the other side of there subscriptions when uh, Derby should get going in the T20 I can tell you as Barnes bowls that's pulled into the leg side and that is racing towards the boundary there is a fielder coming round but he's not going to get there because as Richard has already said a couple of times it is lightning fast out there and uh, the ball gets all the way to the boundary very comfortably indeed and uh, it means that Guest moves on to eight Derbyshire on to 31 without loss. Made a bit of a mess of poor old Ed Barnes's figures as well. 0 for 7 now from 10 deliveries. Slight change in the field as well. There is a man on the mid wicket boundary now. Yeah, for the bad ball and the. I think at this, really stage cover the there. this stage of the evening, I think chasing the ball is a, is a little bit. Negative as Barnes bowls, and that's a better delivery, and it bounces straight into the ground. Brookcast has to be very careful as to where that one's going to go. It looked like he was going to try and hit it for a second time with his bat, which wouldn't have been a good idea. I guess Ackerman conscious of how few runs he has to play with, really, which yeah. is an issue. If, it, if they've got if it, 300 plus in the first innings, it probably wouldn't have been posting that fielder yet. But it's a sort of negative circle, isn't it? That mm. We're already down to two slips, which you would expect from the first change bowler, I suppose. Barnes in to complete his second over. It's driven down the ground and hits the stumps. So there's no run for Guest there. It means that Sean Masood will be on strike for the start of the final over of the day's play. He'll be on 15. Guest has eight. 31 for one. And it will be about 22 when we finish, which isn't too bad. May well help... Uh, Poor old Chris Cole's back in the studio. He's had somebody pull out. That's why he's uh, that's why he's keen to hear ah, from us. Okay. When I say us, you'd be more than welcome. <laughs> <laughs> but I wouldn't be the priority. I suspect. Oh, don't 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 sell yourself short. Vian <laughs> uh. Mulder then can he finish the day on a high for Leicestershire? He is in and bowls to Sean Masood. Again, a little bit of shape, I think, back into the left-hander who meets it, leaning in front of uh, his stumps. Full bat out into the offside. 
Evans picks up. No run. As he twiddles the bat in his hand. He's, uh, he's now well over 400 runs for the season. <laughs> Needed eight to get past 400. 15 not out. In goes Mulder, bowls, and he's going to pick up more runs there as he works him off his legs, down towards wide long leg, and it's gone all the way. Thought that uh, the fielder had, had got there, Hendricks, and did sort of make an effort. <laughs> say make an effort. He, he ran hard by his standards and fell, but although he looked to have got his hands to the ball, it got through them. Masood picks up four, moves on to 19, 35, 4 1. up to see Mulder coming in and bowling slightly short outside off stump cut away Rhodes is the fielder running from back deep backward point out towards deep point Masood picks up one moves on to 20 and uh, that may be his work done for the day just three balls left I could be hoping it is one I, I suspect so he might be overly keen on a we know she's just got another the same single broadcast quick one team got three balls see him out the two touch gloves inevitably I guess takes a strike as Mulder is in and bowling guess is very careful straight delivery pushed back past the bowler down the pitch on the on side Barnes steps across from mid on and feels sound of the wind in the leaves which we weren't getting obviously in the first game because there weren't any leaves really no. Now very audible in the effects, Mike. Very pleasant as well, mm -hmm. I hope, if you're listening. Let's really put it there. <laughs> Two balls to go. Mulder in and bowls. Guest again is gets a very straight delivery that he pushes out to mid on. Barnes picks up. One to go. And if they survive it, this... Well, I think it... Even if they don't, it's been Derbyshire's day, but certainly has been if they do. Having bowled Leicester out for 213, 36 for one in reply. That's a horrid sum, 213 minus 36. <laughs> yes, 177. <laughs> Thank you. In goes uh, Mulder Bowles outside the off stump. Guess lifts his bat over the line of the ball, and that is the day done. Derbyshire close on 36 for one. Having lost the toss and seen Leicestershire choose to bat and bowled Leicestershire out for 213 with a significant innings only really from Sam Evans who made 63 and um, Vian Mulder made 39 and Ed Barnes 34 not out. There were four wickets for Sam Connors two for Lakma, one for Dahl Two for Potts and one for McKeon. Derbyshire's day, Fletch, I think. Yeah, very good day's work for Derbyshire, especially as the home side won the toss and decided that they were bat first on what looked like a pretty flattish pitch. The bowlers worked tirelessly. Excellent work from uh, Sam Connor. Saranga Lakmal deserved his second wicket as well. And uh, two wickets for Nick Potts. And as Dahl chipping in, Matty McKeon with that big wicket on the stroke of lunch as well to make sure that Leicester 